work, Rosie. What's up? Stop this now. Well, get your checkbook out, and I'll see what I can do. If you think you're getting anything out of me, you're even more pathetic than you look. What's the matter, love? Hey. <laughs> he tried to grab me. No, no, hold on a minute. What? He attacked you? Yeah. No, she's lying. You sick, twisted. No, 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 Grandma, please. Grandma, please, I just want to go home. All right, love. All right, we're going. You just made the biggest mistake of your life, pal. Come on, love. Come on. <laughs> It's not for a couple of weeks yet, but I really want you and my dad to be there. Of course we'll be there. We're not going to miss seeing you baptised. So how do they do it then? Cos when you're a baby, they don't need a fun. At our church, the minister just chucks a bucket of water over you. He's having you on. I know. Um, no, I'm going to be immersed in a baptismal pool. Oh. They'll warm it up, though, won't they? It's in winter. Joe, you know, you're going to have to get yourself some waterproof mascara, you know? <laughs> hey, guess what, Rosie? Your sister's got a date for a baptism. Oh, congratulations. Rosie, what's wrong? It's John Stape. What about him? He's just trying to attack her. Oh, my God, is this true? Yeah. I told you it would hurt Liz's feelings. But did anybody listen to me? No. Oh, what feelings? They've been surgically removed years ago. She did disappear out the back pretty sharpish. See, I still don't get the joke. I mean, I don't think she dresses like a tart. Well, I don't know about that, but I could get used to wearing a skirt. It's dead liberating. It must be something to do with the airflow. Cheers, Sean. It's all right. You sure there's nothing else I can help you with? No, you'd better get back to your flock. Oh, bless you. Hey. Is she okay? She? Oh, yeah, she's fine. How's yours? Are you going to let him insult me like that? Oh, I've had enough grief for one night, Teresa. Let's just go, eh? No. No, stay. Finish your drinks. You sure? I know, I'm not sick. Say that again. Let's just call it a misunderstanding. Okay. Bags, emergency bags, lighter, matches, mobile, lip gloss, wonder, right. I don't know about you, but I am ready to hit the town where it hurts. What about our drinks? There are no problems, Claire. Only solutions. <laughs> right, come on. Let's get going before it all kicks off in here again. It's starting to look like a porno version of Bad Ted. Right, Stevie boy, I shall see you later. Don't wait up. So much for a quiet drink. Yeah, it is uh, not normally like this. <laughs> what can I get you? Ah, well, uh, a scotch and a lager and one for yourself, Stephen. No, thank you. Ah, keeping a clear head for the game is not going to help. Actually, Becky wants me to cut down because she says I'm getting porky, so... Uh... I'll grab us a table. Mm. Got him for punishment going over here again? What can I say? We have a lot of fun. Well, not seriously. But uh, between me and you, she's definitely taught us a thing or two. Well, I better be going and all. Can I be wondering where I am? <laughs> I don't think. Right. Listen, you might have fooled that lot with all that guff earlier, but you didn't fool me. What are you up to? Spoiler surprise, won't it? Hello? Hi, Roy. For a moment, I thought we might have been victims of a break in. Sorry. Uh, might I ask as to why you're sitting in the dark? Been trying to work out why my life keeps falling apart. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Rosie paid us another visit when I was closing up. She'd been trying to get money out of me. Threatening to tell everyone that I forced myself on her unless I coughed up. I said no. She started screaming. And now Bill Webster thinks I attacked her. I didn't. Perhaps you should go and explain what's happened to Fizz. What if she don't believe me? I believe you. 
Oh, hi. I thought you'd been home ages ago. Yeah, I called out a library. I, uh... I take it the job centre didn't go that well. Well, not only unemployable, it seems I'm transparent as well. Come on. Let's get inside. We'll talk about it over dinner. What do you want? Uh, actually, it's your missus I'm after. I beg your pardon. Oh. Hello. I take it you're here for your money? That's all right, love. Yeah, thanks. Oh, well, Eddie's been doing some work for me. Work? Him? <laughs> Please. Well, if I want abuse, I can get it at home. He was cleaning out the guttering at number one and noticed a blockage in ours too. I paid him for unblocking it. Lucky for you and all. One more drop of rain, that lot could have come down around your ears. Well, when I'm counting my blessings, you'll be counting your money. And if you don't mind, I've got a chicken Kiev to get back to. got this when I was eight, no, nine. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend, Beverly Aldridge, bet me a week's pocket money that I couldn't do a wheelie down this hill near our house. So take it she won. That was the end of me living dangerously. Well, yeah. that's what I thought. Just ignore it. Sally, might be important. Hello? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear my phone before. I was... Uh... I was parked up on the hard shoulder. Is everything... Is she OK? I'm coming home. I'm gonna kill him. What's going on? Kevin! Oh, talk about spacious. And the paper. It is so soft. I tell you what, it is not like this in the blokes. I wouldn't know. Hey, can I borrow your lippy, darling? Um, no. I don't think so. Oh, oh no, something else. It's very generous. Very generous, can you? Nothing to do with the fact that I've been giving you golf lessons on the sly or... As if... So we're still all right then, me. Right, whose round is it next? Uh, I've been topping you lot up all night, thank you. All right, all right. What's everyone having? Oh, hard attack if she's getting them in. <laughs> <laughs> you are just in time. We're just going to have one more here. Yeah? Yeah. Right, then we're going to go to the party. No, I need to talk to you in private. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> so, what were you, uh, you and old uh, Steve uh, t uh, talking about? Nothing much. Nothing much. Nothing much. We took long enough. Nothing much. All right. We were talking about golf. What? Well, he knows that you play? Well, he should do. I've been giving him lessons. What? Why didn't you say something? Be because he asked me not to. Because of your stupid bet. That man, that man is pond life. Well, you're not much better. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, he's just using you. My appreciation for you goes much deeper than that. Well, not that much. I suppose you want me to stop teaching him now? Yeah. No, not... not necessarily. What do you mean? <laughs> Listen, if you could teach someone how to, to, to improve their game, all right, then you can teach them how to, um... Uh, just unimprove it. I still can't believe she took us out. She's been wazzed in our drinks or something. Oh, look, she's on her way over. Play nice, eh? Hi, Liz. I wonder where you got to. Been looking for these. Your oh, flat keys. Thought you might want a bet. Listen, Liz, about earlier. Before you get carried away, you might want to go and see what's cooking in the oven. Hey? Here's a clue. Uh, they're about this big. Round, flat. And they're not pizzas. You haven't. You wouldn't. I have. I would. Oh, you not to trust her. I made a mistake. Just a one. 
she's lying, Fizz. Then I'm going over to sort this now. No, look, if Kevin's there, it'll all kick off. Can we just get home, please? <laughs> Oi, Jimmy Cranky. I've changed my mind. He's still bad. Now do one. Here you go, lovey. Did our Kev say what time he'd be back? No, why? Well, I don't want to worry yourself. But he's not going to take this line down, is it? You think he's going to beat John up again, don't you? <sighs> we should have told him. He's your dad. <sighs> yeah, but I don't want him going back to prison again, do I? Well, he's not going to. Because as soon as he gets home, we're going to ring the police. <gasps> John Stape is a menace. He attacked you. And I want him off the street and behind bars where he belongs. <laughs> Oh, uh, Ed, Ed, Eddie, uh, I, uh, it's been brought to my attention that I, I might have been a tad uh, judgmental earlier. I just wanted to apologise. That's all right, I was expecting it anyway. What do you mean? Your missus warned us about you. So, no harm done, eh? See ya. Uh, you, you warned him about me? I felt it was my Christian duty. But that's the last chicken key ever you'll be getting off me. Praise the Lord. I heard that. I'm so sorry. Oh, you weren't to know what he was going to do, Kev. Look, I should have been here. Look, can you tell us what happened? I'm not sure. It was just over so quickly. Look, just try. Um, well, I went to the cafe. Who else was there? Well, no one else was there. Well, what are you doing on your own with him? Because you know he's radio rental. Do you know, if you'd listened to me, none of this would have happened. Yeah, I know. I messed up, OK? Go on. Well, one minute he was just talking to me. And then he suddenly locked the door and he tried to grab me. So we just pushed him and I ran out. That's when I arrived. I heard her screaming. Do you know, I've heard enough. I'm ringing the police. No, Mum. No, Dad, please. Please, Dad, I don't want to go through this again. No, you're going to have to, love. Because if they don't do anything about this scumbag once and for all, I will. Just go kicking off at people for now. I told you! It was that fat bloke's fault. He touched me up. Right, how many times? He was a she and she was a bouncer. She was searching you. They do it to everybody. You're angry with me, aren't you? We're ruining our night, aren't you? Oh, love, don't be daft. Does that mean we can have another drink then? <laughs> no offence, right, but don't you think you've had enough? Becky. What? I. I've got two small children and one husband waiting for me at home. Yes, at home. So if you think that I am wasting a night out and going home at this time... Oh. Where's my watch? No, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have one I love. No? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then, let's go and have another drink. Becky, 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 Oh, I love you. Oh, you. Sorry, I should be helping you. <laughs> Maybe you could turn them into novelty ashtrays. When you see this one. This took me seven months to track down. Cost me nearly 200 quid. Vindictive cow. She wouldn't have done it if you hadn't have wound her up. All right. I might have provoked her a bit, but you can't blame me for this. I didn't know she liked you so much. I hope looks like she's left you some it. Make my day. Tell us it's a suicide note. She's kidnapped the rest. My mum will be back soon. She's gone to see a film with the One O'Clock Club. It's a romantic comedy. She'd be asking for her money back if there's a happy ending. Oh, really, Deirdre? How very droll. Sorry, love. I was just miles away. Are you still sulking about this job centre? I'm not sulking. Good. 
Because it's not even as if we really need them, Monty. I know, but Christmas is only a few weeks away and I, I want to make a bit of an effort for Simon. How do you mean? Hello? Yes, I'll accept the charges. Hello, Mother. What? Why not? Oh, yeah, you, just, you hang on there. I'll send somebody to fetch you. Is she OK? Oh, she's refusing to get in the minicab the club have sent. Why? She's convinced the driver's on drugs. I'm going to ring a taxi. I don't know. Never mind Christmas. She carries on like this. We'll all have to go out and get a job. Sorry. It's OK. I'm not hungry either. I feel like there's a bomb somewhere waiting to go off. Well, maybe it won't. Maybe, for once in a life, Rosie will do the right thing. I don't think that's going to happen. But if we know it's a lie... All that matters is what everybody else believes. Since most people in this street think I've got horns growing out of my head already. If she'd have done something about it, we'd have heard by now. We'd have Kevin and Sally hammering at the door for a start. That's true. Hiya. How was the film? Pants. Hey, there's a police car outside Sophie's. Do you know what's going on? Oh, look, please! No! Why not? Just despite the fact I'm with you, I've still got my pride! Look, unless you apologise, she's going to trash the rest of me records. She's all mine! She's not going to... It makes you want to cry, buddy ace. Oh! How much did that set you back? Oh, come on, Liz. Have a heart. She humiliated me in public. I want an apology. Otherwise, you can kiss your precious record collection. Goodbye! Yeah, and you know what you can kiss, don't you? There's a police car there. Unless you two calm down, we're going to end up in it. Bring them on. But first, here's another top tune from the hit parade. Oh! Archie Bell and the Drells. My balloon's going up. No, it flaming isn't. All right. All right. You and Liz, please come downstairs and we'll sort this out, OK? Look, all you got to do is say sorry. Why should I? And why are you so worried about her feelings? I just want my records back. Your records? Or her? <sighs> oh, what is with this party? I did not get dressed like this to stand in a pub. Although I must say I do have a touch of the Richard Chamberlain for that Or Dick, to his friend. <laughs> oh, there's a point. Where's light gone and what's the face? Hey, you can have them when I finish with them. <gasps> I told you I heard something going on outside. Please, go on, I'll do anything. I'll go down on my knees if you want. Well, go on then, prove it. Oh, so what do you say? Oh, 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 of course I'll marry you! Hey! Oh, how many flaming dreams has he had? Oh, he'll come to his senses when he's sober. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. She's welcome to him. I can't believe you did that. Oh, sorry. I got carried away in the moment. Uh, hang on. It lives looks like the main event started. Straight across. It's the fashion police. They've finally come for Rosie. John State. Yes. I'm arresting you on suspicion of assault. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention it. You're arresting, John. Something which will aid you in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Please don't take him away. He hasn't done anything. Look after her, will you? You better make sure you chuck away the key this time, because if I see him again, he's a dead man. Now leave it, son. It's not worth it. Why are you doing this? He's innocent! You know he is! Shame on you. Come on, love. It's over now. I'll come to 
the station as soon as I can. Promise. It's gonna be okay. Give me a sec. Well, that is the best thing that could have happened to us last night. Rosa getting molested. Yeah, thanks, Mum. Yeah, you know what I mean. With him out on licence, it gets rid of him again. How are you this morning? All right, I suppose. Not too traumatised, though. Well, it just brings it all back, doesn't it? What happened before. Well, of course it does. Mm. Well, we won't be seeing him round here for a bit. Well, I wouldn't bank on it straight away. Why not? <laughs> no witnesses. Well, Bill saw her. Yeah, he saw her outside. He didn't see what happened inside. Be her word against Stapes, that's where he's been clever. I'm not going to believe him over her, not after what happened last time. Well, let's hope not, but could go to court, this. You ready to go through that? Well, if that's what it takes to send him down again. You know what I don't get about your story? Why she'd make it up if all she wanted was money? She wasn't going to get that by accusing you of assault. That's true. So, why'd she do it? Because she panicked when I said no. Because she's vindictive. Because she's thick. Is she thick? Well, you taught her. And I had an affair with her and elder prisoner, therefore I'm guilty, right? That wouldn't be a confession, would it? Everything she's told you is a lie. So, she wasn't asking for advice on her education? No, that was true. And you weren't giving her it? That's true as well. So? Wasn't all lies? No, but... What else wasn't a lie? Nothing. You know what else is strange? Your wife hasn't rung in to ask how you are. Not a dicky bird all night. Or this morning. Now, why do you think that is, John? I've really no idea. <laughs> I hear you had a good time with Becky last night. Don't. Even my eyelids are throbbing this morning. Well, if you will go out clubbing with the laddettes. I don't know why I do it. I can't keep up with her. Well, why don't you try giving her the swerve for a bit? I'll just be up front with her. I hate not being straight with people. Even better. Right, then I will. Hiya, Claire. Becky! Oh, how, how are you? you? <laughs> it's dying last night, oh, man. Wasn't it fabulous? Yeah, yeah, we should do it again. I can't wait. <laughs> <sighs> Although, I was wondering, um, what? Maybe we should ring the changes a bit. Try the amateur dramatics I talked about. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, well, uh, let's chat later. I've got to dash. OK, <laughs> see you, Claire. So, any road to back from the brewery yet? Uh, don't know. Oh, someone called Bernie rang, so he's gone off to meet her. Eh? Uh. Yeah, it was a woman. I took the phone call. I don't know what to say. That's wonderful news. Yeah, I, I suppose you want my P45 and so on. Yep, no problem, no problem. Right, OK, I'll see you tomorrow at nine, then. And thanks again. Bye. Peter, come on in. You're very chirpy this morning, Dad. Am I? Yeah. You, uh, you had some good news? Oh, you know, Christmas round the corner, season to be merry and all that. Oh, well, you won't uh, mind taking Sam to school tomorrow morning, then? Tomorrow morning? Hmm. Yeah, well, I'd love to, but um, I've got a, an optician's appointment. Oh, can't you change it? <sighs> Chuck a block all week and I want to get it done before Christmas. All right, fair enough. I was giving you a chance to score some brownie points over George, but, you know, if you want to pass up on it. Look, I'm sorry if I went a bit of fire yesterday, but I still think what I said holds good. All concerns duly noted, don't worry. Ah! 
Happens a big day then. Ha ha ha, mate, that is so not funny. I'll be your best man if you ask nicely. Have you, um, heard of a verbal contract? Yeah. That's what you're saying we've got. Sounds like you need legal advice, mate. I know a good brief. Yeah? Yeah. 200 quid an hour plus VAT. How much? We shouldn't let them walk all over you, should you? Oh, well, thanks for the sympathy, mate. Just wait until you need help for now. Hiya! How was the brewery? Oh, hiya, love. Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you lying little rat bag. You've been out that Bernie, aren't you? And it ain't a bloke, because Michelle told me. It's that golfing tart, isn't it? All right, all right. Well, there's nothing going on, I swear. Yeah, well, then why lie to me, baby? Well, because I didn't want you to know how much it costs. Hmm? Look, me and Deva got a bet on. Whoever wins at golf tomorrow gets to join the golf club. And there's only one place going. Right. And how much does she charge you? It's the membership fees you want to worry about. Why, how much is that? Two grand. Two grand? Uh, double it and then some. Lloyd! And you wouldn't even buy me a flaming jacuzzi? No way, Stevie boy. <laughs> no flaming way! Any word on the Weatherfield Ripper? Still at the police station, for what I know. I think that's a bit hard, Norris. Well, I don't see why. Well, until the truth's established, I don't think any of us should start throwing stones. <laughs> a leopard never loses its spots, that's what I say. Uh, I disagree. Mind you, I, I must admit, I, I've been a bit surprised by Eddie Windass lately. Really? Yeah, well, I, I never thought I'd hear myself saying this, but I, I think he might be turning over a new leaf. How come? Well, he's done really quite a good job of clearing out our gut a reasonable price, too. Yeah, he did ours as well, now you mention it. So, there you are, then. Oh, well, we, we had grass growing in ours. Grass? Yeah. And if that gets old and the roots get into the brickwork, oof, well, you're in big trouble. Oh, I can imagine. She's not been around to see you, then, Eileen. I don't have grass growing out of my gutters, thank you very much. Neither did we. But it didn't stop him paying us a visit. What do you mean? Don't get it. You will. Cheers. Hiya. So they've let you go, then? Is that all you can say? Hiya. Well, I, I didn't know when to expect you. Well, maybe if you'd rung, you'd have a better idea. I'm sorry. So why didn't you? Could you think I'm guilty like everybody else around here? They've let me go pending further inquiries since you ask. Have you had any lunch, hey? Because I'm just doing something. I think we've got more important things to talk about than cheese and pickle sandwiches, don't you think? She set me up. Now, either you believe me or you believe her. If you believe her, I may as well go and pack my bag now. I believe you. You sure about that now? Sure. I'm sorry. It's all right. Everyone's been slagging you off. I don't dare go outside. I've not even been to work. And we'll have to convince them of the truth, won't we? Ow. By going on with our lives as if nothing's happened for a start. Starting in the Rovers tonight. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Arlene. I don't know if you realise, but you've got grass growing in your gutter. How far? I can clean it out if you like. I've got the ladders. How much? Ten quid. If there's grass growing, then there'd be lots of other muck up there too. It means if it rains, water can't get away. 
and w then you've got water running down your walls and oh. and when you've got grass growing in your brickwork. Oh. I know. Oh. Mm. Tell you what I'll think about it. No problem. Don't leave it too long though. Oh, I won't. What do you want, ma'am? You can get your hands on some ladders, can't you? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, good, because when you've got a minute, I want you to do me a favour. There you go, love. A pint of lager, please. So, am I not bad, then? Well, it depends what stunts you're thinking of planning. No more stunts. Honest. Well, not against you, anyway. Lloyd's a different matter, of course. Sorry. Am I supposed to care? <clears throat> Engagement rings? Oh, you went down on one knee. Are you serious about this? Uh, I don't know. But if it keeps him guessing. <laughs> oh, hello, love. What are you having? Full orange juice, please. What's this? Uh, I picked it up from a shop this morning. Yeah, but we're not engaged. Oh, he's got a terrible memory, you know. Mm, well, the old street saw you go down on one knee from what I heard. Yeah, but I didn't propose. Will you tell her? You know, he can say some very hurtful things sometimes. Oh, look, I'm up for a wind-up as much as the next man, but five grand. Right, that's it. If there's one thing I can't stand in, man, it's being tight. It's off. But tight's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> off. You heard her, Michelle. She called it off. That's a verbal... Why they see me coming? Got over your fear of heights, then. Don't be saying that while I'm up a ladder, okay? Sorry. Can you see anything? Uh, well, the gut looks pretty clean to me, apart from this grass sod. Which, needless to say, isn't growing there. Yeah, somebody must have put it there. You know what he's doing, don't you? He's going down the street and then moving it along each time, then charging people for clearing it. What, a ten quid a pot? And I work with him. Well, shall I chuck it? No, put it back where it was. I've got a better idea. <laughs> Leanne's just giving Simon a bath, so uh, he should be through in a minute. Here you go. Has he been playing with the mud pies again? Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Bill. No, uh, I'm afraid it's not going to happen now, mate. Yeah, I know. Better luck next time, eh? I'm gutted, believe me. Listen... Bill, I'm going to have to go. I've got people here. Yeah. OK, mate, I'll speak another time. Thanks. Bye. Uh, now, I know it's it's none of my business, but what's not going to happen? Oh, uh, just a plan me and Leanne had that went down the pan. Oh. What plan was that, then? We were going to open a bar. You and Leanne? Well, she used to uh, own a restaurant. Yeah, but so... wouldn't that have been a bit, um... Bit risky. What with the credit crunch? <laughs> with your old habit? No. No way. I mean, it's Leanna who would have been running it. Yeah, but you'd, you'd have been in there a lot of the time, and the temptation. Listen, if I wouldn't have thought I was up to it, I would never have considered it. I've told you, Simon's my number one priority now. Anyway, it's not going to happen. We haven't got the money. So, cheers. Oh, you're all right, Stevie boy. All ready for the big day? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, listen, I was thinking, even if I win this bet, which <laughs> I uh, don't think I'll use the membership that much. Well, how come? Well, you know, because I'm very busy. Hmm. With the pub and the uh, cab office and... So what are you saying? Well, I think that you should have it, because it'd be wasted on me. <laughs> nice try. What? You yeah, listen, you're scared of losing, so you're pulling out now. Yeah, that's all right, I understand you want to save face, I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm not trying but to save face. I just thought you'd have a better excuse than just work, you know? But when the stress gets to us, then the stress really does. I am not us. scared and I am not Shh. stressed. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> Look, you couldn't beat me in a million years. <laughs> I'm not a chicken. Oh, improve it. Be a man. All right, then. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, as agreed. Right. Well, that's more like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Read me a story at bedtime, Grandad. Oh, 
You're honoured. What would you like? Where the wild things are. Is that a good idea? Because you know it scares you sometimes. I like being scared. Yeah, but then you can't get to sleep. So Grandad can go in the top bunk till I drop off like you do sometimes. Oh, I think Grandad might be a bit old to be clambering into top bunks, mate. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, come and stay with us if you want to sleep under the same roof. Can I, Dad? Uh, one day, maybe. Must be fun, sleeping in a bunk. My dad bought me after the fire. What fire was that? My dad fell asleep when I was in bed and the flat caught fire. Luke and Tony from the factory had to rescue us. Did they? I was in hospital for a week. Yes, but you're all right now, mate, aren't you? Hey. Eh? <laughs> yeah. How are you, Rosie? I'm not too bad. But the dev says they've let him out. Mm. And it's a disgrace. If you've done anything like that to Amber... You'd end up inside like I did. Well, can I get you a drink, anyway? Um, I'll have a spritzer, please, Morris. You see, love, everyone's behind you. Anyway. I don't believe this. Has he got a nerve or what? No warning letter this time. Two pints of bitter, please, Michelle. It's all right, John, I'll get these. Oh, won't you serve me either? Funny smelling there suddenly. Yeah, it gets right up your nose. Well, your story did the trick, George. You spark out there. A bit like you must have been on the night of this fire. No chance you were drunk, I suppose. Yes, actually, George. If you want to know, I was on the sofa over there. Your son nearly died and you still want to open a bar? I am more ashamed of that night than anything I have ever done in my life, so I don't need you to tell me, George, thanks. But that was a turning point for me. I came to my senses and I realised that I couldn't carry on. OK? And I got help straight away and I have not touched a drop since. Touch what? The sight of him lying in that hospital bed, unconscious, will be etched on my brain until the day that I die. There is no way I would ever let myself go back to living like that. Well, I can't talk, I suppose. Yeah. So we're both doing the best we can, aren't we? There's nothing else we can do, is there? It's good, good to see you, John. Here, here. Thank you. Whenever you're ready to come back to the cafe. Yeah, well, you won't see me in there. Or me. Maybe you should finish your drinks and go home. I've done nothing wrong. You what? Why don't you tell them the truth, Rosie? Don't you talk to me! Don't go anywhere near her. Kevin. I'm no nearer now than I was yesterday. You attacked me. And just how did I do that? What? That's a simple question. You are sick! No, but I think people have the right to know. Like, whereabouts did I grab you, for instance? I am not going into that here. Yeah, because as you well know, I never touched you. I refused to give you money, and so you falsely accused me. Mum, I don't want to hear this. You're too demure to go into the sordid details. Fair enough. We all know how modest you are. Yeah, well, she was till she met you. Right, then let's turn to me locking you in. Explain how I did that. <laughs> With a lock, you weirdo. What kind of lock was it? The one on the door. So how did you get out? Was it a Yale, a mortise? I don't know the names. Well, then just describe it. We all know what they look like. Just tell everyone how exactly I locked you in and how exactly you got out. How are you feeling? My ears are ringing. How come? It's a clattering of all them skeletons falling out of the cupboards. <laughs> well, I thought you handled it quite well. You know, you and him seem a lot closer now. I've not done it without you, I know that. Oh, come on, I hardly said anything. Yeah, I know. But you were there, and you were on my side. Hey, one day, I'm going to get you your bar. <laughs> don't make promises you can't keep. No, I'll keep it. I don't know how, but I will. 
You didn't think this through properly, did you? You assumed I'd just cave in. Can we go home now, please, Mum? But we're all waiting for an answer, Rosie. It's a fair question he's asking. It was a lock with a key. Like any other lock. So how'd you get the key off me? You dropped it. The thing is, you don't use a key to lock the cafe from the inside. It's just a latch which anyone can open. Is this true, Roy? I have been meaning to upgrade security for years. That door was never locked. And I never laid a finger on you. You would have, eventually, though. You what? <laughs> well, he would! You mean you've made all this up? I nearly clocked him one because of what you told me. Oh, don't worry. I don't want to stay here with him. You evil little cow! He could have gone to prison again! Oh, like a cow! So what do you say now, eh, Dev? The rest of you? It's all right, Fizz. They want to know. But if I could have those pints that I ordered now, please. They'd be on the house, mate. Welcome back. You okay? Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a bit preoccupied. Morning. Morning. Oh, do you want some breakfast? No, you're all right. John. Yeah. I've got this rosy stuff. I'm uh, really glad it's sorted. Me too. Later then. See ya. Was Dev okay about calling off that bet? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Didn't give you an hard time. Not particularly. Just the usual chicken noises, mainly. Yeah, well, he can cluck all he likes, cos you're the bigger man. No. Yeah. Any road, who needs some stupid golf course membership thing when you are part of the most exclusive and the coolest club in the whole entire world? <laughs> Watch out. Us, Divvy. And the waiting list is closed forever. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right, I'm uh, off to the library. Ah, oh, you're a bit keen, aren't you? Well, this article won't research itself. But you haven't said what it's about yet. Well, it's in its early stages. Well, go on, give us a clue. Well, if you must know, they've asked me to capture the spirit of the season. You? <laughs> Blimey, I've heard everything now. Indeed. Right, I'll see you later. Oh, Dad, please, this is so humiliating. Well, it's humble pie or porridge. You choose. Hi, uh, you two got a minute. Uh, Rosie's got something to say. Not interested. Oh, please, just hear her out. Why? So she can spread more disgusting lies. Come on, let's just go. Look, I'm really, really sorry. Just save it! Let her finish. Go on. Well, I don't know what to say, really. I mean, there's nothing I can say to justify what I did. So what even try? But I'm going to go to the police and I'm going to take back everything I said. There won't be any comeback. Is that it? You make it sound like you're doing us a favour or summer. Fizz, please. I'd also like to apologise for my recent behaviour because vandalising your house, that was just petty and cruel. Rosie was just taking a lead from me. And if you, well, if you want to blame somebody, blame me. And if you could see your way on asking the police not to pursue it. Oh, now we get to it. We just want this over with. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm tired of all this. I get on my knees and beg if I have to. Mum? That won't be necessary. Look, no promises, but I'll talk to the police. That's all we ask. 
So what happens now? Well, we try and stay out of each other's way. Fine by us. Honestly, I thought her head was going to explode. They should lock her up and throw away the key, that's what I say. I think John's already been there. Yeah, but two wrongs don't make a right. Come on, though. The girl has a right to be a bit miffed. That doesn't countenance such blatant fabrication. Oh, may I congratulate you on your refreshingly swift and decisive decision-taking? Norris has browser issues. Um, I couldn't help overhearing. Did something happen with Rosie last night? I heard she'd been attacked. No, she was trying it on. She got debagged in front of the whole entire pub. Okay, work best, please, boy. And to think he went to prison for that little strumpet. Yeah. Right, we'll see you later. Yeah. Stain demon. I beg your pardon? Rumour has it that you are the person to see about competitions. Ah, uh, no, I, I, I'm retired. Uh, I just want to pick your brains. I said I'm retired. Now, do you wish to purchase that magazine or not? Yeah, sorry. I won't waste your time, love. One thousand pounds, first prize. I could set myself up in a flat with that. Yeah, but you've got to win first. I do always a chance. <laughs> chance oh. is for amateurs. <laughs> now, contrary to popular opinion, there is a science behind these things. It's just a matter of unlocking the right creative formula. And you are the very man for the job. Mm, maybe one time. But I'm sorry, Frida, I can't help you. Listen, let me check with Leanne, yeah? Oh, oh talk of the devil, she's just walked in. Listen, Georgia, I'll, I'll call you straight back, mate. OK, bye. Let me guess, T. Yeah. How did you know? Eve just phoned me about five minutes ago. I already said yeah. Right. What? <clears throat> oh, come on, it'll be a nice surprise for Simon. I don't know. I still think he's trying to rush things a bit too much. Oh, come on. The man's just trying to make up for lost time. Yeah. Stay around. You've not long missed him. Oh. Any chance you gave him a radio for us? Because mobile's been turned off. Oh, sorry, love. He signed himself off for the afternoon. All right. Oh, come. Where's he gone? Well, golf, I assume. Did he tell you that? No, but the suspect knitwear and the clubs kind of gave it away. He's dead. You know, I could have been... Get me a cab, please. Hiya, love. Hey, yeah. What's wrong? You look all in. Oh, I'm having a clear out for Emily. Listen, you couldn't give me a hand in the attic, could you? I wouldn't ask, only Ken has conveniently made himself scarce for the day. Oh, crafty so-and-so. He's only having an eye test, not a transplant. He told me he was going to the library. Something about uh, an article for the Gazette. Oh, right, well, uh, maybe I've got my wires crossed, eh? I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation for it. Deirdre, come on, he... he wouldn't. <sighs> well, I hope for his sake you're right. Otherwise it won't only be old clothes that are getting chucked out. Sometime today, gentlemen, please. Hey, Stevie. Yeah. You want to cry off again, you just say the word. Seriously, mm, I won't hold it against you. I think this needs a driver. You can drive a milk float, son. Bernie? Guys, I've told you before, I'm here to observe nothing more. You're on your own. Did you hear that, Dev? Your girlfriend's letting you loose. It's just me and you now. Well, bring it on. Ooh, how perfect is that swing? Feel free to drool. And you, feel free to choke. Play! You know what, Dev? No matter what happens today, you'll always be a member to me. <laughs> <coughs> Surprise! Oi. Oh, thought I'd come see what the fuss is about. Dev? Bernie? <laughs> Lose the game and embarrass yourself. Hey, Dad, don't just stand there looking gormless. Come on, show me what you're made of with this thing. Oh, and baby. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> oh! That was...
Would you like jam on that slice? <laughs> How's it look? Oh, touch and go. But I reckon Dr. Eddie can save it. Oh, my hair. I tell you what, while you're up there, you may as well do the back as well. I mean, better be safe than sorry. Call it 15 for the lot. Uh, yeah, go on then. Seeing as it's you, Eileen. What a star. All part of the service, ma'am. Are you sure this is the right address? Well, I followed the directions. And that's number 22. Is Grandad a millionaire? Look, there, there must be some sort of mistake. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a mansion. <laughs> it's more like a palace. Don't just stand there. Come inside. You'll catch your death. Grandad! You'll be here! <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I heard what happened. Oh, surprise. So how are you? Better for seeing you. Oh, I'm sorry it took so long. You wouldn't believe the hoops they made us jump through. Hi, Molly. Hi, Sal. Right, best get back. I'll give you the message to Ty. See well, you later. See you. So, how did it go? They're not going to pursue it. It's just a slap on the wrist. I mean, no big deal. Oh. Is that why you burst into tears when the detective told you off? Whatever. Proud of yourself, are you? I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Because it's thanks to girls like you, the police have yet another reason not to believe the next poor cow that gets abused or raped. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Uh, excuse me for your information. I was that poor cow. Well, then you should know better. Don't you ever judge me. Or mine, again. He's out the back. <laughs> so who's going up, then? Not in a million years. Trust us, you won't want that view. This car's pretty bad, right? Nope. We left bad at the eighth. This card requires a whole new word. Unlucky, mate. Good game? Yeah, no, it's a great game. Great game. And I've got the brakes. But, uh, hey, you'll bounce back. Let's go and get shedded, eh? And no, I'll uh, see you in there. I'm, uh... I'm sorry. I just need a minute for it to like, sink in. Check all the term you need. <coughs> Bernie? I'll wait for Dev. Oh, come on. It weren't that painful. I've seen dead magna... Mag... Whatever that word is. I don't know. Yes! I... Maybe it's not. It's not the winning. It's the taking apart. And here ended... Your lesson for the day. Yeah! All spick and span that. You can eat your tea out of that gutter now. Oh, well, I think I'll leave that to you, considering that's where you belong. You what? 
We're on to your scam. Very creative. Never learned the uh, first starts and now this. Uh, look, there must be some kind of mistake. Come on, I mean, what kind of block do you take us for? A very naughty one. Empty Santa. Oh, this house, it's incredible. <laughs> George designed it himself. Seriously? Took a six month sabbatical. Well, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Besides, the company practically runs itself now anyway. So, are you the chairman then? For his sins. <laughs> the title's grander than the job. <laughs> so, what are your plans for Christmas? Oh, you know, low key, nothing too over the top. <laughs> we colonise him. <laughs> Well, you're welcome to join us if you find yourself at a loose end. Really? Eve always cooks enough to feed an army. Come to think about it, you could all stay over. There's ample space. Can we, Dad? Can we? Uh, maybe next year, eh? Hey, come on, lose the face. It's our first family Christmas together. It'll be great, you'll see. Sorry, George, it's a bit too soon. The offer's always on. Afternoon. Afternoon. How was the library? Or was it the opticians? I think I deserve an explanation. It's complicated. When isn't it? Fine. Off that television screen. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to all this trouble on our account. Nonsense. It's the least we can do. Um, truth be told, there was another reason why we invited you over today. Um, even me have been having a little chat about this idea of yours, this bar idea. And we see real potential for it. Well, up and coming area, decent spec refit. Run by an ambitious and motivated couple. <laughs> We'd like to be involved with you, if we can. You mean you'd like to invest? Uh, we prefer to see it as more of an interest-free loan. Just throw a few quid into it, get the ball rolling. You mean handout? No, no, I mean a helping hand. I know what it's like to go through a lean patch. Absolutely no strings. Thanks, but no thanks. Hey, We find on. the money ourselves. When? When the time is right. Come on, Simon. Uh, school tomorrow. We're going. Dad. Now. Five more minutes. Tell him, Grandad. Simon, do as your father tells you. Uh, look, just do me a, a favour. At least sleep on it. Talk it out amongst yourselves. Peter. No. That's my final answer. Barlow, a Father Christmas. I'm sorry, I, I just find it hard to picture. Foolishly promised Simon an expensive present and it was the only position I could secure. And do you have elves? Sue, Cameron and Jess. They hate me equally. What you like. <laughs> Please. Can we keep the secret? Oh, my lips are sealed. Oh, go on. Send your germs to hell with Stain Demon. What was the name of the film where the demon possessed the young girl and a head spun round? The Exorcist. That film does my head in. Exorcist? Exercise? Yeah, it sounds like exercise, so you... Cleaning can be exertion. Oh, for goodness sake, it's so obvious. 
for every household angel, there is a stained demon, simple and to the point. Wow! Yes. I'll take it all back. Norris, you are the man. So, we've got the place to ourselves. What do you fancy doing? I'm not really fussed, to be honest. Um, a little enthusiasm, please. We've had some major breakthroughs today. Chess, the Websters. I'm being grudgingly tolerated. It's hardly cause for a parade. It's more than that, you know it is. Folk are really starting to see the real you. Which is? A strong, kind, honest man. If you really think that, Fizz, then why do you ever doubt me? It's not easy to explain. I did know in my heart that you were innocent. Just after Tony. Please tell me you're not comparing me to him. No, don't be daft, of course not. It's just what he did. It, it gets into your head. It makes part of you wonder if you can really be sure about anything or anyone. After what I've put you through in the past. But I'm sorry. I should have trusted you. And I'm sorry for ever putting the doubt there in the first place. Total honesty from now on. No matter how painful. That applies to everything, including your cooking. Uh, right, and your dress sense. Yeah, and certain trashy gossip magazines. And boring radio stations. So this is how it feels to be married. <laughs> <laughs> We should have at least discussed it. Leanne, I know what their game is. What are you on about? Not everybody has an agenda, you know. Maybe they just wanted to help us. This isn't about us. They're only interested in Simon. Oh, what? And you think they're trying to bribe their way into his life? OK. Let's say you're right. And George and Eve are Mr and Mrs Santa Claus in disguise. That doesn't change the fact that this project is our baby. This is our dream. Dream being the operative word, yes. It's too good to be true, Leanne. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, so am I, because if this is some stupid male pride... No, this is a responsible father thing, and if you'd stop thinking about yourself for one second, OK, you'd see that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, am I hearing this right? You're lecturing me about selfishness and responsibility in the same sentence. I didn't mean... Oh, get stuffed, Peter. What? Well, where are you going? What do you care? Oh, and just so you know, this bar isn't some big ego trip for me, you know. I just wanted more than this. I deserve more. And more importantly, so does Simon. All right, come on. Granddad George's house is massive and the Christmas tree is the size of your living room. Really? So you had a nice time then? At first. What happened? We had a little row with him and Liam. See? Oh, look, I shouldn't worry about it. Grown ups often have little arguments like that. Doesn't mean they don't care about one another. Like you and Granny Bunch? Uh, sort of, yeah. So, um, why were they cross? Granddad George said he gave Dad some money to buy a shop, I think. But Dad didn't want it. See? Now we can't go to Grandad George's house for Christmas anymore. Well, never mind. You can come to ours. And Grandma Deirdre and I will make sure you have a wonderful time. Mm. Josh! Will you get a shift on? You won't be late for school. Ka, ka, ka. Honestly, he la, has been on goal la, la. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell are you doing? I'm getting ready for my Class. You all right? I'm fine. I'm preparing for my drama class. Oh, I thought you were having a turn. I'm warming up my face. What? Look, Usain Bolt doesn't just whip off his tracky bottoms for 100 metres, does he? He warms up the muscles he's going to use. And what's that got to do with acting? An actor's facial muscles are vital. They need loosening up so he can convey emotions. So how do these stars that have Botox get on? Cos happens some of them can only do three facial expressions and two of them are variations, unsurprised. 
Mm. Yeah. Well, these exercises are vital for any budding actor. Aye, if you want me in other films. That's not an exercise, is it? No. <laughs> oh, morning, my friend. Oh, you'll find the uh, humble pie uh, on the middle shelf, second half, and the sour grapes are over there by the fruit and veg. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. Well, I'm only trying to help. Oh, and if you're looking for your approach to the 12th, I've had a scout round and it didn't land here. You know, the hardest thing about winning is doing it with a bit of grace. Oh, no. No, the hardest thing about winning, in my experience, is knowing which one of your exclusive membership privileges to exercise first. It's talked about now else. The VIP parking. Yup. The members' locker room. Oh, yup. And la pièce de résistance. I hit it. I say, for all your kisses for me, save all your kisses for me. I don't remember you being hit on the head with a golf ball yesterday, but I'm assuming you must have been. I am talking about the Brotherhood of Man, dude, and they penciled in for the members' Christmas function. I could try getting your ticket, but don't hold your breath. Oh, you could rip out my fingernails right now, whichever's easier. Ah, uh, listen, you don't fool me because you would love it. He would love it to be there with the movers and the shakers. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll put that down to their age. Listen, yesterday you were lucky. It was a fluke, Alahan. Lightning will not strike twice. Well, we shall see about that. Uh, free for a rematch? Whenever you think you're man enough, yeah. Uh, I can manage on my own this afternoon. Oh, well. This afternoon it is, then. And don't you worry, I'll go easy, cos it wouldn't do to humiliate a guest at my club. You all right? I'm after my baptism file. It's green. Oh, you're gonna be late for school. Do you need it now? Yeah, you know I have my meetings on Fridays. Oh. No, you don't, do you? Cos it's only me. I'm sorry, Soph, but it's not going to work if you don't have your file for one week. Get baptised in a fortnight. You forgot, haven't you? Oh, I knew that was coming up soon, but, you know, there's just been that much on. Yeah, and when in it there? It just so happens that it's never about me. You know what, I feel like background noise in this house. I'm sorry, Soph, but I can't help it if your sister's Doing just... Doing exactly what she's always doing. And getting herself in a mess, and then you two come running, and then wonder why she never learns a lesson. Oh, and there's me, thinking you're big into forgiveness nowadays. Yeah, well, it's a good job, in it. Oh, and by the way, I've got my mocks coming up soon, so now I've told you, you can forget about that one. That used to be a struggle. Oh, yeah. Well, not anymore. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Hey, you should see me play Operation. I can whip out a funny bone faster than any man alive. I'm very proud of you. Well, it's only a game. You know what I mean. Simon mentioned that you had words with George. Yeah. Oh, he's got big ears, that lad. It was nothing. He offered to invest in the bar. Yeah, that's right. I turned him down. Oh, so relieved. He's the sort of man who thinks that money can open doors, forgive all sins, so I'm glad you've seen him for what he is. Whoa, whoa, no. Dad, I, I've done nothing of the sort. I like the bloke, you know, I like George. I just don't know him well enough to go into business with him, that's all. Or spend Christmas there. I mean, the presumption of the man to even invite you. He just wanted to see his grandson. <laughs> he wants another Christmas decoration, a small child to sit at the foot of his ridiculous Christmas tree. Anyway, I told Simon you're coming to us. Fine. Um, where you should be, amongst family. Look, Dad, George is Simon's family, and he made me a very genuine, generous offer. OK? He certainly wasn't looking to score cheap popularity points, I know that. Excuse me. Yes, my mate? Yeah, I've got one. What's <laughs> happened? We've been doing acting. Takes it out of you. I just look at actors in a whole new light. What have you been performing, Rocky Three? We were improvising. I played a wife whose husband was cheating on her. With me. Anyway, we had to have a showdown, so we kind of threw ourselves into it. <laughs> <laughs> I drew on some of my own experiences, and it was quite therapeutic. <sighs> we're right, tear up. <laughs> She's got a decent right hook at this one. <laughs> <laughs> you did this to each other. That's a Gideon. <sighs> Gideon? As class director. 
tried to break us up. A big mistake. We broke his glasses, you know. <laughs> well, so long as you had a good time. See you later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Work. Mm. All right, look. Everybody needs a hobby. I've got golf. You've got amateur dramatics. Uh, not anymore. The group's folding. Lack of numbers. Sure they didn't just tell you that? No, it's true, actually. They've had to cancel the Christmas panto, Cinderella. Gideon's been in tears. And that'll be for I bit him. Bit him? Oh, it's fine. He'll forgive anything as long as it's true to the character. Mm -hmm. It's such a shame they're wrapping up. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Dev's giving me a lift, so if I'm going, I better get my clubs out of the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, then. Tee off. Before you say anything, I didn't mean any harm last night. I just got a bit carried away. <sighs> Come on, George. No, you weren't the only one. I'm sorry. It's, I was out of order. No, don't beat yourself up. I dropped all of this on you out of the blue. Started off by being a stranger. The next minute, I'm wading into your affairs. I can be a bit gung-ho from time to time. I mean, I proposed to the current Mrs. Wilson on our third date. Third date. Mind you, I never regretted it. She's lovely. You've both been really kind, and I know, George, you were only trying to help, and uh, I, I suppose I'm just not used to it, that's all. I just want what's best for that little lad, which obviously means what's best for you. I wanted to give you a leg up. I know, I realise that, I do, and I should have been grateful. Well, I was coming on a bit strong. I was pressurising you. <laughs> a lot of people are killed for that kind of pressure. I'm sorry, George, I overreacted. I hope we can just forget this and put it behind us, eh? Oh, yeah. Um, given what you've said, if you should ever reconsider these things, uh, my offer is still on the table. Yeah? And I've dreamt about parking in one of these spots. Mm -hmm. Fantasized. Thank you. You fantasize about parking spaces. I've read about this kind of thing, Dev, but I never dreamt for a minute. That, uh... Well, listen, it's more than just a parking space, my friend. This is just like a gateway to a whole new way of life. You get hit on the head by a golf ball yesterday. Life is suddenly very sweet. I'm rubbing shoulders with the elite, and I've got myself a gorgeous girlfriend who's lowered my stroke average to no end. I bet she has. She's a good coach, you know. Just wondering where the catch is. Well, there is a one. Listen, after Tara, it's just honesty all the way. There's no, no rattling skeletons and no dark secrets. Dave! Hey! You never said you were playing today. Opportunity not, Matthew. Oh, hi, Dev. Mm, Matty, I didn't know you were a, a golfer. Yeah, I've just taken it up. That's my latest pupil. How do you two know each other? Well, oh, Matthew, he's the uh, manager of the cash and carry. I mean, never see him these days, though. No, I'm more on the office side now. Well, listen, you got yourself a, a, a great teacher, but look, let me give you a tip. Okay? Now, you always, always keep your eye on the ball. Why? Because this one is spoken for. <laughs> Don't worry, so is Matt. He's just got engaged. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Nice one. Tough. Yeah, if he was as devoted to his game as he was his girlfriend, he'd make the next Ryder Cup. <laughs> Never stops talking about her. What's her name? Uh, look, I've only got an hour or so, so oh. can we... OK, let's crack on. Mm. I'll see you in the clubhouse, maybe. Uh, you can count on it. Mm. Mm. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, I could ask you the same question. I closed for lunch. Well, not that I had much choice with you absent without leave, did I? I needed some space. Well, you went to the traffic centre for some space. I don't have to explain myself to you. OK, fair enough. So, will me and Simon be having the pleasure of your company tonight? Don't know. I haven't heard the word sorry yet. Did I miss it by any chance? No, you didn't. Oh, leave that on. We're going out. No, I grabbed a body at the traffic centre. Trust me. 
There's more on the menu than a butty or a sorry. Okay. I found that Christmas is my property. Why don't you call the police then? Maybe I have. I can hear whining, but it ain't sirens. You don't want the police sniffing around. Oh, look, you've made your point. Now just give it as bad, please. Uh, I've gone. Does that answer your question? We've still got to be careful. Why? Why can't we just get it over with? Every minute we tie is torture. Look, he's done nothing wrong. He was happy with him once. Yeah? Well, I didn't know what happiness was then. What are we waiting for? The sooner things are out in the open, the better, yeah? What? Look, I still want to do this. But? You're getting cold feet. I knew it. No. Look, we're going to be together. It's probably just take a bit longer than we thought. I'm begging you. That flashing Santa gives a lot of folk pleasure. It's my gift to the community. Well, what about the community's gift to you? Ten pound a throw for doing nout. Until you repay the people you ripped off, Father Christmas stays with us. And I wouldn't leave it too long, neither. Else you'll start receiving his circuitry through the post. Santa won't look so jolly with an ear missing, will he? You know, but animals. Animals. All right, all right, I'll give folk the money back. Oh. Peter, I haven't got time for games. Everything comes to them as weights. George. Hey. Hello. Nice to see you. What's going on? I was a bit hasty last night. Well, we both were. So we talked things through and I've decided to accept George's offer. Are you kidding? No. I hope not. This lad gets paid by the hour. You're not just saying this, are Because I went off on one. Are you serious? 100%. Ah! Thank you! Oh! You won't regret this. So, if you could cast... Anyone around here is the fairy godmother. Who would you choose? Oh, what does it matter? Panto's not happening. Ooh. Well, just say it was. Say we were running it for a laugh. Well, it would be early then, no danger. She's been fairy godmother to me enough times. Yes, I can see her in the role. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd and Steve as the ugly sisters. <laughs> you say my husband's ugly? No. I'm saying it wouldn't make a convincing woman, and that is the problem. As long as it is. <laughs> Ashley be the prince. Ashley? No disrespect, love, but you can't have Prince Charming stinking of awful. He doesn't. He has a shower every night when he gets in. But it's like the scene from Psycho, isn't it? Around your plug hole, like... <laughs> no. No, 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 there's only one Prince Charming around here, and that is my Stevie. <laughs> Steve, don't you think he's a bit hasty-faced? Prince of Darkness, yes. It's non-negotiable. Oh, well. I'm a professional. I suppose I could play opposite him at a push. Who says you, for Cinderella? Stop banging on about those flaming lights. Our son's hell bent on marching off to his death. Oh, it's a flaming yes. training weekend at Glencoast Barracks. I'm not going to Elmer. Oh, yeah. There'll be all yes. assault courses and beers like and bonding, I'm sure. The will you in the before you know where you are, you'll be dodging bullets in some godforsaken... You're being hysterical, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just carry on, Bill, until you change your mind. She can be very determined, lad. Yeah, so can I. If the prince handed you a glass slipper, you'd use it as an ashtray. Well, at least I could get my foot in it. You can't even get your ankles into a flaming punch ball, you. Hey, I am proud of my figure. Well, never mind Cinderella. You'd be better off playing a broom. Oh, yeah? Hey! 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 Well, it's a good job off a man stepped in, because I tell you what, you've been a flaming broom, sweetheart. I've wiped the flaming oh, broom. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, We're yeah. Going. Come on, then. Ashley, oh. put me down. Put me down. Go on, get rid, get rid. What are you playing at? Don't ask me, Ashley. Have I ever thought I could be friends with a low life like her? She has not got a bit of class, not a scrap. Don't forget to have your shower later. Well, I don't suppose I need to ask what's going on. Hello, Ken. Well, 
All right, yeah. I've decided to go ahead with the bar. But once in your life, you've shown a modicum of judgment. I knew it was too good to be true. Well, in my opinion, Peter's doing the right thing. It's a very good opportunity. Your opinion is of no interest to me. Hey, don't talk to George like that. Oh, sorry. Sort of bow and scrape because he's got money. Or sell myself as cheaply as you did. I, I don't deserve that. You're as guilty as he is. I mean, neither of you care a jot about the consequences of this folly. What it means to my son and my grandson. This is about getting what you want at any price. You want to be careful getting worked up like that, a man of your age. If you just calm down for a second, I think you'll realise I'm trying to help. Trying to help yourself? My son dared to say no. Ah, oh, but you couldn't just leave it there, could you? One more push, another bundle of money, you had to beat him down. You don't know what you're talking about, Dad. Why don't you just go home? I'm going nowhere. Don't worry. I'm off for me dinner. I can only take a certain amount of hysteria on an empty stomach. So I'm walking you back, love. Thanks, George. You know, whatever you think, I love Peter and I love Simon as if he was my own. I wouldn't do anything to hurt him. Then I should do an awful lot of thinking, and quickly. George, maybe I'll bring Simon over later. Perhaps he can stay over with you and Eve after all. That'll be terrific. I'll look forward to seeing you later on then. What's oh, took you so long? I'm flaming starving. It's me. Clean yourself up. This guy's always going to be back from Roy's any second. I hope he is. This strain is killing me. I want all the lying to be over, and I thought you did as well. Yes, I do. You don't know, do you? You don't. What's all this about waiting, putting things off? I keep seeing what's going on at our house. I can't just walk out on my family now. I know. I know that it's worse for you, but there's not going to be a good time to make a break. You can't just timetable these things. Yeah, yeah you can. What? When I do this, I, I want it to have the least effect on my kids as possible. Right. So, why is now any worse than any other time? Look, Sophie's got a GCSEs coming up. This could send it off the rails. Oh. Ruin her prospects. I can't run that risk. What are you telling me? I will leave Sally as soon as Sophie's finished her exams. When's that? I don't know, July next year. I'm sorry. Let's get down to brass tacks. You've never liked George. My feelings about that man are irrelevant. Are they? You can't stand him. Not just because he's another grander, but because he blows you out of the water. He can give Simon things you could only dream of. Do you really think I measure my relationship with Simon in terms of what I can buy? I don't think so. I know so. You're willing to dress up as Santa Claus in a shopping mall just so you can afford a flash present to keep up with George. Well, I won't deny it. Or it makes me want to weep that it's the only way I can afford to get a decent present for my grandson. But that's not what this is about. Yes, it is. Just swallow your pride, Dad. Please, let George help me. Oh, if he truly wanted to help me, he wouldn't dream of funding this. He just wants to buy his way to Simon. And if that means handing you the means to destroy yourself, then so be it. He probably sees that as some sort of added bonus. No. You're just being ridiculous now. I mean, can't you get your head around it? George has actually got faith in me. Far more than you ever had. I have faith in you, but not behind a bar. Uh, I'm wasting my breath. You think what you like. Because I tell you what, it's going to make no odds. Oh, I will. I'm going to fight this project with all the strength I can muster. Don't you threaten me. It's pathetic. Anyway, shouldn't you be off yo-ho-hoing somewhere? Mock me if you like, but I promise you this. For every bit of help that George gives you, I will give you ten times the hindrance. You will not open that bar.
Hey, mate. Did you have a good time? We watched Jungle Book on Grandad George's television with the lights out. It was like being at pictures. Hey, George. Now, did he behave himself? Yeah, of course he did. <laughs> Nana, he made some popcorn. And what time did you get to bed? Eight o'clock. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Ish. Don't let him con you. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Here you go. I could have dropped him off at school. Oh, it's all right. The walk will do Peter good. Oh. We're spending Christmas with him. Fantastic. Yeah. He'll be even grumpier after what I heard on the way here. Turner's accepted the offer and the planning application's gone in. That's fantastic. Hey, you don't hang about, do you? Well, there's no point. Unless you've changed your mind. <laughs> what, just because my dad kicked off? No, I think not. He's right, though. Ken's not going to be thrilled, is he? Listen, best thing to do with me dad, seriously, ignore him. Come on, mate, let's get you to school. See you later. Thank you, George. My pleasure. <laughs> do you actually know what, what it is you're so wound up about? What? Well, is it George muscling in on Simon, or is it Peter in this bar? Or... Well, does it have to be either or? Can't cope if it's not simple. Do not get smart with me, Ken. It's all part of the same thing. George and his money. Small toys for Simon, big toy for Peter. And to hell with the consequences. And have you considered the consequences of what you're doing? Sorry? Going over the top, picking fights. Peter, Leanne, George, me. Oh, so you expect me to sit back and watch a car crash when I could stop it? It's the way you're going about it. Honestly, Ken, for a clever man, you can be spectacularly stupid at times. Clever? He got a degree 50 years ago and sits around sucking his pen while he half does the Guardian crossword. Now, clever about that. Mother. Look, Peter knows how you feel about that bar. You don't have to keep saying it. Yeah, but he's... <sighs> All right, yeah, you're right. I'll back off. A mother. We could do with a bit of Christmas spirit round here and all. You know, goodwill to all men. I've a good mind to turn up this afternoon and tell those poor little innocents what the standing Santa is really like. I'll give him ho, ho, ho. Hi. Dad's in the back. I've just come to see if you're uh, OK with what we agreed. Agreed. Makes it sound like we discussed stuff and came up with a plan. We didn't need milk, Kev. Still half a carton in there from yesterday. No. Thought I checked. What you like, you, eh? Anyway, while I may have been thinking, it'd be nice to invite Jack and Connie round for Christmas dinner, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Why not? I've got nothing else planned. And if you want to get away from a house full of women, mate, you're more than welcome. Ain't that right, Mo? So am I not a woman, then? Well, yeah, but... So we don't need milk. Sorry. See you in a bit. <sighs> Black coffee, two sugars. Oh. I reckon... I've eaten someone what's disagreed with me. Claire's ear or finger, maybe? I didn't buy a... Uh, did I? Everything but. What were you rowing about, anyway? All sorts. But basically, pantomimes. Grown-ups can't fight over pantomime. Uh, yes, they can. <laughs> we always had Christmas pantos in the Rovers. I'd seen grown men almost come to blows over whose tights have been landed by whom. Mm -hmm. That's happened in the back of my cab. Hey, hey, there's photos. Really? Of what? In the back store, in a cardboard box, there's some Rita. Oh. Only, you know, she's a lot younger. Yeah. And uh, Deirdre, I think, and Mike oh. Baldwin. Oh, let's have a look. Well, folks around here, you know, don't want to be reminded how daft they all looked. Oh, well, in that case. Oh, hey. <laughs> You're right, kiddie? Yeah. Good. Oh. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Right, can I leave you then? I've got to open up. Oh, yeah. I'll be fine when these kick in. It's got to be a record hangover, this. Another drink since yesterday dinner. Fancy air at dog later. I 
Ashley, we are never going in that pub again. Hey, after what she said about me and you. <laughs> me? Why? Um, actually, I'm I'm not sure, but it was something. This drama thing is supposed to improve your social life, and now we can't even go in our local. It was Becky's fault. She could start a row with the chappiest monk. And what she said? That you smelled of awful. I'm a butcher. And what have you said to her? That if she was Cinderella, she'd use the glass slipper as an ashtray. Oh. So it was six of one and half a dozen of other. Maybe I should make up with her. Right, well, I'll come with you. That's a go-between. Why should I need you? Because one bad word from her and you'll go off on one again. You'll probably get us bad. John. Good luck. First drink on you. <laughs> what was it saying? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> <laughs> the council bloke, he did seem bad positive, didn't he? Well, why wouldn't he be? We turn in a derelict workshop into a sophisticated suburban bar, bringing pleasure, jobs, taxes. And a different set of people from the pub at the end of the street. <laughs> oh, well, there's one person who won't be a regular. Morning. Dad, if you've come for another row, I saw the planning notice. Yes, and I'm sure you'll be the first person to object. Well, I do hope you're not just going ahead with this just to spite me. We're going ahead with it because it's a good idea. Is it? Pub shutting down all the time, you're opening in the new year and business is terrible. Oh, Dad, sorry, I didn't realise you were a business guru or I would have come to you for advice. Peter... You see, I thought you were an ex-supermarket shopping trolley pusher turned Father Christmas impersonator. <laughs> Try to get some sense into you, Peter. Not be blinded by a shower of money. I am investing because, unlike you, I have every faith in Peter and Leanne and a very exciting project. What's going on? Oh, the usual. Because me dad's decreed something, he thinks that's the way it has to be. You made your point, we've considered it and we've rejected it. OK? Ken. Arguing in the street isn't going to help anybody. <laughs> Give me a Ferrari over a Porsche any day. Not so much with back seats so we can take Connie and Jack on day trips. No, oh, because this is my fantasy car, innit? And in my fantasy, I'm a millionaire bachelor. Oh, grab that. Hiya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing in our neck of the woods? Picking up Jack's prescription from medical centre. I've um, asked Connie about Christmas. And we'd love to come. Jack will be made up when I tell him you've asked. <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. Well, uh, come over like late morning. Give me a more chance to unwrap our prezzies. Mm -hmm. It's our first Christmas morning alone. <laughs> oh, time out. <laughs> oh, what it must be like to be young and in love. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't resist, could you? I was trying to have a reasonable conversation. But you're right, I was wasting my time. So is that it, then? Seeing that planning notice gave me an idea. Oh, goody. Well, Deirdre, you know everyone in the planning office, don't you? Yes, I suppose so. The chief planning officer, Ruth Burns, is it? Met her at the office too last Christmas, you know. She seemed friendly enough. Oh, yes, yeah, socially. Oh, no, Ken. So you could have a word, you know, old pals act. Tip her off about how people are thinking and how unpopular the council will be if it went through. No chance. For one thing, we're hardly old pals. And for another, people in the office think there might be a vacancy coming up and I stand a good chance of getting it. Cutting corners with Ruth Burns will not go down well. Surely, Deirdre, it's worth the risk if we can save Peter from himself. Ken, ringing Ruth Burns will not help but it will put the mockers on my chance of getting a new job. Please, Ken, for my sake, don't go there. It's all this baptism thing. You go right under the water? We do, yeah, but in some churches, you just like sign the cross on your forehead. See, that's why I learned to swim, in case you drop me. Why does that happen? <laughs> I mean, you up, Ty. Well, I don't know. I've never been baptised, have I? Well, any time you want to come along. Uh, no, thanks. I've lasted till now. Hey, do you still have Christmas? 
Duh, he's the reason for the season, Ty, and he ain't talking about Santa. So, do you go Christmas carol services? <laughs> services? Only services I'm involved in's in here. Hey, car servicing, get it? <laughs> I'll uh, go and pick that exhaust up, mate. But they said they're going to deliver it this afternoon. Yeah, won't be long. See, that's how bothered my dad is in the factory, though. Even Tyrone's more interesting. Stop her. Hmm. It'll take more firepower than you've seen this weekend. Hey, it's the ginger ginger. So, who should be quivering in the boots more then? The Taliban or the rest of the British Army? Tell them about that unarmed combat thing you were telling me about. Where you paralyse them. Uh, that Spock's Vulcan death grip. Are you sure about that? Have you ever wondered what the crew of the Starship Enterprise wear to bed? Have you ever wondered why you never see Graham with a lass? No. Oh. Unarmed combat and withering put-downs. I shall return to work a wounded man. Crap. Now get away. I don't suppose this is a coincidence? I'm in the right mess of things, Anna. Yeah. All made sense in my head. Six months. Don't mess up Sophie's exams, you know. And at the same time, it, they'll give us time to plan. To organise ourselves properly. It was when you said don't mess up Sophie's GCSEs. Sounds like an excuse. No, but if she got bad grades because of me, it'd just make the whole thing a whole lot worse. Yeah. I know. And if I leave now, I might end up without. No home. No business. Kids disown him. I want us to have a better start than that. <laughs> like I want you for your money. It's not going to be that easy anyway, and I just... I just didn't want us worrying we couldn't afford to live. I've already started saving. Well, what I can afford to, anyway. Promise me. After. We just put each other first. Nobody else. I don't know how much I'm looking forward to that. So can I go? I catch my death stood around here. Come here first. That, that one there, that's Mrs. Walker. She was a landlady for more than 40 years. She had plenty of chance to do with drains then. You what? Look on her face. She looks like she's got a bad smell under her nose. <laughs> yeah, she did think she was a cut above Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Mrs. Walker? Did yeah. you call her by her first name? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. But did it apart from her husband? Well, sometimes. Anyway, listen. This is Bet Lynch, look. Now, she reminds me of you an awful lot, does Bet. Yes, she started as a barmaid and married the landlord. God, there's not a great similarity between Steve and Alec Gilroy, mind. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. If you come for another go... She hasn't. Uh, have you? I think we both said things we should apologise for. Oh, so you're apologising, are you? If you are. You're not going to argue about making up. Right. Two pints and... An orange juice, please. And whatever you're having. Oh, that our ass. Hey. Do you know that your Sue Panto's in here? In here? How? Oh. We've got photos. I was a fairy one year. <laughs> <laughs> well, Deirdre used to work for the planning department, so that can't be good. No, especially how it works with councils. A word here, you know, a back scratch there. Oh, I know exactly how it works, Peter. Don't forget, I've been doing this for a long time. Certainly since Leanne was uh, at school, at least. So, uh, do you know anybody at Weatherfield Council? I know people who know people, but I shouldn't think it would come to that matter. Good. Well, I wouldn't have the architect going in this afternoon if I thought it was a waste of time. Architect? You never said. Um, well, I'd be able to speak to him. Well, yes, of course. I mean, why wouldn't you? Oh, great, because I've got all the time. Oh, please, yes. Please let her speak to him. I mean, I'm black and blue. She keeps nudging me in the ribs every night, saying, Oh, now, should the bar be wood or marble? And the toilets, should they well, be... Shut up. 
Is there any reason they stopped doing shows in here, Betty? Well, all the falling out, love. <laughs> no change there, then. I have a vision of someone stepping into a minefield with clown shoes on. It was creative differences. Yes, I would have said that if I knew what it meant. But we've sorted them out now. So, we're going to have a go at putting one on ourselves. <laughs> You're kidding. You're not. Yeah, but neither of you have done anything like that before, have you? No. <laughs> Well, what you need is somebody who knows what they're doing to sort out all these auditions. What have you got in mind? Me. Yeah, and uh, is now the right time to uh, mention my acting career? You what? Oh, yeah, I played the lead in the Youth Offenders production of Romeo and Juliet. Romeo? You? No, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I can't eat all this. I can swap. Uh, get off, you greedy beggar. Gary won't have had a decent meal all weekend. Ma'am. Did you tell him what scrambled eggs do to your tummy? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, there you go, and I bet that's what they served. I was there a weekend. Hey, and the food was good, actually. You're not be wanting them sausages, then? I've warned you. They had him out on the firing range and all sorts. If I were 20 years younger, I'd be out there with him. Mm, you had let go. Oh, thanks. No, that's right. It was a real blast. Oh. And to be fair, the lads were a laugh too. Hey. Tell me about that one from Liverpool. Oh, Nicky <laughs> Mackwright, this guy. Oh, I don't want to know, Gary. None of you will be laughing when you get to Afghanistan, and neither will I. <sighs> Hello? Oh, yes, Mrs Burns, of course I remember you. Listen, and I hope you don't think I was cheeky asking Linda to put my name forward for that job. Oh. Well, I, uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. Well, I can only apologise. Yes, yes, Mrs. Burns, I, I understand your position completely. Thank you for ringing. Bye. Who do you think would be up for it, though? I mean, there's me, you, and Graham so far. Oh, the blood's up for it. Come on, come in. <laughs> Dave! Up for what? Panto, come on, you would be so up for it, man. A lead. He could be leading man. Huh? He? Tall, dark, handsome. You uh, don't know whether my mum's going to be up there. Oh. Leading man? Is that how you see me? Naturally. Yes. Excuse me a minute. Of course. <clears throat> <laughs> so, is this a way of remodelling your golf swing on the cheap, or is this the real deal? Stephen, she's a beautiful and sexy woman who's into golf. How can it get any better? So, you'd rather play around with her than... Play around with me. Uh, golf, it's golf, <laughs> All right, now look, as somebody who's been in more bunkers than Hitler, you really shouldn't make golf jokes. Cheers. All right, pint for me and half a lager for Manta. Yes. Hey. Hi, mate. You spent a weekend with the army. How was it? Yeah, fantastic, mate. Would be, wouldn't it? A taste of the car that you'll get the best bits. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's like when you start going out with a girl and you think that's what marriage is going to be. And it isn't. Oh. Hey, it's took him three wives to work that out, you know. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, weekend just playing at it. It's not like the real thing, is it? I'm not entirely stupid, you know. Hey, you want to get yourself down the Navy recruiting office, find out why it's called the senior service. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I should be serving you. I only want that orange juice, Steve. No, 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 no. I mean, this planning application, I gather you're behind it. Oh. Uh, look, think about Dev and the cabin. Both shops, and side by side, aren't they? Yeah. Or uh, Prima Donna and Rice. We'd be serving different markets. Not convinced, sorry. So, do I get this orange juice and a white wine for Leanne, or what? Well, I may as well make a profit while I can, eh? Hello. You just couldn't stop yourself, could you? I've just had Ruth Burns on the phone. Oh, look, I was at the library. The council officers were next door, so I thought, what's the harm? <gasps> Where do you want me to start? Well, at least the planning officer was prepared to hear me out, unlike you. 
She was humouring you. She thought the best way to get rid of you was to let you say your piece and then shut the door behind you. Well, that's not the impression I got, I'm sure She you. rang me as soon as you left. She thinks I put you up to it. So that's my chances of being re-employed right out the window. Yes, but you were so concerned about your little job that you didn't think about the dangers of this bar to my son's health, so I had to take matters into my own hands. Little job? Don't be so flaming patronising. Oh, but it's all right for you to blab to your mother about me working as Father Christmas. What's that got to do with anything? Well, everything. Because Blanche decided to tell the whole world what I was doing. So Peter used it as ammunition to make fun of me in front of George. Ah... And that's what it all boils down to. You're kicking up such a fuss because you're jealous of George. Don't be ridiculous. I'm worried about Peter. Well, in that case, you've shot yourself in the foot. Ruth Burns does everything by the book. Go through the proper channels. Peter's bar is probably dead in the water. But sneaking round, cutting corners, she won't listen to a word you say now. Do you know what? I hope it does go ahead. And when it does, I'm going to celebrate with them. Because I am sick of you thinking that you're right and everyone who disagrees with you is not only wrong, but stupid. <laughs> Eight cakes, please. Any in particular? Oh, sticky, creamy, covered in chocolate. Oh, no calories. Uh, donuts, eclairs, and ice buns. Mmm, close enough. Oh, Dennis, how are you today? <laughs> Same as ever. Oh, good, good. Uh, looking forward to Christmas? I suppose so. I, um, I presume you know that Peter and Leanna are pressing ahead with this bar. Yeah. Simon's granddad's bankroll in a mincer. Yes, he doesn't realise what a mistake that is. Anything else, Janice? Da. You don't approve, then? Oh, how could I? Yes, Ken. Uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing for me. Well, you're not following me for me donuts. Well, look, I, uh, I thought perhaps you could talk some sense into Leanne. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Ken Bylaw thinks that I talk sense. And what's more, that Leanne's going to understand it. Leanne and Peter, they're a terrific couple, but uh, throw a bar into the equation and it's a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, uh, mainly because of my son, not your stepdaughter. Peter is in the Rovers all the time. I don't think he has a problem with that. Yeah, but what if the bar fails? The pressure, you know, I worry about how he'd cope. The grown-ups, they can make up their own minds and they're not going to take any notice of anybody. Me, you, anyone who wants to stick their nose in. So you won't help me? I'm not so sure that I can. And I don't know if I would, if I could. Anyway, my mates need the sugar fix, so I better get off. Sorry. The trouble is, once Ken launches one of his campaigns, he doesn't care who gets hurt. Peter, Simon, me. And the job that you now won't get. The job? Uh, our marriage? Well, how much more of this am I supposed to take, Liz? How many times is he going to put himself first and everybody else nowhere? Is this about that Martha? You regret letting him get away with it? <sighs> no, Liz. I'm, I'm just kicking off because he's kicking off. He says it's about the bar, Peter's health. So it's not all about him this time? Well, no, he has got a point where Peter's concerned, but he's using it to get at George because he thinks he's losing Simon and Peter to him. And is it? If he carries on like this, he will do. And he won't listen unless it's Ken Barlow against the rest of the world. He doesn't think it's a fair fight. Oh. Please. Me and Claire have had this mega idea. <laughs> The Claire you were fighting with yesterday. Creative, uh, what's it? We're made up. You there? Uh, good news travels fast. Anyway, they used to put pantos on in here. I put... It, it don't remind me. I was Dandini once. Oh, no, sorry, that was the community centre. We've seen the photos. Now, please tell me you still have them glasses. Yes, that's something else I don't need reminding about. 
the best not mention the Kevin Keegan firm then. So, what's this got to do with me? We want to revive the tradition. A panther. In it. Go on, Liz, please say yes. It can be like my Crimbo Prezi. Oh, I really don't know. It'll be fun. Put people in the mood for Christmas. Before Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll do it for local charities, you know, what amateur dramatic group we're raising money for before they folded. It'd be nice for the kids to go to. Well, I must be barmy, but... Yeah, come on. Oh, nice one, Liz! <laughs> right, I'm going to ring Ailey about making some costumes at Underwill for us. Fantastic. And then, also, I reckon... Another drink. Good idea. <laughs> and we're going to have to get the lighting spot on because nothing ruins an atmosphere more than when it's wrong. Especially as the only natural light is going to be coming through the arch. Yeah. Uh, large scale kitchen? No, no, not huge, but we are going to be wanting to put on some good food, though. And getting the balance between seats and standing, that's important as well. Yeah, so not too much fixed seating, more flexible. I've seen these great chairs. Uh, can I just mention something? Oh, yes, of course, George, sorry. Simon, isn't it time to pick him up from school? Oh, I completely forgot. Is that the time? It's, it's all right, look, you two carry on, I'll go and get him. Are you sure? Yeah, it'd be a pleasure, really. Oh, OK, well, I'll, I'll call him and let him know you're coming. Great, see you later. Oh, um... Uh, would you mind if I took him out for some tea? <laughs> no. Great, uh, Terrific. <laughs> it's a pity we can't bottle him up. Just what every couple needs for Christmas. The Grandad George. <laughs> Sophie and Ben, a shining example to teenagers like everywhere. <laughs> well, I'm glad you don't think we're weird just because we're religious. Are oh, you religious? Oh, I was thinking about the amount you spend in the shop. Ah, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sure your parents are really proud. That's what I keep trying to tell them, but they don't seem that bothered. Yeah. Your dad is. He's already worried about your GCSEs. Really? Is that wrong? You can always try messing up your exams, see if he notices that. No, because that won't be funny, will it? Because when you don't see me for a month before him, because I'll be revising. Hey. Well, you heard what she said. My dad's already stressing. See ya. Bye. Ah, uh, nice kids. What's up with you? You don't normally notice teenagers unless they're nicking somewhere. Of course I notice kids. I'm a father, and I only hope that one day someone sees my twins as role models. Oh, dear. Dev, if you were any more transparent, we could use you as a window. Yeah. I presume things are going well with the lovely Bernie. Well, if she were any more perfect. But I can't finish that sentence because she couldn't be any more perfect. Oh, sweet. Oh, why should you be the only one walking around with a soft smile on your face, hmm? Me? Me? No. I shall have to ask Tyrone for tips. Uh, fellas, not often I see you two in here. Yeah, got a tip. Shovel tomorrow, first race. We're not going to take it. He was a priest. You don't mean he knows out. Father Crowley? Yeah, that's the boy. Yeah, lovely bloke. You know his stuff. Well, put it this way, if he spent half as much time studying the Bible as he does racing form, then he'll be next in line for Pope. There you go, now just put your money on. Oh, don't tell Claire. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. See ya. Hi, <laughs> right, Janice. All right, All right Jan. I've got a stalker. You are? Your dad. Oh. Oh, don't worry. It's not me he's interested in. He was after me help to stop the bar. Well, I hope you told him where to get off. Oh, yeah. Got me thinking, though. Look, I'm sure you two know what you're doing, but I know what you went through with that flaming restaurant. Jan, I'm older, wiser, more experienced, and besides, I've got Peter with me. Well, that's what Ken's worried about, isn't it? Peter and a bar. Look, once you throw in all the pressures of starting up your own business, you know, and all these family rows that it's causing. Look, Janice, me and my dad could row about what day it is. Anyway, it's going to be me running this bar. I mean, Peter will help out when we've got a babysitter for Simon, but in the main, it's going to be me. So next time you speak to Ken, tell him he's got now to worry about, all right? Well, I don't know about you, Janice. She's just convinced me. Hmm. <laughs> I promise me you'll be a good girl. Not just up till Christmas, but all the year round. And that would be the best present you could give your mummy and daddy, right?
see you later. Yeah. Um, hiya. Hi. Have a lovely night. Oh, thank you. Hi. Uh, something wrong? You're early. I know, I'm sorry. But I just thought, what's the point of sitting at home? But listen, I can go away again, turn up at seven like we planned. Ah, uh, no, no, that's, um... Uh, it's perfect. The roses are fresher. Oh, wow! I've never had roses before. Are you kidding? No, no one's ever seen me as a roses sort of woman. Well, you like? They're very you. <laughs> Mm. So what's the plan for this evening? Well, I thought, um, a meal to remember. Mm, sounds promising. I hope it lives up to expectations. Pressure, Alahan. Can you handle it? There's only one way of finding out, isn't there? <laughs> you gave my dear under a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Can we go see Santa, Brenda? I thought you were starving hungry, in desperate need of a burger and chips. That's any tape so I can tell Santa what I wanted. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's have tea first, and then we'll see. Thank you. Yes? Thank you. Yes? Yes. Yes! So, what happens next, lads? Another of these taster thingies. Um... No. You've had second thoughts? I'm joining up. Hey? After one weekend? Gary, you can't know, not to be sure. I am, Mum. Look, one of the instructors, right, he took me to one side. He said he could tell I was made of the right stuff. The sort of lad the army needs. I bet they did that with all of them when the others weren't looking. No. Mum, whatever you think, they don't want just anyone, you know. He thought I'd got something. He says there'll be a new intake after Christmas and I should put my name down. Oh, Eddie, this is stupid. Tell him. If it's what he wants to do, love. What is the for me around here, eh? There's no jobs, no now. You know, the army, I can train to do all sorts. Kill people, get yourself killed. I'd rather you're on the dole. I can learn a trade. Gary, they want you to fight. That's the only trade they want you to learn. Half the lads I was at school with ain't got jobs. Them that have, hate them. And you know what they do? They get off their heads every chance they get. If I stay around here, I'll just be like them. Lad. I've been to prison. I've got no qualities. The army will give me a chance. Yeah, it's risky, but what's left for me? Sorry, uh, I couldn't help overhearing. But my Jim, Steve's dad. You were in the army. Loved every minute. Yeah. He served in Northern Ireland in the Falklands. I'm so proud of him. But I think I were a bit jealous and all. He reckoned he were never more alive than when he were in the thick of it. No life for a married man. Well, for their wives, any road. Well, I'm not married, so that's not a problem. Well, I worry about you as much as any wife. More. Would you let your Steve join up? Steve's never been interested, but... If he'd set his heart on something, there'd be no talking him out of it. She's right, Mum. I'm sorry. Our Andy looked into it, but... He decided it won't for him. Maybe you'll do the same. Right, so what are you going to wear to this baptism? I don't know. Thank you. Well, I'd wear, like, my little white top. Because that's, like, virginal and all, isn't it? Yeah, it'd probably be the only thing that was. But why would I want to wear that anyway? It'd be all clingy and stuff when I get out of the water. Well, if you're going to be, like, soaking wet, I mean, your makeup's going to be everywhere and your hair's going to be all over the place. I mean, you still want to look good, don't you? No, it's a good job it's not a wet T-shirt competition, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I bet Ben wishes it was. Ben's glad Sophie's got more class than that. Shouldn't you be wearing something new, considering it's a special occasion? Are you buying? We could get you something. Appropriate. Well, what? For it to get soaking wet? For after? Well, she will need something to change into. Can be a Christmas present! That is so tight. Rosie's no job, don't stop her eating or taking half an hour showers. Have you seen the gas bill? Are you being serious? I'm just making a point. Like this one going on at us. Save the planet, yet I've got to follow around the house switching the lights off. So now you're seeing a car of new clothes for the most important day of my life? No, I didn't say that. I haven't got to the pub. Yeah. It's funny how he's always got money for booze, isn't it? I'm being green. I'm using the Rover's electricity, not ours. Ah, <laughs> oh, 
Ah, I wish you'd tell me where we were going. I've been worrying all day what to wear. No, no, what you're wearing is just fine. Voila. Oh! <laughs> what you like? When did you do this? Well, it's two minutes before you got around to the shop. I just got back. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah? Anyway, listen, the food is all prepared. All it needs now is my best Jamie Oliver impression. But listen, first, I really need a shower. Sorry, I thought I had that time. Uh, no, that's my fault. So, uh, to apologise, maybe I should scrub your back? Are oh, you? Well, that sounds like a deal. <laughs> uh, drink? Oh, Dev, I don't like wine. Uh... Okay, now I'm impressed. Okay. Come on, come here, Did the bins. Oh. He'll be all right with our Gary, you know. He can't know that. He's smart. I don't know where he gets it from, man, but he is. You can't fight bombs with smart. Wrong place, wrong time. You get in a round of applause when they drive you to the crib. Why did his instructor pick him up? Because he's a bright lad. He'll come back a hero, Anna. Be the first time any bloke in our family's done all to be proud of. He's still my little boy, Eddie. That's the trouble, it's not. He's a man. Someone I'd like to have by my side if I were in bother. Whether it be fighting a Taliban or rowing Miguel Platt. Yeah. You and me are going to give him the best Christmas ever. Show him how much he means to us. I can't imagine being able to say that to his face. He'd think I was soft. <laughs> so, uh, which panto is it you're doing then? I've decided. So, you're planning on putting it on before Christmas, but you haven't decided which one you're doing. Right, we could do Aladdin. Oh. Yeah. Mother Goose. Hey, and we could sponsor that. Hey. You've seen the panto, now buy the meat. It's pretty sick, that. Cheers. Have you thought about Cinderella? Ah, uh, yes. Well, we had a little bit of a disagreement about that, about who played Prince Charming. He's behind you. <sighs> Never mind, mate. So you don't have a script? Script? Why do we need one of them? Well, you've got to have something to work off so that your cast know what to say. Mm, of course. Well, I don't even like writing letters, so... Actually, I have a script from uni. You wrote a panto at uni. Mate, whatever happened to sex, drugs and rock and roll? Not even ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> I adapted it when I was teaching. You know, for the staff to do it for the school. Well, thanks. I mean, um, I'll let you know. Claire, love, do you really expect old Billy Shakespeare to come walking through that door, waving a script, going, hey, yeah, love, Here's me follow-up to Oliver. Go on, you have it, or shall I take it to the West End? <laughs> well, Shakespeare didn't actually write Oliver. He wishes he had. <laughs> right. <laughs> she means yes, please, John. Right. Well, that's sorted, then. Dare I ask who's directing it? Well, I think that pints on the house, me old love. And uh, if you're looking for your leading man... Thank you, Graham. We'll be in touch. Well, at least this one's going to be different to the ones we used to do. They ended in disaster. This one's starting this one. <laughs> well, because you've been such a good little boy, this is for you, Ethan. Was there a Father Christmas when you were little? Yes, of course. Was he young then? Well, Father Christmas is, is magical. Oh, He's not like other people. Christmas to you, Ethan. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you. All right, Kev. Drink. Yeah, got one, sir. Half? Yeah, I'm saving money. <laughs> right, for our special. Oh, you know. Yeah, we're saving and all. Are we? Well, I am. Just thought it was about time to put a few quid away. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You never know when we might need every penny we can get. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future. He's only saying that so he don't have to spend much on me at Christmas. <laughs> Still waiting for a clue as to what you want. What's it now? So, uh, what would you like Santa to bring you, Simon? I gave my dad a list and he said he'd post it to you. A list? <laughs> I hope you're not being too greedy. I want a wee console, do you know what one is? Of course, of course. Santa knows all about toys, yes. Um, have you thought about a bike instead? No, but it, my dad says if I'm good, which I am being. You know, Christmas isn't about flashy, expensive gadgets. No, it's not about an orange and a handful of monkey nuts either. Not these days, it isn't. It's about gifts given with love and thought. You mean I can't have one? Well, uh... Don't you worry, Simon, don't worry. If Santa can't afford it, Granddad George can. Really? Is that OK? Well, Christmas isn't about buying people's love, Simon. Just a minute. Don't you make him feel guilty because he's found a nice present that he can have. Look, he was perfectly happy with the bike before you came along, waving your wallet and playing the big I am. Out to go home. No, 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 it's all right. It's all right, it's all right Simon. Now, look, your granddad George thinks that you love him more than your other granddad because he can buy you bigger presents. You are such a hypocrite. All this talk about money, and you're scoring points dressed as Father Christmas. Yes, because I can see through you and the nasty little game that you're playing. Grandad, what have you done with Santa? I, I... Why is Grandad pretending to be Father Christmas? Because um, the real Santa had a toy emergency at the North Pole, so he asked your Grandad to help him out. Why? Outside, now! Why the hell did they have to bring him here? You knew this is where I was. I didn't. And he didn't twig until you went off on one, you stupid It's all right, kids. It's, it's all right. Don't worry. This is not the real Father Christmas. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. And I'm supposed to be the one who's ruining Christmas. Come on, son. Let's get you home. Then you can tell me what computer games you want. Bye, Grandad. Bye, Simon. I hope you're proud of yourself. I don't want you in my store ever again. Now, get out! I'm really sorry. So Grandad Ken, dressed as Santa Claus, he started shouting at Grandad George, did he? Yeah. Why? What was it all about? Grandad Ken said, I can't have everything I want just because it's Christmas. But Grandad George said, yes, I can. Right. Yeah. Except we know what it was really about, don't we? Whether we can have what we want. Do you know what? I think they were just joking, you know. Oh, no, they weren't. <laughs> oh, no, I bet they weren't. Right, come on then, mate. School time. Go get your bag. Oh, you don't think it spoiled Christmas for him, do you? You know, make him question whether a certain person exists. No, you'll be all right. Grandad Ken, Santa's little helper. I'll tell you what, though. I bet it didn't do me dad's Christmas any good. And then, well, they said don't come in again. So they've sacked you. What it amounts to, yeah. Well, I suppose you were never really cut out to be jolly, were you? I was fine. Until that stupid, idiotic man brought Simon in, which I'm convinced he did deliberately to cause trouble. And then he started on about how he could buy Simon anything he wanted. And you didn't like that? Well, would you? I mean, is that the sort of attitude you want him growing up with? Well, no, it's not. But don't you think things are getting way out of hand when Simon's been dragged into your feud? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Well, are you, though? You've just been telling me that none of this is your fault. Well, in this case, as it happens, I don't think it is, no. You can't have two anniversaries in the same year. But you can, because we do. Yeah, and you got to choose the one which was important. What I try to say is I forgot. I think you're right. When we celebrated October the 9th, I thought that was the one that mattered. Rosie! 
Get down here. You might not have a job, but you're not lying in bed all day. We've been married twice. We have two anniversaries. I agree. Right, I'm going. Bye, sir. Bye. See you later. Mm. Rosie! I'm not trying to make a row or anything. Good. I'll see you later. Oh, good, she's here. Must be nearly dinner time. Oh, funny. You all right? No! How can I be when I'm being shouted at all the time? So what are you doing tonight, babe? Well, for one thing, I'm going back to my flat. I can't keep wearing the same clothes. People are going to talk. Yeah, and they're going to say what lucky men I am, and you know what? They'll be right. Oh, Dev. Dev. I've got to go. I've got a lesson at ten. Yeah, right, till? Eleven. And then? And then another one. Dev, please. Yeah, okay, here you go. Okay, all right, and then uh, uh, lunch. Uh, what about lunch? What time's lunch? One o'clock? Probably. Well, probably. I'll probably see you then. Okay. 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 So, can we just... Um... Oh, hey, 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 hey. Not in a minute. Can I first just say... Thank you for a, a wonderful night, thank you. And for being a wonderful person. Yeah? So, now come... So now come... So, no, 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 no. Now we gotta go, because you're making me late. There. There. Come on. What time do you call this? Just popping out for a while. Well, I hope you're gonna be calling in on Peter. Peter? Why? Don't you think he deserves some kind of apology? Well, I think Simon might, but why Peter? Not as if I did anything wrong. Well, if nothing else, you can make sure Simon's all right. Well, all right, yeah, I'm calling on Peter, but not just yet. I've got other things I want to do first. What other things? Feeding your reindeer? I suppose this script John's got will be all right. He wrote it himself, didn't he? It just never struck me as having much of a sense of humour, that's all. Not unless you count locking Rosie Webster up as funny. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Ken. <laughs> Look, uh, I know you're not open, but uh, I wonder if I could have a quiet word. Hey, Ken, do you want to be in our pantomime? Yeah. Oh, what, this Father Christmas? Somebody been talking, have they? No, thank you. I've done all the dressing up I'm going to be doing this Christmas. What's the end about? No idea. No, it's about this bar that uh, Peter and Leanne are planning on opening. That, yeah. That I can't believe you're a fan of. Well, it's going to affect our trade. Better. It's going to affect our lives as well, all of us. But what can we do? Well, we can stand up and shout. And if enough people shout loud enough, the powers that be are going to have to listen. Mike Baldwin, Danny Baldwin, Liam. Even Tony. After he'd killed him. Anyway, they always at least put some in Kitty. It's an underworld tradition. Oh, go on, ask her, really. You know, are we going to have a Christmas party or not? And if she could not pay for it. I'm not sure I can be as blunt as that. You can be polite about it. Say please. So long as you remind her of her responsibilities. Right. You all right, Sally? Very quiet today. No, I'm fine. Quieter the better. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Hayley, go, come in. Um, we've just been talking about Christmas. Really? Well, then you've been having a better time than me, because I've just been talking to one of our clients. Or rather, I've been listening to them as they told me they won't be renewing their order. And why? Because the last one was late, and nearly 30% had to be rejected. Oh, dear. Yeah, and they're not the only unhappy customers. Just what were Tony and Luke playing at? Well, in Tony's case, playing at being daddy, we know that. I wasn't actually here. No, I don't think anyone was actually here, Hayley. The place is a shambles. Everybody's got into really bad, lazy habits, you know that. And either we all sort it out and pull together, or that lot out there, they're going to be having the longest Christmas holiday of their lives. Norris! Can I give you one of these? Oh. Well, well, what is it? Well, it's asking you to come to a meeting in the Rovers tonight. It's about, about the bar. Oh, you most certainly can. I, I think the whole idea is ridiculous. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. So you'll be there, then? Oh, yes, you can count on me. Good man, good man. Hey, Graham? Can I give you one of these? Yeah, thank you very much. I, uh, I shall be inspecting your work when you're finished, and if it's not up to standard, I shall be advising Mrs Bishop accordingly. Yeah, shall I clean your glasses before you do the inspection? Uh, and, and what's this? Weatherfield Council? Where have you got these from? Um, Weatherfield Council. What? You, you've stolen them? Careful, I could sue you for that. And if you could uh, step back, please. Thank you very much. We won't want anything falling on your head, would we? 
see, it's a bit awkward for me because I'm like a pal of Peter's. I'm his father. Oh, admit it. You gotta think what it's like for me. But most of all, think about your children and the environment they'll be growing up in. Yeah, yeah, I will, thanks. Santa's here. Christmas must have come early. How's Simon? Yeah, he's great. He's OK, thanks. I'll tell you what, it's going to take more than you cavorting around in a white beard to scare him. You know, George knew I was there. So I can only assume he brought him in deliberately to try to provoke some sort of argument. And, of course, he succeeded. And, in fact, lost me the job. Ah, oh, no, did he? Oh, well, never mind. Never going to be a long-term career, was it? Yeah, well, I couldn't just sit there and listen to him trying to buy Simon's affection. Dad, look, save it. I don't want to know. Whatever you two said, we know what that was really about, don't we? What? George supporting me and Leanne while you're trying to do everything in your power to stop it. Well, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose I am, yeah. OK, so let's just be honest about it then, shall we? OK, and you're still determined to go ahead? Of course we are. Oh, fine. £40 an hour for this. For this. It's high. Hey, look, that looks like Matt. Hey, it's Matt. Is he your next lesson? No. What? He's got my children in the back of his car. What's he doing? Why has he got my children with him? Are you sure? Come here. Come here. Dad. Yeah, of course I'm sure. Come here. Come here. Uh, so, what's going on? Why are you driving around with my kids in your car? bringing them to the Christmas party. Well, you can't object to that. Yeah, but if the kids needed a chauffeur, then why didn't Sinise just ask Mimi? What's he got to do with any of this? Well, you'll have to ask him. I'll be in the bar, OK? OK, you're wondering what's going on. Wouldn't anybody? I see you in your car. Who you got in the back? My children. Yeah, look, Sunita just no, asked see, me. I didn't even you. know that you knew Sunita. Yeah, well, I do. In yeah, well, fact, why have you never mentioned it, Matt? In fact, I've been seeing quite a lot of her, and <sighs> recently. Look, she was going to tell you this herself, and I'm sorry she hasn't. But recently, we got engaged. Engaged? Like I say, she wanted to tell you herself. When? After the wedding? <sighs> Listen, Dev, I'm sorry you had to hear it like this, but uh, come on, you are divorced. She is perfectly entitled to start a new relationship oh, with some... Just w one of you might have told me what was going on. Yeah, we should have. I'm sorry. But I'm telling you now, and I hope that you can wish as well. Yeah, well, I do. I do. Now I know. It's not our fault if bosses have been making a mess of things. Yeah, and we shouldn't be ones who have to suffer for it. We should not. Well, I think it's more of a question of us all pulling together. Oh, always say that, don't they? Yeah, and what they mean is, we have got to work harder. Er, uh, is there something going on here I should know about? Well, just, you know, if this is right, that Tony and Luke have made a mess of things, then... Dead right, yes. Well, we should be blamed for it. Nobody's blaming you. And nobody said they were. No, but we've got to work harder, and we're not even getting a Christmas do. Oh, aren't we? No. We never actually mentioned that. Look, I'm trying to save this fern. I'm trying to save your jobs. Would you rather I didn't? No, but I can only do it with your help. So we all need to just buckle down and get on with it. Starting now. Yes. Yeah, we are doing. And does Peter know about this? Well, I hope not. I certainly haven't told him. Well, 
don't you think you should? I don't want to be provoking you. I thought about this a lot, I really have, and I think it's best if we try to avoid any more arguments. Do you think you can? Well, I can try. So, no, I haven't told him. And I hope you won't. <sighs> no, OK. I promise that the meeting won't go on for very long. Well, it can go on for as long as they like, as long as people are buying ale. Yes, ladies. Uh, pint, please, and a vodka and tonic. Yeah. And are we against this bar or what? Yeah, of course we are. Oh, you're not, are you? It's by all sorts. Well, we've no choice. People aren't going to want to come in here if there's a brand new place at the other end of the street, are there? They might. You know, regulars. You two would still come in, wouldn't you? No. It'd depend on the prices. Hi, Becky. Hiya. Pint of bitter and a glass of white wine, please. Yeah. Hi, Becky. Hi, Claire. You in favour of this new bar? Oh, no. I am dead against it. So is Ashley. Just this minute put them to bed, but of course they're still wide awake. Daddy, we're not asleep. You wait up there. Your daddy's going to come up and see you. Go on, bed. Yes, I am. It's like in two minutes. Mwah. Go on. I just want a quick word with Mummy first, yeah? I know, Matt rang me. You know, it would have been um, nice if I heard it from you. And you would have. I didn't know you were going to be at the golf club this dinner time. So, how long have you been seeing him? Best part of a year. <laughs> now, you see, I find that amazing. But the best part of a year, you haven't even mentioned his name. Do you tell me the names of all the women you're seeing? Of course you don't. I would if I was in a serious relationship. You're telling me you're not? I'm not. No. Anyway, listen, I better go in there. What do you want? Tea? Coffee? Well, coffee would be, uh, nice. Thank you. Can I have a real Christmas tree this year? Yeah, I don't see why not. What, in a crib? Go on, say it. You want a baby Jesus in a manger? With a mule and a rat, <laughs> whatever those animals were. It was an ox and an ass. Uh, here we are. Tell you what, a bit dusty up there. Oh, go put it on the table, Claude. Huh? Someone should have moved no, it. No, it doesn't matter. Right, oh. and we're going to need a tree. Yes, I know. Well, look at this. What a word of old rubbish. Oh, what happened with that? What, Mum? That is the most rubbishy thing of a lot. Do you know who made this? You did. <laughs> you made this when you were four. Oh, look, Kevin. Oh, yes. Sat at that kitchen table with a pair of scissors. So worried you were going to cut yourself, but you didn't. Tell him. But come on, there'll be cars parked everywhere, drunks wandering the streets. Like now, you mean? Yeah, can't get much worse. Depends on what kind of people it attracts. Oh, 
fit fellas will loads of money be nice. Because you'll not find any of them round here. No, you don't, and I have been looking for years. Yeah, Kenzie, must be nearly ready for the off. Glass of wine? Yes, please. Hello. Hello. Uh, a glass of red wine and a pint of bitter, please. Liz. Right here. So, you're going to be lecturing us all on the evils of drink with a pint in your hand. Well, I enjoy a drink, you know I do. Doesn't mean I want another bar opening at the end of this street. Run by your son. Run by anybody. So, what? You're still on Peter's side, is that what you're saying? Well, if I am, it's only because you make it so flaming hard to be on yours. Are you sure? Is this really the man you want to spend the rest of your life with? Dev, you're not my husband anymore. I don't have to justify myself to you. No, no, but I am the father of those two children. And you those. still will be. Okay, and so I have a right to ask questions about a man who might be moving in here. Or perhaps he already has. I don't think that's any of your business. Well, shall I take that as a yes? Well, now that means he spends time with my children. More time than I do. Now, you marry him, and what, what, how long? How long before they start calling him Daddy? No, they won't. They'll call him Matt, like they do now. I'm sorry, I, I hoped you'd be pleased for me. Yeah, well, you know, I am, you know, I am. Don't sound it. <laughs> Just takes a little getting used to. Uh, I hope you're very happy. Thank you. Oh, I was going to do with these chops, but they've not defrosted. Oh, well, never mind. Hey, why don't we go out? I'll buy you a pizza. And what about Simon? Well, Janice will babysit, won't she? I mean, it's not like I can ask my lot right now, is it? I mean, I'd be happy to see those premises under the viaduct put to good use. Of course I would. I don't know, against people drinking or having a good time. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just... But putting a bar in there is asking for trouble. I mean, Jan, we just wondered if you could do a spot of babysitting. No, I'm in Kent's meeting. Not that I want to be. I've only come in for a drink. <sighs> you know what about the bar? Yeah, well, you know what he's like. There'll be no room for parking. It'll be noisy. It's going to be open late. There's going to be litter. And there's going to be people leaving. That means coming out onto this street at midnight, one o'clock, Two o'clock in the morning. What meeting? Where? Jan, where is this meeting? In Rovers. Look, I've got to go, right? I'll have to speak to you later. Sorry. No. A lot of people think there's nothing we can do about it. And even if we try, nobody will listen. But that's not true. There's a lot we can do about it and people will have to listen. For instance, we can all write a letter to our local councillor. Only if everybody knows who they are. Good point, Norris. Well, if you don't know, it's very easy to find out. I can't remember the last time I wrote a letter. In fact, we could put a list of their names and addresses up here in this pub. Is that all right, Liz? Yeah, sure. Good. And then we all write to them and demand a public meeting. Well, Ken, can I suggest that you write a letter and then everybody else copy it? I think it would be better if we all used our own words. Oh, but no swearing. Just make clear your opposition and then demand, and this is the important bit, demand a public meeting. I thought you were already having one of them. Oh, no, sorry. This isn't really public, is it? Because you didn't tell everybody about it, did you? There was a reason for that. Of course there were. So folk would only hear one side of the story, so it would just be you, you, you and nobody else. Well, I know this man better than anybody because I'm his son. And I'm telling you now, don't listen to a word that he says because he will do anything to get his own mean little way like this secret meeting has just demonstrated. So do what I do, please, and just ignore him. Oh, and the arrangements for Christmas. You can forget them. Me and your grandson will be somewhere else, all right? Oh, no. No, Peter. Pe <sighs> Three cheers for Santa, that's what I say. Who needs a turkey when we've got you? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be cowed over this. If you were sorry, you'd go straight round to Peter's and apologise so we could all spend Christmas together. 
He still thinks he's running that paper from 20 years ago. Remember when he was always on his high horse, crusading about one thing or another? That's not such a bad idea, actually. How do you mean? Well, I still do the odd article for the Gazette. Maybe I could write one about this. You wouldn't dare. Why not? What harm could it do? It'd make things a thousand times worse. Not if it gets the result that the community needs. But you're not serious. I certainly am. No, thank you, Blanche. For once in your life, you made a useful contribution. Morning. Don't come too close, Norris. Oh, uh, why? Psst, oh, red up this ladder, if you get my meaning. Oh, so you're admitting it is stolen? Morning, Norris. Brass neck. Early bird. Morning, Ailey. Got some invoicing to do, so I thought I'd make a start before the masses arrive. <laughs> what brings you in? It's my factory, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Brilliant. So that's one in calf, two here. What are you doing? Cinderella auditions tonight, just putting a few posters up. Fancy it, Jan? Oh, no. I'm not good at out like that, mate. Shame. <laughs> We're in need of a wicked queen, eh, with Claire? Hey, cheeky beggar. And that's Snow White. See? Shows what you know. Now then, John Boy, where's his flipping script? Oh, this dinner time, I promise. Well, don't forget, cos we're auditioning tonight. No, I won't. I'll see, see ya. ya. <laughs> How many you got coming, Claire? Don't know yet. I'll be queuing around the block once to see my posters. Yeah. Are you coming down there tonight or what? Of course it is. This is your big chance. Mm. Little things please little minds. What's eating you? Have you fell out with your girlfriend or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope there's Carla. The late, aren't we? Oh, flaming Nora. After what she said yesterday and all. Morning, Mrs. Connor. Hey, we were lucky there. Maybe things are even worse than she's letting on. There you go. Eggs for your fried egg sandwich. Well, it's your cholesterol levels and not mine. Thanks. Oh, you're not still worrying about last night, are you? No, no, no. I've uh, just had Blanche round. Oh, yeah? Didn't take her long to come and stick the boot in, did it? Oh, it's my dad she's got it in for, actually. Really? Yeah. She said the way he's been behaving lately, he could teach the dirty tricks department a thing or two in MI5. <laughs> wow. I can't believe she actually agrees with you. Well, no, not exactly. She had a diplomatic hat on. Diplomatic? Blanche? You'll be surprised what she can do when she wants something bad enough. Oh, let me guess. The Barlow family Christmas? Yeah, well, I told her we're spending it with George and Eve. I want Simon to have a Christmas that he can remember, and with my dad around, he's not going to get that because he's going to want to start an argument every five minutes. And what's she say to that? Oh, but think what it's going to do to Simon if he can't see us over Christmas. Oh, nothing like a bit of good old moral blackmail, then. Yeah. Oh, you didn't give in to her? No, no way. But I did agree not to inflame things between now and Christmas, provided, though, that he does the same. Right. Brown wants her, then. How do you mean? Well, she's not going to leave it there, is she? Give her a couple of days, she'll be back for more. Well... She can go and whistle. Morning. All right. Just settling back in. Oh, I'm getting there. One or two problems with the factory, but otherwise. Listen, Carla, I'm, I'm sorry for what I said at the court the other day. My head was all over the place. Yeah, I want everyone's. Yeah, but I, I shouldn't have taken it out on you. It wasn't your fault what you did. And as for suggesting that you knew something about it... Well, forget it, eh? Can't be easy for you in there with all them memories. Yeah, well, you just have to get on with it, don't you? Have you heard from him? Tony? No. Well, listen, you know where I am if you fancy a natter.
why don't you just take out a full page ad while you're at it? This is to declare that I want to split my family down the middle. When Simon understands all this, he'll thank me for what I'm doing. You'll be lucky to ever see Simon again the way you're going. There's been a breakthrough. Why, what's happened? Peter's ready to call it a truce till after Christmas, if Ken is. Well, he's still changed his tune. Knows he's in the wrong, obviously. He were dead against it, if you must know. I were practically on me knees before he agreed. When you say a truce... He's not backing down about the bar. But he's ready not to inflame things further before the new year. So we could spend Christmas together? Well, he didn't say that either, but it's a step in the right direction. Oh, well done, Mother. So, what do you say, Kenneth? Well, I say it suits him very well. How come? No opposition from me for the next two weeks. Gets him that bit closer to the deadline on his planning application. Now, listen. Either you go along with this, or you'll be spending Christmas without me. Never mind Simon and Peter. He's invited me and Deirdre for Christmas Day, so you'd be on your own. So decide, Ken. Which is more important to you? Your Flaming Gazette article or me? Hallelujah. Large Virgin Mary, please, Liz. Don't spare the Tabasco. Light things up, dear. Yeah, I'm sorry about last night, but if you're going to play host to Agitated, you've got to expect a few sparks to fly. Got a point, Mum. What you need to think about, Steve, is streetcars. I'm going to bring you a lot of training in the evenings, you know, especially late at night. That's true. Well, yeah, but it's not going to make up for what we're losing here. Nothing like. See, that's true and all. Hi, Peter. Hey, love. Um, will you be needing staff for your new bar? Most definitely, yeah. Well, you know where to come then. Uh, we're always on the lookout for staff if you're looking for bar work, Rosa. Well, I was looking for something a bit more upmarket, actually. Somewhere where my assets will be appreciated. I'll, uh, I'll bear them in mind. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Rosa. Rosie. Uh, a pint of Italy, please. Oh, glad I've got you, Peter. Uh, this bar conversion you're doing, will you be putting it out of tender or what? Uh, bit of a sore point in here, mate. Oh, say no more. I'll, uh, I'll meet you down there later, eh? Mum's a word. Oh! I, 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 excuse me. I'd, uh, I'd like to report a theft. Why? What's been stolen? This ladder here. He's taken it from the council. The name's on the side, look. Do you mind coming down for a quick word, sir? Not so cocky now, are you? Eh? He was bragging about it this morning. You'd think an ex-convict would have a bit more nous. Is this your ladder? It is, yeah. Then why does it say Weatherfield Council on the side? Because uh, it used to belong to them. I bought it when they had a clear out. <laughs> oh, yes, and my name's Sir Philip Green. Do you have a receipt to prove this, Mr...? Uh, Proctor. Graham Proctor. As it happens, since this gentleman was casting aspersions on my honesty yesterday, I thought I'd keep it about my person, just in case. Voila. Yep, that all seems to be in order. Uh, no, Always no, a no. pleasure to help the law. Uh, look, 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 the, the, this is a setup. Do you know what the penalties are for making false accusations, Mr. Cole? Norris, Cole. But he as good as told me this morning that it was stolen. But it clearly isn't stolen. No, no, I can see that now, can't I? Then get your facts right in future before you start accusing people. Wasting police time is another serious offence. But, but he, he lied to me deliberately. That your shop, is it? Yes, yes, yes. I, I've worked there for ten years. Should know better then, shouldn't you? Norris Cole. I'll remember that name. Hello? Hey, it's me. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, well, just, uh, just to let you know that I've done the house insurance for next year. Why? Was there a problem? Uh, no, no, no. It uh, falls due next week. Uh, well, I just didn't want you worrying. All right. So, um, uh, how are the kids? Same as they were yesterday when you saw them. 
Well, that's good. That's uh, that's good. Um, and uh, Matt? Which is the real reason you're ringing? No, 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 no. Hey, no, no, I just. Uh... I don't want to talk about this. <sighs> and why not? I think if he's raising my kids, it's absolutely my business. Look, he's not going to edge you out. I said sorry for not telling you earlier. There's nothing more to say. Well, I think there's a lot more to say. Dev, I'm going now. Uh, Bye. Uh, listen. We really need to... John Boy, and no excuses this time. Right. Now, I had a glance through it this morning. It does need some rewriting, I'm afraid. Well, what's up with it? Well, it's six years since I last worked on it. The jokes soon date. Like how? Well, comparing Prince Charming to Johnny Wilkinson after he won us the World Cup, the hunt for Cinderella with the hunt for Saddam Hussein, where the Americans spent months looking for him after Yeah, yeah, happened. OK, we get the message. Bring it up to say a little bit. Well, I thought I'd work in some local references too. Like getting the ugly sisters to get buttons to go to the cabin for fags. Or try to pull men in the rovers. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, but when are you going to do this? Well, I've got two copies, so you keep that one, I'll work on the other one. OK, good. And will you be there, Fizz? Me? Um, no, I think I'll be more used in the costume department. I used to get stage fright at school. Well, let's just hope we get a cast, else there'll be no costumes to make. Yes, I know. Laters. See ya. That's nice. What? People round here wanting your help. Wouldn't have happened a couple of weeks ago. Onwards and upwards. Is, uh, is everything all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just uh, keeping a lookout for Norris, that's all. Why? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Well, he tried to get me arrested. He what? Yeah, he accused me of stealing my ladder. No. I mean, I had a receipt, so it was OK, but, you know, once you've been inside... Absolutely. I'll have a word with him when he gets in. Oh, I don't want to cause any bother. No, but he can't go round making accusations like that. Now, here, take that as well. No, no, I couldn't. Uh, for your trouble, I insist. And don't let him put you off coming again. Thanks, Mrs B. You're a star. Bye-bye. Bye. What's the hot pot like? OK. Mmm, that is nice. Mm. What is it with women? Order a salad, eat your hot pot. Got to kid ourselves with sticking to the diet. Are you going up for any of these auditions, no. then, better? <laughs> I don't audition, love. I thought they offered me the part of the don't. <laughs> Very grand. <laughs> Toy. It's good enough for Dame Judy. It's good enough for me. <laughs> well, you know, I could always play Cinderella. Yeah, as easy as that, love. That's why it says auditions. I'm probably doing the part anyway. Who says? Well, it was my idea to do a panto, so... We're only doing drama in the first place because of me. Um, how do you know I don't want it? Well, aren't you a bit old? Don't start dredging that up again, you little slapper. <laughs> Cinderella didn't have a son who was doing A-levels. Be fair, Michelle. And she's got two kids! They're not as old as yours. Order, order. Now listen, we'll settle this tonight. Any argy bargy, and I'll decide. You're not hungry? Bernie didn't spoil it, did she, with a stolen mouthful? Come on, don't be ridiculous. What's wrong? Is Anita's new man by any chance? Look, she was bound to meet someone eventually. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I assume she's an attractive woman. With a, a nice house. You're going to have to let this go, Deb. Yeah, well, it's easy for you to say, isn't it? How long since she broke up? Four years. Yeah, but they're still my children. But she says she's not trying to push you away from them. Then I don't, I don't understand. Unless you still have feelings for her. Look, I do not have feelings for her. Excuse me. That's the way I do it, anyway. What do you think? I'll have to talk to George. He's playing. Well, look, if you want proof as to whether I'm any good or not, here's one I did earlier. Oh, is this the, uh, is the place in the precinct? Yeah. 
Mention my name in there, you get more froth on your cappuccino. <laughs> Don't know if that's a good thing or not, is it? So, this is your idea of a truth. What? I agree to back pedal while you go charging ahead. I'll tell you what, Pete, um, I'll catch you later. Yes, thank you, Bill. Yeah, Organising your builder, laughing and joking. Whoa, whoa. I agreed not to inflame things. Well, what's this if it's not provocation in broad daylight? I never said anything about putting my life on hold. Oh, I should have known I couldn't trust you. Oh, hang on. Said the man who was handing out leaflets behind my back yesterday. Well, what would you rather have done? Had a blazing row? It's not stopped you before. And what was all that about this morning? Sending Blanche round to do your dirty work? I had no idea she was going round. Oh, really, I bet. This truce is just a charade to you, isn't it? It can be anything you want it to be. I'm past caring. Did Carl say out about us being late this morning? Oh, I think she's got more pressing things on her mind. I couldn't believe it when she didn't have a go at us. I don't mean to say you can make out a bit of it. Has she said any more since yesterday? No, when I came in this morning, she looked like she had the cares of the world on her shoulders. Hey, up. Yeah. I'm off out, Hayley. I'm going to be a couple of hours. OK. Um, will you give Rickson's the bell and tell them to cancel the meeting? Do you want me to reschedule? No, not this one. Well, I thought it was important. It'll have to wait. I think you were right what you said this morning, first. There's more to this than meets the eye. <laughs> he said he didn't care about the truth and walked off. And what do you say he'd been doing? He was outside the joinery discussing the plans with Bill Webster. I mean, if that's not provocative. Yeah, but he didn't know you were going to walk past, though, did he? Well, it's a fair bet. It was something about his manner as well, like he couldn't give a damn. I think you should forget it. When he's laughing in my face? You're overreacting. You know, I may as well write my column for the Gazette if he's going to be like this. Oh, no, you don't. Well, I can't take this lying down. And you can't break your promise to me. Fogged off like this. We have nothing more to say. Kids in? No, they're out. With him? He's picking them up from school. School? Well, that's good. Well, good, that means we've got time to talk, hmm? Five minutes. Come on, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with you. Did, 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 did you know that there's a crack in this window? So? So, wasn't there this morning before he cleaned them. You're not telling me you inspect the windows every time someone comes? I do when he's cleaning them. It, the, the man's a liability. Mm. He expresses similar sentiments about you. Who's this? Oh, Graham. Uh, perfectly good window cleaner. See, look, look. It, it moves when I press against it. Yeah, well, don't make it worse. He must have given it a right good hammering. Oh, watch out! Oh. Uh, are you all right, Emily? Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. It could have killed you, could that? Oh, uh, you'd have been innocent, of course. Oh, he's going to pay for this. Oh. You stay on my case like this and we're going to fall out. Mm -hmm. If you keep on going behind my back, dear, then the same's going to happen. I don't keep going behind your back. So why don't you tell me about him? Can you blame me when I knew I'd get all this? Oh, good. But I suppose you're going to carry on living here, hmm? in my house. Well, if it's going to be a sticking point, we'll live somewhere else. Matt's got money of his own. Oh, good. Well, that'll take the kids even further away from me. Well, you can't have it well, both ways. I suppose ways. that's going to happen anyway, though, isn't it? Once you marry him... I don't no, see no, why. No, listen, right? I am not going to stand for this. So I can't make a fresh start with a decent man and you can have all the floozies you like? What floozies? Well, where do I start? What floozies, hun? Pray Mandel's wife, their daughter, and now this Bernie. Oh, and how do you know about her? Because Matt's told me. Because Matt's told you. Yeah. Do you think people walk around with their eyes shut? Truth is, he's more responsible than you. He's not a womanizer like you, and he'll probably make a better father than you. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, come here. Hey, it's all right. Don't be scared. Daddy was just going, weren't you? I mean, in short, no one wants it. Except those who stand to gain commercially, but he's still pressing ahead. 
It's going to be a disaster for the community. You still write the odd piece for us now, don't we, Ken? That's right, yeah. So why don't you cover this? Well, I think we have more power if someone neutral on the permanent staff handled it. I mean, this is my son we're talking about, after all. Yeah, I can see that, but... Didn't he have a fire in his flat a few months back? Indeed he did. Him and his young lad had to be rescued because he'd fallen asleep drunk. Wonder of a beaker or two now and again, then. Yeah, but he hasn't touched it since the fire. And that's something else that concerns me. I mean, if the bar goes ahead, he's going to be in there every night and the temptation will be colossal. So things between father and son are at a low ebb right now. Oh, I can safely say they've never been worse. And you're not worried a piece in the Gazette might stoke up the flames? Well, normally I'd say yes, but given what's at stake, I don't see I have any other choice. Curiosity, not pity. If you're open for a shoulder to cry in. I'm not. Good. So what do you want? Of course, it, it wasn't really that bad until Norris started fiddling with it. That's beside the point. It was already cracked. Yeah, I bet you did it yourself because you're miffed over them ladders. Unlike some people, I have better things to do with my time than play practical jokes. So, what are you going to do about it? Well, as a favour to Mrs B, I'll board it up. But no way we're we replacing the glass. No, you don't even have to do that. Th that's the least it could do. Well, go on, get on with it. Well, I can't do it now. I've got an audition to prepare for. Oh. Is it the Bob Panto? Yeah, I'm auditioning for the part. Never mind all that. When are you going to do it? Tonight. But this is not a gesture of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try and put things right? Well, not put things right. I can never do that. Can you get to the point? Just want her to understand. Have you seen her? How is she? She's gone. She couldn't get far enough away from you. You wrecked her life, Tony. Twice over. You wrecked mine as well as if you're interested. Trying to make amends. That's why I gave myself up. Oh, please. You expect me to feel sorry for you. Well, I don't. I'm glad you're suffering. didn't. What? That's why I has to see you. To tell you. Jimmy's not dead. Nice walk. Yes, thanks. You feel better? A bit. Look, Ken, I... I know how hard this is for you, which is why I really appreciate you making the effort. Well... Now, no more talk about it, eh? The gunfire has stopped. Let's just enjoy the silence. Tony. Look at me, Tony. What do you mean, Jimmy's not dead? He's not. Are you crazy? We both saw him. He was lying there. You took his pulse. No, he I... He was dead. I told you he was dead. I could see straight away as soon as I went over. You told me I killed him. It was a way out for both of us. That's why I put the blanket over him. So that you couldn't see. You bastard. Have you any 
idea what you've put me through. Every morning waking up, hoping it wasn't true, then remembering. Whatever I did, it was there. No going away. Now you tell me it never even happened. So you'll go to Al Alam then? Um, have you got any Scotch broth, Dev? Just the bottom shelf. Can I have a word? <laughs> yeah. What is it? Bye. <laughs> Look, Dev, I understand your concerns, I do, but I love Sunita. And I love those kids as if they were my own. Yeah, but they're not Matt. And they've got a perfectly good father here. Oh. Well, with respect, that's the point, isn't it? You're here, you're not there. They need a father figure in their lives all the time, not just occasionally. Well, and you plan to be that man, do you? Well, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Since you're so desperate to have kids, why don't you go and make a few of your own? We plan to. Uh, I'll, I'll just pop back later. Hey, Matt. Now, you seem like a very, uh, reasonable man. I like to think so. Yeah. Well, the kind who's always careful, you know, thinks before he acts, plans where his holiday's gonna be like a year in advance. Yeah, puts a, a little something aside each month for his private pension. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> No. No, but you see, the thing is, I don't want my kids to be brought up reasonable. Because I want them to have fire in their bellies and I want them to care enough about things to get angry! And because I care about my kids, I will get angry and I won't be, uh, be civilised and I won't be reasonable. All right? Well, in that case, maybe you should just stop coming round because I will not have the kids or Sunita upset. must have felt like manna sent from heaven. Not only do you get to keep your precious factory, you get to keep me quiet about Liam. Sorry. Somehow, Tony, sorry just doesn't cut it. So if Jimmy's not dead, where is he? I don't know. Police are still looking for him. Well, did he go abroad? What? I don't know. If I did, I'd have told them. So he's out there somewhere. No, and I nearly killed him. What if he finds out I'm back? What if he tries to get me again? He won't. How do you know? Because he didn't want to in the first place. He only came after you because I made him. What? You looked me in the eye and swore you never sent him. I was despicable. Be scared. I'll tell the police of what he did. He's already up for murder. He's got nothing to lose. Yeah. I've just swapped one nightmare for another. I'm, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder for him for the rest of my life. Do you think she'll ever forgive me? for me, won't they? Eh? 
Well, seeing as I'm covering yours and Betty's shifts while you do the auditions. Hey, <clears throat> which one's better? You shall go to the ball. Or, <clears throat> you shall go to the ball. Well, you see, I'd be a better fairy godmother. Give it a bit of glamour, you know. Fishnet stockings, sparkly skirt, that sort of thing. It's Cinderella, not Puss in Boots. Oh, I'll see what I can do with this. Next! Wish me luck. I mean, a nerve of a man was coming into my shop and he sounded off about my kids. Well, you did go round there, gun in for him. Hi, uh, a bottle of lager and a... Uh... And a uh, fizzy water. No, I didn't. Right. I didn't. He brought that on himself. Well, he seems OK to me. Yeah. yeah if you like patronising and smug and self-righteous, I want you to cancel his golf lessons. You what? Yeah, please. All right? As a favour to me. Look, I am not getting caught up in your crossfire. Besides, I think you've been totally unreasonable. Your ex is entitled to have a bloke in her life. Have you got kids? You know I haven't. So you really don't know what you're talking about, do you? And you call him patronising. OK, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit, uh, I'm wound up. Yeah, clearly. So, I tell you what, when you've de-stressed yourself, give me a call. Until then, don't bother. <laughs> Bernie, I'll... Uh, Dad. Yeah. I hope we're going to pay for these. Help you, mate. Are you Peter Barlow? That's right, yeah. Would you care to comment on the public opposition to the bar you're planning to open? Not really, no. I believe this has split the family apart. Father and son in blazing bar battle. No comment. How do you know all this anyway? Is it true that you're an alcoholic? Yeah, why? Would you care to explain to me why I've just been accosted by a journalist asking for my comments on the bar I'm planning to open? I think you've just answered your own question. Don't get smart with me. You promised you wouldn't write anything. And I didn't. No, you just got a reporter to do it for you. Well, he broke his side of the bargain, ploughing ahead, getting the builders in. He made it sound like we're opening a nightclub. I gave him the facts. Yeah. Including me being an alcoholic. You never. Well, it's hardly a secret. Yeah, well, he doesn't want it splashed all over the front page. How could you? Well, people have a right to know what's going on in their community. <sighs> I don't want to fight with you. Well, you're making a damn good job of it. This is out and out war. You'd better dig yourself a deep trench. Enjoy your meal. Well, where are you going? Anywhere that isn't near you. Yeah, I just feel, um, edged out. What your ex is like, are you kids? Mm. All the kids, of course. Well, then make sure you're not. How? Look, when I wanted Amy, I was as nice as pie to Tracy. My advice, grit your teeth, keep smiling. Even if you didn't want to smash his face. So, who have we got in for cinders, then? Uh, Becky and Claire. Could be awkward. Well, of course. You see, I mean, I've got to work with Becky. Hey, I hope you're not suggesting we rig it. Should I keep my fingers crossed? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for me, yeah? Oh, oh, hold on a minute. No. <clears throat> OK, yeah, come on in. OK, so, you're the ugly sisters, right? 
Give me that line where I can't go to the ball. <clears throat> you can't go to the ball. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yes, yeah, says who? Oh. Uh, says me. Right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Cos you two ugly old bats, no disrespect, Betty. Well, that's all right. Look. You two are the ones staying at home. Me? I'm going out to have myself a good time. So put that in your pipes and smoke it. Peace. Uh -huh. So, what do we reckon? Well, you didn't really stick to the script. No. That's because I'm playing it for real. Cinders was a wimp. I'd give her some spirit. There's no, no way would she not no. go to that ball. Yeah, but then there'd be no story. Right. Still, I mean, if, well, it was a very, very enthusiastic audition, love. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know. Right. So much for crossing my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? Oh, not too dead yet. We'll see. Oh. Break a leg. I wish she would. She's been driving us mad all week. She had the kids running around pretending to be mice. Well, I wish her luck, because she's going to need it in there with them two. I mean, there are this Simon and Cheryl. That wouldn't be sour grapes, would it? No. You were just turned down for fairy godmother. I think they've got someone else in mind. <laughs> now, now, look, before you close it again, just like to say I haven't come to uh, cause trouble, I've come to apologise, I overreacted, and I'm sorry. All right, fine. Apology accepted. Good. I'd like to apologise to Sunita as well. She's out. Well, uh, in that case, uh, can I wait? Well, I'd rather you didn't. I'm about to put the twins to bed. Please? Now, and Becky, we thought that you would be perfect for the part of Dandini. Yeah. Prince's servant. Ah, uh, yeah, but he's not just a servant, is he? I mean, in a way, he's more colourful than the prince. And funnier. Can I have a sword? Well, I suppose so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, John, you know when you say that the, uh, the prince isn't colourful or funny, well, actually, I was actually thinking about putting a bit of Johnny Depp into the part. Well, actually, Graham, we decided that you weren't quite right for Prince Charming. Oh. We thought buttons instead. Oh. Right. Don't forget, we do need another ugly sister, you know, to be with Sean. Right? No way. No. Although I would uh, consider being fairy godmother. Already cast, love. Who is it? Me. <laughs> you? <laughs> I'm doing this for nothing, you know. There's got to be some perks. Well, I don't see why I couldn't have been the fairy godmother. Oh. No, but come on, it's that. That's a bit obvious. Anyway, you'll make a brilliant ugly sister. Hey, Cinders, get down from that chimney, you mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, hey. No, it wasn't auditioning. Too late, you cast. No, no, no. Oh, go on, it's for charity. Yeah, and it's nice if you're going to find it hard. You're a pro, man. <sighs> All right, then. <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. I just... I saw the light on and I thought you must be working late. Oh, I've got a lot to catch up on. You look really stressed. It's just been one of them days, you know. One minute you're up, next minute you're down. Yeah, I know. It's not easy, is it? Well, look, uh, come to the pub, we'll have a drink. No, you're all right. Carla, sometimes it helps, you know, to, to get things off your chest. Might help some people. Personally, I just prefer to keep busy. You really didn't have to do this, you know. Oh, yes, he did. Guess what? What? I've just been checking my emails and we've won that competition. Uh, the, the one for the toilet cleaner? Yes, uh, we have got one 
thousand pounds. Ready, steady, and go! Look, it, it's getting late. It's time they should go to bed. Well, it doesn't matter if they're up just a little bit longer. Matt and Dan see me off and right? Yeah, well, you won't have to deal with them in the morning. Come on, okay, let's go. all right, hey, hey. Just another few minutes. Now! All right. I'll put them to bed. No, they're used to me doing it. We've got our own bedtime routine. Oh! Do you now? Oh! What is this? The army? Oh, left, right, left, right. Well, everything just falls to pieces and bits if, if your precious routines are slightly interrupted. You can see yourself out, can't you? Come on, right, you lot, let's go run you a bath. Get your hands off them. Sorry? You're not bathing my kids. I beg you. You're not time. going anywhere near my kids. What's going on? This. Well, you normally let a, a practical stranger put the kids to bed. I mean, he was going to give him a bath, for God's sake. What the hell is wrong with that? What? I hope you are not insinuating I'll what I think Andy you are. I'll upstairs now. Come on. How dare you? Matt's hardly a stranger. He's going to be their stepfather. <laughs> You're right. Over my dead body. And since when did that have anything to do with They're you? They're my kids. Right, my kids. So I have some say on who has the right to bring them up. Not anymore, you don't. And listen, why don't you just shut up? In fact, why don't you just go? Go and get out! Who the hell do you think you are? This isn't even your house! Well, I think you'll find it is, Matt, because I'm the one who paid for it. Matt, please. And you can get out of it now! Look, I'm just trying to protect the kids here. Well, they don't need protecting. In fact, they don't need you coming round here with your sick insinuations. All right, all right, so maybe I overreacted. Good at that, aren't you? So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to stand here and watch you make the biggest mistake of your life. You were the biggest mistake of my life. Get out! Go on! And if you dare come around here again without asking, I will stop your access altogether! No, you wouldn't. You watch me. You wouldn't! You wouldn't! back some other time. Sorry. Oh, no. Is that your point, Marion mug? I was attempting to scramble eggs in the microwave. Ping startled me. <laughs> Remember our weekend there, when we got mad on them videos at Prisoner and that pub lunch you did at Bar and she asked you table number and you said... Yeah, I'm not a number, I'm a free man. <laughs> <laughs> Can it not be good mood? It's a souvenir mug, Hayley, not the Elgin marbles. Sorry, that sounded rude. I'll... I'll see you later. Was 
so she's off, just like that? Yeah, tomorrow. Stocking up on sunscreen and tea bags as we speak. Doesn't sound like Blanche. Do you know, I don't know if I could be bothered to send any Christmas cards. I mean, when was the last time you saw any multiracial gang of kids tobogganing and having a laugh? <laughs> no, no, it's this woman she knows at the one o'clock club, May Penn. If that was Manchester, it'd be more than snowballs they were throwing. Oh, is that the, uh, the son who built the mud huts in Mozambique? No, the one with the gay son, with the dogs. One best of showing Crufts one year, but got it stripped off him because he was too old. What, the son? No, the dog. Anyway, he's gone to Disneyland with his fella, and he wants his mother to babysit for him in Portugal. Oh, oh Deirdre! Says she can take anyone she likes with her for company, and he'll pay the airfare. So, of course, my mother was like a rabbit out of a trap, <laughs> off for a week in the sunshine. <laughs> Deirdre, I, I, I really think you should see this. I'm talking, Norris. What? It's on the front page. Yes, and pages four and five inside. Oh. You, you see, they've gone for the dysfunctional family angle, so they're not short of material. I can't believe this. I oh, can't believe what? This, this interview that Ken's done for the Gazette. It, there's a piece in here about me and John Lindsay. How could he do this to us? There's some about your Tracy, too. You know, the whole murder thing. Yeah, well, we didn't think you meant that they published her recipe for mince pies. <laughs> it, it puts me in a very difficult position. Oh, that's 680. 680 for ten tatty pieces of card? At least Dick Turpin had the decency to wear a mask and keep them. <laughs> Oh, there's still 60p for the Gazette. Well, I'm sure you'll be selling a lot more of them when word gets out. Just think of it as a commission. Uh, now, that's theft. Ring 999! So, great work today, girls. You got that deadline done with hours to spare. Cake's on me today, yeah? Bring on the custard slices. Now then, we all know what a difficult time it's been. That's one way of putting it. And the next few months is going to be mech or brek for us, so... I've got Rickson's robes coming in later. Now, a reorder from them is going to make all the difference. So please, no hilarious one-liners. No messing around. Let's look like what we are, yeah? A hard-working, serious-minded business. Of course, Mrs Connor. We'll make out we know what we're doing, don't worry. Eh? Good. Right, Chelsea Bun for me, then. Ailey, can I have a quick word? Her husband murders a boyfriend and she calls it a difficult time. I'm sorry for going AWOL yesterday. Thanks for covering for us. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I just wanted to apologise again for what happened with Tony. God. Apologise. Don't really do it justice, does it? Mrs Connor, me and Roy, we're getting through it. And the one thing about being the two of us is, well, let's just say we've had our fair share of knocks over the years and we always bounce back. I think you might be one of the most remarkable women I've ever met. I could take that a few ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as for Mr Gordon, well, there's really no need to apologise. I mean, none of us knew what he were really like, did we? Mm. Uh, and there he is, Matt, hmm? sitting in the house I pay for, playing happy families with my kids. Now, how does she expect me to react? How? Well, be fair, mate. How many birds have you had since you and Sunita split up? You even had a mother and daughter combo. I'm surprised you didn't swap your bedroom door for the turnstile. Well, I didn't have young kids around. Apart from Amber. She's a teenager. Oh, yeah, and they just love seeing the parents cracking onto anything that moves, don't they? Look, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, I could go for full custody myself. That'll just make things worse. Mm. No court's going to give you the kids. Mm. Sunita's done nothing wrong. You're not even in a stable relationship. So well, that makes a difference? It all makes a difference. Look, if I were you, I'd be trying to build... Bridges with Cine and not try to burn them. Hi. Uh, listen, I know you probably don't want to speak to me after the other day, but uh, are you free for lunch? 
this must be Arthur for Ken and Deirdre. Do you really need to advertise it? I, I sell the news, Emily. I don't make it. And here's more of your handiwork. At least go and ask how he is, or you won't hear the last of this. Oh, there you go. Oh. How are you feeling, Graham? Like a fine racehorse cruelly cut down in the prime of his professional life. Oh, there's no need to be melodramatic. Uh, excuse me. Not only is my thriving window cleaning business now in jeopardy, I won't be able to work at the butchers, neither. Hi. It's our busiest time at year. Can I sign your leg, mate? Uh, which one? The one with the bandage on. Yeah, knock yourself out. Have you got a pen? Uh, yes, I have. Well, I hope you're not blaming me for this turn in events. You were supposed to be holding the ladder. But if he hadn't broken the window in the first place, there was no need for him to be up there at all. For the last time, I never broke your flaming window! <sighs> right, Ashley. If you don't mind, I believe the Cartoon Channel's about to start a Top Cat marathon. Yes, of course, mate, don't worry. We'll look after you. I'll pop an apple pie around later. I'm baking this afternoon anyway. Well, thanks, Mrs B. Much appreciated. Well, I can't stand here blathering. I've got uh, work to get on with. He's been nothing but trouble since he arrived. Well, the quality's definitely there. Oh, ta! Well, I am lucky to have such a great team of machinists. A business is only as good as its staff. And we are exceptionally good. Uh, <laughs> so, shall we get onto business then? Discuss your next order. You're not angry about. Oh, you can't afford to in this climate. <laughs> After you. That was Auntie Kay on the phone, if you're interested. I thought you two didn't speak. No, no, she stopped talking to me after I went to prison, and uh, then again after Tracy went to prison. But we had actually made it up a bit these last few months. Deirdre... And then, of course, the Gazette lands on her hall carpet this morning, and she wants to know why the Barlow's greatest hits are plastered all over the local paper just in time for Christmas. Look, I've said I'm sorry. So, of course, now she's not talking to me again. Bringing shame and disgrace on the family, she said. Judgmental old cow. Oh, well, never mind, Deirdre. Look on the bright side. At least it saved you a Christmas card and a stamp. Oh. Ken, what possessed you? I mean, you were a journalist. You must have realised that this could have happened. But I refuse to be blamed because some gossip-mongering hack decides to twist things to suit their own ends. Own ends? Don't be such a hypocrite. It was you badgering him to do the article because of your obsession with Peter's bar. I'm trying to protect him. He's an alcoholic. Yeah, and so will I be, and all by the end of the flipping week. No, no, I'm sorry, I refuse to be blamed for standing up for my principles. Principles? How do you think Tracy's going to feel to see her case dredged up again? Or when the, when the mothers at Amy's school start giving us sly glances all for your flaming principles? It'll blow over. Oh, will it? I thought the whole dreadful John Lindsay episode had blown over until I read it again in this morning's paper. I couldn't possibly oh, have Oh, save your breath, Ken. I need a cigarette. So, as you can see, we've put your cost price to the bone. You've got my attention. Well, I'm delighted. But have we got your order? <laughs> Who is it? Um, I think it's the police. Sorry to barge in, Mrs Connor. I just need a word. All right. Well, I think we're just about finished up here anyway, aren't we? Well, I'll be in touch. Well, do come in. Actually, could we just pop to the station? All the files are there. It'd just be easier, that's all.
swing guy in my car. All oh, right. Well, I'm sure if there's anything else you need, Haley can help you. Sure. Okay. Shall we? Return a newspaper. I like you to cancel my order forthwith. If I wanted to read such lurid nonsense, I'd buy the tabloids. Good for you, Emily. I think he's right in what they've done. Well, I can't offer you a refund. It's been thumbed. All right, Kirk. Uh, yeah. Only I heard what you lot were saying before about Graham cracking your window. Oh, hey, if you've got any information. Well, yeah, it wasn't him. It were these, er, uh, lads having a kick about. I, I don't know him. Has Graham put you up to this? No, I, I just... I didn't want to see someone else get the blame cos it weren't Graham. Oh, well, thank you, Kirk. I never thought it was, but now we have proof. And it were an accident anyway. I mean, it, it looked like an accident when they did it, these lads that I don't know. And, and one of these lads wouldn't be, er... Uh... Oh, I don't know, er... Uh... A young, ginger-haired lad and the other a tall, gormless, lanky-looking chap. No, it, it weren't me and Chess. It were these lads, not Graham. That's all I came to say. <gasps> of course it was him and Chess, and he's got it written all over his face. I think the more important fact is that it wasn't Graham, don't you? <laughs> I'm glad you can make it. I nearly didn't, after the other day. So, you wanted to apologise? <sighs> How long had you been planning this trip to Los Angeles? Well, I hadn't. I mean, me and Tony had this almighty row. My marriage was finished. It had been ever since he found out about me and Liam. I couldn't take it anymore, so I just left. And you had no idea that your husband had anything to do with Liam's murder? Of course not. I was... I was in love with Liam. I thought Tony'd have anything to do with his death. I'm sorry, this is... I understand that this must be difficult. And you had no contact with your husband during your time in L.A.? Oh, how many times now? OK. If you'd just excuse me a sec. They've got him coming across like some fussy old pedant. Whereas you come off with barely a scratch. Single father trying to bring up your son. Courageous battle against the booze. He must be fuming it's backfired on him like this. Still... That's not funny, is it, dragging all this stuff up about you and our Tracy? Oh, believe me, I'm not laughing. And where did he get that picture from? I don't know. Your father must have given it to him. Because it must be from Yonks back, judging by the hair and the Dave Lee Travis T-shirt. I can't believe you hadn't seen it. I feel awful bringing it round. Well, somebody would have let me know about it, and I'm glad it was you. Hey, I don't blame you for any of this. You know that, don't you? I know. I just missed this one, that's all. You can come and see me any time you like. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. What do you think of my Christmas card for Liam? Oh, brilliant. And horses are difficult to draw. It's not a horse, it's a reindeer. Oh, God, yeah, of course it is. It's got antlers, yeah. And oh, why don't you give it a nice shiny red nose? Good idea. Yeah.
You want me to move in? <laughs> oh, why not? Uh, more to the point, why? Because, call me suspicious, <laughs> but on Friday you were fuming about Matt's engagement to Sunita, and then along comes Monday, and suddenly <laughs> this. Well, you know, maybe it just gave me a little nudge, you know? Sunita's moved on. Maybe I should too. So this is about Sunita? No, God, no! No, this is about me. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> this is coming out all wrong. Well, let me see if I can recap for you, yeah? You see Sunita about to marry Matt. You think, fine, if she can do it, so can I. What about this golf teacher I've known for five minutes? Hey, maybe she'd even make a good stepmom to the kids, because Lord knows I could do with a bit of that. No, of course not. So the kids have got nothing to do with it? No. And of course, uh, if you got on with them, and I know you would, and it'd be brilliant. And it'd be great for the kids to, 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 to see their old dad, you know, in a, in a serious relationship, right, finally. And yes, I'd like to see a lot more of them, to be honest. And if me and you, we were actually, you know, like just living together, then that would be just the, it'd be the best. It'd be just like that. Uh, where are you going, babe? I'm just going to pop outside and whack myself over the head repeatedly with a seven iron. This has just got to be the most self-serving, blinkered, unflattering, downright weird proposition I think I've ever heard. Maybe you can't blame me for wanting the best for my kids. Dev, love, get professional help. And I don't mean golf. Do you want... Well, <coughs> Kirk says it, it, it wasn't Graham who cracked Emily's window. I, I have a strong suspicion it was him and Chesney. Oh, so I'm not a liar now, then? Uh, no, no. I apologise. Well, it do not help me much, then, does it? Hmm? I'm going to need deep in turkey and chipolatas. So, God help me. I might have to ask Kirk to step in. Do you hear that? So I could lose my butching job altogether. Are you happy now? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, and what good does that do me? It was you that had me up that ladder and you that brought me crashing back down again. What, and you think some mumbled apology is just going to sort everything out? But what else do you want from me? Surprise me. I wondered whether you'd finished your shift and gone home. Can you verify again that you had no contact with your husband before your recent return to Weatherfield? No. Look, I, I guess there might have been one or two phone calls, maybe. We still owned a business together. So we're going from no contact to some contact? Look, I don't know. Whatever Tony's saying... Do you remember about a week ago I asked if you knew a friend of your husband's? Jimmy Dockerson. I'll take that as a yes. Only we've just taken him into custody. And he certainly knows an awful lot about you. Is there any part of your earlier statement you'd like to change? This is starting to sound like an interrogation now. Should I phone my solicitor? Do you think you need one? 
Did you know Jimmy was the man your husband paid to kill Liam? It's not that simple. Try me. If you don't tell us, be very sure Tony or Jimmy will. Mrs. Connor, did you know Jimmy was the man? All right! Tony told me. That night we fought. And you just left. Got on a flight to LA. Your husband confesses to murdering the man you say you love. I did love him! More than anything. Liam was the love of my life. Now what we got? <laughs> I'll get you some water. And before you start, I've been across the road, I've had a word with Graham, I've apologised. For calling him a liar, or for breaking his leg. He hasn't broken his leg. What's the matter with young people these days? Why do you have to make a meal of everything? I'll tell you something, Shower Norris. Young people aren't the ones antagonising loyal customers like Deidre. Young people aren't the ones who go around accusing people willy-nilly of stuff they haven't done. Oh, I haven't got time for this. I, I, I need to get online, choose a smart bow tie for the Weatherfield Council do on Friday. Oh, yeah, sure. God forbid a young lad's livelihood should get in the way of you and your social life. No, Graham is one of the kindest, soundest lads I've ever met. And because of you, he's facing Christmas with no work and no money. But, but, but I, I, I'd help him if I could. He offers to do his window cleaning round. What? You're pretty handy with a squeegee. You don't want to lose his customers, do you? Oh, no, no, of course I don't. Plus, it's a good way to have a nose into folks' bedroom windows. Oh. Brew. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, please. So there we are. Lunch. Great table, gorgeous food, and me saying how maybe it's time to move this relationship on to the next level, and so... Oh, please don't tell me this is going where I think he's going. So I ask her. Move in. Ah, oh, and there it is. You've only known her a couple of weeks. Mm. You've been banging on about Sunir and this new bloke of hers, and then out the blue, it's all, let's live together. She was being spontaneous, the 89 people is. 32p in fresh cars, Jalice. 250. What do I suggest? You go to fresh cars. Uh, hello, leg, arm, crutches. What do they spell out here? Do you want this pack of lime jelly or not? Uh, Graham, I I'm wouldn't... making myself a spur of the moment trifle to cheer myself up. As I'm currently indisposed by the way of being physically disabled. However, I do not see why I should be whipped off to the tune of 89 of you English pennies just because I'm not of able limb. Capiche, chief? Look. Graham, I'll get the lime jelly for yeah, you. Yeah, while you offer is a kind one, I cannot stand by and... Get out. What? GET OUT! What about my spur of the moment trifle? Get out. It's the only thing I've been looking forward out. to out. since I injured my arm. Out! Oh, this is discrimination! GET OUT! I'm writing to Anne Robinson! Um, what's happening? Uh, is that a very trying date? Moll, are you going to be all right now on your own? Uh, yeah. Come on. Deb, everything's going to be OK. Listen. Mom, could you pop a packet of lime jelly right at Graham next door if you get the chance? Thanks. So, the night you left, Tony confessed to having Liam killed? I didn't know he was telling the truth, did I? How could I? I mean, you lot had investigated him over and over and found nothing. Plus, we were in the middle of the most horrible fight. For all I knew, he was just making it up. Just to hurt me, because I was leaving him. You should have told us. And you would have listened, would you? Just like you listened to Maria. So you admit to concealing a crime? How could I be sure any crime had been committed? I was terrified!
died. Either my husband was a killer or he was crazy enough to claim to be. <laughs> and you lot weren't going to do anything about it. I had to get out there. Do you think there's anything else you ought to tell us, Mrs. Connor? And think carefully. No. I was a coward. I ran away. Can I go now? For the moment. You do realise you'll have to repeat all this in court. Kitchen appliances for Christmas presents are liable to end up embedded in your skull. I speak from experience. I'm useless at this. I just want to get us something special. It's our first Christmas married. Well, listen, mate, I overheard her in the shop the other day talking about this perfume she liked. Can you remember the name? Uh, Lagoon, I think. I can only remember that because I was thinking of buying it Sally for the birthday. Well, how come you never? Too pricey. Well, that's me stuff, then. Oh, no, it's not. It's your birthday tomorrow, and I was thinking of a Christmas bonus, so... How does 100 quid sound for both? Who needs Santa, eh? Were you as a mate? <laughs> oh, cheers, Kev. Hey, I appreciate it. it. People start talking. <laughs> You're a legend. Lagoon, did you say? Thank you. What, no snidey comments from the peanut gallery? No, of course not. I only thought Tony was an arrogant bully. No one could have imagined what it was really like. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sorry. It's all just horrible mess, isn't it? Oh, Mrs. Connor, is everything OK? Yes, yes, it's fine. Uh, thanks all very much for your concern. Look, good work today. Ricks and were really impressed, so why don't you all take an early dart when they're finished anyway? Grab your bags, girls, before she changes her mind. Are you sure everything's OK? Yeah, of course. Not really the way I wanted the meeting with Rickson to end up, though. Copper hauling me out of here. He was fine. He was quite sympathetic, actually. He wondered if you were free for lunch during the week. <laughs> Doesn't take him long, does it? Hear about your husband being banged up for murder and they're queuing up. I'm, I'm sure it's just about the reorder. Yeah. Sorry, hell of a day. I'll call him. Would you mind closing the door on the way out? I've just got a few things to catch up on. Of course. And, um, Mrs. Connor, we're all behind you. When I don't understand women, <sighs> you should put that on a t shirt. Mm. I mean, you can never do anything right, can you? I mean, you can't live with them and, um. And another one in there, please, Michelle. You all ever. Because let's face it, all I do is I just push away the people I love. Yeah, you got, you got Sunita, Tara, mm. Amber. Amber. I'll cut the mid. Look, it's, it's not too late with Sunita. Yeah. Just tell her you're sorry for the way you behaved and you mm. want to keep seeing the kids the way you always have. <laughs> it's time to eat humble pie. <laughs> She'll even speak to me. They don't keep you down cop shop for the best part of four hours just to have a cosy chat. I'm telling you, Kyla knows more than she's letting on. Well, what could she say? I mean, she's been out of the country for the best part of a year. Oh, so she says. You can bet if there's out too, no. Haley will have a good idea. Thick as these, aren't they, them two, since Kyle got a bite? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, don't stop on my account. You seem to have some really interesting theories about my brother's murder. We were just chatting, that's all. So what's this about Carla going down the police station? 
This Avi, yeah. No. They probably just wanted her to help them with their inquiries. <laughs> you know what, they were high coppers. <laughs> Not really. So, I'll bow to your greater experience, Janice. What exactly are they like, coppers? Can I have a pine, love, please? And two, 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 uh, two uh, tonic, tonic, yeah, tonic. So, would you slap me round the head if I said that it's tomorrow's chip paper? I know that. It's not that the stuff is in there. People round here know it all anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, I spread most of it. <sighs> it's Ken being blinkered enough to do the interview in the first place. Not a thought for me or Tracy or Simon or anyone else. But in Ken's favour, he was thinking of Peter. Was he? Or was he just happy to have another cause, another battle on his hands so he could take the moral high ground and sneer down on us all? That's a little harsh. Well, I feel harsh. Look at the Christmas I've got coming. My daughter's in jail, Simon and Peter are around at George's. You got Ken. Oh, I think I need another drink. Steve, is it all right if I get off a bit earlier? I just want to check that Carla's all right. Sounds like she's had a hell of a day. Mm, yeah. She's not the only one. Come back for a drink. Oh, I, I'll um, just take Eccles for a walk again. Oh, what a surprise. Things go wrong at home and Ken Barlow heads for the nearest exit. Hey, come on, you two. Tis the season to be jolly and all that. Yes, well, I haven't got a lot to feel jolly about since I read this morning's paper. Oh, how many times do I have to go through that again? Again? It only happened today. Right! That's enough. Two have had a bust up. It'll blow over. Have you any idea how lucky you are to have each other? To have your mother living here, Deirdre? Peter and Simon? And what have I got to look forward to this Christmas? A boyfriend who dresses like a cowboy. A parrot that hates me. And time and a half in the cab office. Not exactly. It's a wonderful life, is it? I always thought I'd have a lovely marriage like yours. Oh, Eileen, come on. You've got Jason. Who I hardly ever see. And Todd. Who I never see. Go. Oh, I'll be fine. I just need to go. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I've just had a, a little bit uh, too much to drink. Do you know, I've always been so envious of you two. <sighs> Damn, I'm good. <laughs> Only, um, <clears throat> I heard you had to go down to the police station earlier. Yeah, I did. Hey, do you want a glass of red? Love one, yeah. It was just routine, though, you know. About what? Well, 
dates and times of when I went off to L.A. State my marriage to Tony. Me and Liam. Haven't they been through all this, were you? God, yes. Can't be easy. No, it's not. So how about we talk about something else, eh? How's that gorgeous son of yours? Is he still in that band? There will be on Christmas morning all by himself and he's lonely bed sick. No money. No presents. Just sticking a fork in the placky on top of a microwave meal. All right, all right. I'll go over if it'll stop you going on. Oh. <coughs> no time like the present. Well, no, no. I, I, Emily left me tea on the table. Bar humbug. <laughs> <laughs> So what have you brought him for his birthday tomorrow, Mark? Set of golf clubs, trip round the men. Ah, oh, well, it's a surprise. Well, I bet it won't be as cool as the Christmas present I've got you. <laughs> Will you just stop going on about it? Just I know you're going to love it, that's all. Hey, why don't you try and guess? Because there's a great big clue written on the back of your hand, you plank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, if you remember some of the Christmas presents we've bought each other over the years. You know, the ones that stick in your mind aren't the dead thoughtful ones. It's the really, really rubbishy ones. <laughs> no, I mean it. I mean, you forget the jewellery and the perfume. It's the collected works of Jackie Collins or the pair of canvas camping chairs with a the free thermos. You said you wanted them. Yeah, not for Christmas. You know, it's never been Mr Darcy, but he does look cute in a damn T-shirt. <laughs> right, shall I get another round in? Do you know, I think we should go mad this Christmas. Push the boat out. Strict budget, you said. Yeah, I know, but I want to have a lovely Christmas. One to remember. Nice wine, good food, presents that we actually want, and no scrimping and saving for once. Same again? Yeah, great. Cheers. You want to take over my window cleaning, Ralph? <laughs> I accept that I was wrong and I'd like to make reparations. How many of them painkillers did I take? Well, if you don't want to take me up on my heartfelt gesture, then... No, 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 no. Heartfelt gesture accepted. Obviously, you, you know about the code of silence in this game. The code of silence? Yeah, well, you know, you see a lot of things through some of them bedroom windows. Not all of it for public consumption if you get my drift. So, what happens up a ladder, stays up a ladder. You get me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Shall we say about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning? Oh, I like your enthusiasm. All right, bye, Maria. Bye. That was Maria. They've, um, they've got the bloke that Tony paid to drive the car. I won't throw away the key. Yeah. Is that why they had Carla only done today, do you reckon? She never mentioned it. Listen, I'll see you at home, yeah? Listen, sorry, is there any chance I can have a quick word? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> Thanks. What we need is calm heads all round. We need to build bridges. I know. I know. Peter and I can both be as stubborn as each other. Oh, come on. Peter! Simon! Look, he's, uh, he's tired, he's hungry, and I need to get him home. I'm all right. Uh, Peter. So? How'd your newfound celebrity? Because we were the talk of the parents at the football practice. Yeah, well, I regret that now. Of course you do. You looked an idiot. Look, I'm sure there were things that were said on both sides that are regretted now. Deirdre, I'm just trying to make a living. Look, whatever's going on between us, I don't want it to affect our relationship with Simon. Surely you can agree to that. Why doesn't he come back for his tea at our house? We can have him back within the hour. Can I, Dad? 
Sorry. Like I said, he's tired. I'm not that tired. Please, don't be like this. Hey, you started this. Good boy, go on. Night. Well, I've tried. Well, try harder. So you reckon it's just a coincidence that they haul Carla back to the police station on the same day that they pick up this Jimmy fella? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. I mean, they'll be following all sorts of leads, won't they? Hmm. Well, she was right on edge when I saw her. And she never said anything to me about them picking up this Jimmy. Maria said they nabbed him first thing this morning. They must have told her that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure what you're getting at here. Well... I'm starting to wonder whether Carla knew a lot more about Liam's murder than she's letting on. No. No, no. If she thought that Tony were in any way involved, there's no way she would have left Maria and the baby in danger like that. Never mind the rest of us. No. No, she wouldn't. Wouldn't she? Open your mouth. Have you two got nothing better to do? Hey, you know, some lyrics always work. Tell him it's the wind beneath your wings, it's my mum's hand from that. Yeah, well, <laughs> keep it up and I'll be writing her a condolence card. Have a good one. Oh, man, it's so deep. Right, I might be home a bit late. I've got a dentist appointment. <coughs> What's going on? My dad's having problems expressing his feelings to Tyrone. <laughs> What, you've got him a birthday card? That isn't like you. Yeah, and a birthday present, look. Imagine <sighs> it. What happened to tightening our belts? The lad's worked his socks off this year. Yeah, and he's already had a hefty annual bonus. Eighteen ninety-nine for a bottle of whiskey. It was single malt. Well, I said we should push the boat out. I meant on us. I only hope he was generous with me when it comes to Christmas. What's got into her? I don't know. Maybe she's jealous. Please don't go off on one. As if I would. I'm not joking. If we don't know the score, no one does. Except Tony. All right, all right. We'll play it your way. Oh, straight to messages now. There's a surprise. Mum, chill. Hi, Carla. It's me. Uh, be great to catch up today. Um, ring me as soon as you pick this up. Bye. Happy. I'm barely, mate. Some of us do a full day. Told you not to take out. You all right, Michelle? I've been better. Family issues you don't want to know. Sure. Enough said. Bud, you've got, like, ten seconds to catch the bus. Sorry. I'll leave it. You guys are going to work this out. It's a done deal. Sorry, Emily, I didn't set the alarm. Is everything all right? Yeah, why well, shouldn't it be? Um, excuse me, have you got a minute? What is it, Sally? Um, well, I, I was just hoping to leave early. I wouldn't ask, it's just I've gone to sort it out with Hayley. Um, yeah, yeah, no problem, just making all the hours. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is actually. Um, I was just wondering if the police had any more news on Mr. Gordon's accomplice. Accomplice? What are you about? Sorry, haven't you heard? Mrs. Connor, they've arrested the man who drove the car. Blimey, you got a whole rainforest there. <sighs> yeah, for my customers. I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. <laughs> Do I detect a theme? Mm, gossip, the new gospel of the great unwashed. 
Oh, yeah, like you never share information, Norris. Oh, oh while, while I'm reminded, is there any chance of a haircut this afternoon? No, only I want to look my most dapper for the Weatherfield Council dinner. Oh, you're going to have one hell of a hot date there, Art. Well, I do scrub up rather nicely. Oh, Norris, I would hate you to go to any bar. Oh, nonsense, it's the least I can do. Well, if you insist, I can fit you in now. Oh, perfect. Oh, 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 oh. hold your horses there, Tiger. Huh? I think you have a prior engagement. I'll trust you to remember that. He's offered to help Graham with his window cleaning round. Oh, well, that's very charitable mm. of you, Norris. Isn't it? Well, one does what one can. I just hope it won't turn into a public spectacle. I mean, I do have a reputation to maintain. Oh, for the last time, folk have got better things to do than stand around waiting for you to fall for ladder. True. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry I'm late, but these breaches are the work of Satan. <sighs> OK. On second thoughts, I think we may be selling tickets. Hmm. Morning. Where are you? Up? Well, uh, that's Anita. She wants to see me. We need to uh, uh, talk, apparently. Yeah. Sounds ominous. Yeah, exactly. Any last uh, uh, words of advice? Well, the dress code ain't working. You know, she needs to see a pathetic shell of a man. Not Mr. Lover Man. And lose the foliage. Hello. Hiya. Oh, did Tyrone like your little card? Oh, ah, you're all hilarious. Hey, you want to keep an eye on that Shan? Right low why she is. Yeah, well, no offence. She's the least of my worries right now. Yeah, of course. I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. I'm I'm sorry, Kev. I'm just I'm just a bit phased. Um They've caught the animal who was driving the car that killed Liam. They arrested him yesterday. Who was it? Some guy called Jimmy Dockerson. Jimmy Dockerson? You're joking, aren't you? That's the same tow rag who's trying to close my business down. What are you on about? A while ago, when Tony wanted to buy my garage, I blanked him. That's when they sent your man Jimmy round to put the squeeze on. And this happened before Liam died? <sighs> Long before. Right. Uh... Well, I, I better let the police know. Is it OK for giving me details? Yeah, of course it is. But Carla's probably the best person to ask. Hey? Are you, are you saying she knows him? Well, I don't know, but she was definitely interested when she came round to give us the fourth degree about him before she left. I'm, I'm going to be a laughing stock as it is. Claire sets the rehearsal times. What can I say? I'm a slave to the craft. Okie dokie. Equipment check. Bucket check. Sponge. Don't no, give it to you. Remember, hand over hand, bend at the knees. Come on, don't. Not in this mood. Just stay out of it, Ryan. So we're going to have to completely reorganise the schedule. As from tomorrow, the new range takes priority. OK. I think we need to have a little chat about Jimmy Dockerson. <sighs> Guys, would you mind? I was literally about to ring you. Oh, save it. OK, what's this about? Well, I just bumped into Kevin Webster. You'll never guess who he knows. Jimmy Dockerson. Jimmy Dockerson. Do you know, it rings a bell. There's something very wrong and yet very exciting about this whole situation. No. I didn't know he'd been arrested. And yes, I did go and see him. What Tony was doing concerned the factory. And you never saw him again? We may have met him passing a couple of times. <laughs> Look, Michelle, I don't know what I'm supposed to have done, but I'm in the dark here as much as you are. See, why don't I believe you? You know what? Believe what you want. I'm already late for a meeting. When I'm finished, I promise I'll ring you. Then we can find somewhere more appropriate to speak, OK? I'll be counting the seconds. She didn't know anything, right? Ryan, I know you care about Carla. She wasn't involved in Uncle Liam's death, not in a million years, and no one is telling me different. Yeah? Well, I hope you're right. 
I really do love. But if you're not, God help her. Kids? Matt's taking them to the shops. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks for seeing me. Sit down. Yeah. This isn't a social call. Yeah, no, I know. I mean it. The way you acted the other night, it was disgusting. I was out of order. I admit it. I felt threatened. I'm not surprised. Matt's ten times the man you are. <laughs> okay, you know what? Maybe coming round here wasn't such a good idea after all. If you leave now, don't even think about coming back. We're sorting this mess out today. Yeah, I just thought you should see the factory for yourself, really. Oh, would you excuse me for just one moment? Mm, good time. I'm losing patience. Yeah, well, as you can see, I'm otherwise engaged. <laughs> When I get a free moment, I'll call you. I promise. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lisa. My neurotic farmer sister-in-law. Now, where were we? I'm tired of giving you second chances. <laughs> and I'm tired of asking for them. OK. You actually made me feel ashamed that you're their father. They still need me, honey. Why? Yeah, because I'm going to be a, a great dad, that's why. <laughs> no, please let me finish. Uh, please, I mean, you're ashamed because I'm their father and I'm ashamed because I'm not. I'm well, not really. I mean, I've never been there when it counted. Not even for Amber, and I just... I just want to get it right for once. Don't blow it. I won't. Death. No, I won't. Forget second chances. This is my last chance. Hey, guys. Hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> is everything all right? Oh, we're getting there. Right. Uh, I'll go make a brew. Give a shout if you need it. Who fixed my spaceship? <laughs> Daddy did. Don't let it go to your head. Such a lovely place. There you go, pal. Oh. Hey, it's not sounding too bad as it goes, this. Must be getting old. <laughs> Call maturing. Hey, and less of the old. This is my era. Need I say more? <laughs> Oh, can't get enough for the birthday boy, oh, eh? Hey, right. you're all mucky. Yeah, I've got your favourite. Oh, that is what I am talking about. Oh, yes. Mmm. Mmm. What, Mum? Uh, I'll pass, thanks. More for me. Need so much to cheer me up. Oh, you're not still going on about me present, are you? She'd give us gym jams. <laughs> I can't even wear them. Too much information. Yeah, just a touch. Hey, Kev got us a bottle of 12-year-old malt. How classy is that? Oh, wow. Right. Um, I'm going to get back to work anyway. Well, hang on. Well, what's the plans for later? Well, Dev's got me doing the evening shift. I couldn't swap it. Sorry. Well, come on. We can do something at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. See you later, love. Don't let him poke out on those. She loves me, really. <laughs> Don't go. Can we build a dinosaur next time? Dude, we can build whatever you want next time. Tea's ready. 
Say goodbye and go and wash your hands, like, properly. Don't go, stay a bit longer. Go, honey, go. Daddy will see you soon. Well, that answers my first question. Look, whatever problems I've had, I'm passing that. That wasn't me. Dad, I'm not the person you need to convince. I'm not hearing any scrubbing! <sighs> Sorry. Well, we do this my way or not at all. You step out of line just one time. I know. I know. So, um, when can I see them again? When I think they're ready. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Well, don't make me regret it. Right, I'm going to wear this one tonight. Oh, But, Mum, can you believe it? Two for the price of one? And you can afford it how? Mm, that's why they invented plastic. <laughs> John, this one might fit me. Oh, yeah, you Ooh. dreams, Mum. Hey, cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. All right. Had a good day? Well, same as usual. Good. Trust Tyrone liked his prezi. Yeah, it's made up with it. Right, so you won't mind if you have tomorrow off? Why? What's the plan? How do I frame this? You know how you're always saying that you hate Christmas shopping? Oh, no way. You're not dragging me around town all day. No. I'm flying you to Paris for a weekend. Norris basically implied that I were past it. Do you know, the man's got no shame. You should drape yourself all over him just to teach him a lesson. Oh, what, and scare off a genuine prospect? No, thank you. Oh, have you got your eye on somebody, then? Maybe. Well, his name's Wilf, recently widowed, and he's got his own wholesale business. Sounds promising. <laughs> Maybe. I'll have to get past his toupee first. Oh, dear, is it bad? Honestly, it's got a life of its own, dear, Jeff. <laughs> I don't understand you sometimes. So only this morning you had a pop at me over spending 20 quid on Tyrone. Yeah, well, maybe your newfound generosity's rubbed off. <sighs> Kevin, we deserve this. I deserve this. Meaning you and me don't. To hell with being careful just this once. Let's just throw caution to the wind. Maybe next year. Kevin. The answer's no. End of. Now forget about it. Oh, seconds out, round two. Time's up. <sighs> Look, I appreciate what you're going through, but you can't keep barging in like this. Yeah, try stopping me. Michelle, I nearly lost a contract because of you earlier. Oh, it's always business with you, isn't it? But I never really saw it till today. So, I guess things must be pretty difficult round here at the moment. Well, let me think. You know, we're in the middle of a recession, the profits are down, my business partner's a self-confessed murderer. So, yeah, things could be easier. Hmm. So why not quit them? You did it before. That were different. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you wanted a, uh, a fresh start. It was more complicated than that and you know it. Really? Really? What? More complicated than when our Paul died? Or the so-called love of your life being murdered? Funny that, isn't it? It's funny. How the words fresh start never really entered your career mind then, but a little matrimonial disharmony. I don't have to listen to this. Why the police question you, Carla? Hey, you think you're involved, don't you? You think that's why you went to the States? Let go of me! What, so you couldn't run away again? Whatever you think, I loved Liam with all of my heart. Then tell me the truth. He died because of you. One way or another, you're to blame. Being scared is not a crime. Oh, my. I didn't have a choice, Michelle. You have to believe me. Bitch! Oh! 
to talk about love. I'm sorry. It wasn't my fault. You protected the monster. Outside the court, you like point blank to my face. I even apologized. Get your hands off me. This isn't the way. Come on, let's go back in place. Oh, yeah, go on. Hide. That's what you're good at. And Tony told me. I panicked. I didn't know what he was going to do. So why not go to the police there and then? Because I couldn't think. Nothing made sense. I just needed to get as far away as possible. I was grieving. Don't you dare. You left it to walk ready. I thought he'd taken himself in. Well, better late than never. Shame about Maria, though. I came home as soon as I found out. Go to hell. Should we go back in the factory? No. No, we need to have this out once and for all. Let her go. She's not worth it. We stood together and we shed the same tears, Carl. We shed the same tears. And then you just beat on his grave. Well, you know what, honey? You know what really happened. And maybe it was as you say. But that doesn't change the fact. The first face my nephew saw was his father's murderer. That's what you've got to live with. I was scared. I was scared. Ailey, I know you're upset about Roy. And I'll, I promise, I'll make it up to you. But I need to know I can count on your support. Please, Ailey. I need a friend. In that case, I suggest you go and visit your husband. OMG. It was such an awesome night last night. It was just like so amazing. Cool, yeah. Don't say cool, yo. It's just not cool and stuff. And stuff. I totally had one of the best nights of my life. I met this guy. Oh, I could have known there was a bloke involved. Was he like totally buff? Well, no. But he would have been when he was younger. In like 1843. <laughs> Why, how old was her? Um, dunno. Late 40s, early 50s. You dirty man. His name's Alfie, and I met him in rumours. And he reckoned, because I'm like so good looking and everything. Like, really good looking. Like the perfect 10. Mum, have you heard this? Sorry? And with my impressive personality, that I would be perfect to work for him as a promotions girl. What's a promotions girl? Well, I'm having a trial tonight. And basically, I've got to go round to all the cool bars in town and promote this new brand of vodka. Great. I can't believe some of the places he wants me to go to. <laughs> I can imagine. They're like private members clubs. So there's going to be wall-to-wall, -wall, like, footballers. <laughs> and, like, people off the telly. And glamour models. And ex-Big Brother contestants. I can't wait. 
I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. Mum, I can't believe you're not kicking off. And the best part about it is they're going to pay me for it. What do you have to wear? Well, I thought you weren't interested. Girls, will you stop screeching? You're giving me a migraine. From the travel agent yet? Cancel Paris? You can't cancel a city, Kevin. Our trip. I'm putting my face on. What? Hayley. What? I'd say it's a tad early to go around slamming doors, wouldn't you? Oh, well, maybe when you think it's a more appropriate time, you could tip me the wink and I'll slam every door on the street. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't know if I can wait for Carly anymore. I'm, I'm in a quandary. Oh. Oh. Is that all you can say on the matter? Oh. Well... Carla knew Roy. Carla knew that Tony had Liam killed, but she didn't report it. She kept that zipped. I think that's unforgivable. I wonder how Maria's feeling through all this. Does she know? I don't know Maria. I don't know how I'm feeling. I can see how you're feeling. But you don't do anything about it. Cuddle me, tell me to shut up, reason with me. No! I'm amazed you're being so stoic about it. Everything you've been through, all the trauma you've had. None of it would have happened if she'd have opened her mouth. And, 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 and does this necessitate you leaving your job? I don't know. It's just rather trying working for someone you've lost all respect for, that's all. Right, OK. Well, I upset my mum, you know. Shut up, Soph. Thanks, girl. Bye. She's right. Yes, all right. Such a killjoy. Well, I must be like God. He don't like folk enjoying themselves. Oh, grow up! <laughs> I can't believe you just said that, Dad. Snap. Mum, were you telling me you're slagging God off? Don't slag God off, Kevin. Just spoken to Glenn at the travel agent. Oh, first name terms now, is it? And it's fine if we want to cancel now. Who at last summit goes in our favour. But we will lose our deposit. Which is how much? 250 pounds. Well, it's not going to be 250 rubles, is it? Oh, you can't waste all that money, Dad. No, not on the run up to Christmas anyway. <sighs> I don't intend to throw 250 biggins down the drain, do I? That's for sure. Yeah, but if we go, we're going to spend another 250. The whole thing's going to be 500. Maybe it is a false economy. Stuff it. What, we're going? Yeah, I'm mental, yeah, but you've twisted me arm. Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> All right, well, we'd better get a move on. We've got to start packing. Why? What time's the flight? It's 10 o'clock tonight. I don't even know what time we've got to check in. Well, what time will you land if you fly at 10 o'clock? We're an hour ahead, you know. Well, we don't get to the hotel till something like, well, 1 o'clock in the morning, but oh, he's dead romantic. Oh, love of my life. For you. <laughs> Paris, it makes your dad all amorous. Oh, better pack the little black cabin with the red ribbons. Too much information. Mm, way too much. Well, I've got someone coming to view the house in a bit, so, uh, what I'd start this new bread maker off. Why? A psychology, Mother. I want someone to walk in here and think this is the life. Spotless house, smell of fresh coffee and freshly baked bread. All oh, right, fresh is the word du jour, is it? Why, were you thinking of getting fresh with me, Audrey? Oh. Do you know, I was convinced the guy that looked round a few weeks ago was going to make us an offer, but he's not, so this time we're pulling out all the stops. I didn't know you got a bread maker. It's an investment. That helps sell the house. Oh, that's all it takes, is it? The smell of white slice. Unsliced wholemeal bloomer, actually. What did you come for, Mother? Just to be sniffy? No, Angela. I just want some fashion advice. I'm going to this do at the town hall later and I'm a clue what to wear. Morning, everyone. Sean? So, that's it. A little house. Oh. Not a little, actually, with three bedrooms upstairs and a big garage. 
Would you like a slice of bread? Or some fresh coffee, maybe. I think there's some on. Joe loves reading. <laughs> I always find him sat on the sofa, head in his book. <laughs> well, it's uh, so peaceful round here. I won't have either, thank you. Are you sure? I like the house. Seriously. But it's way overpriced. I mean, you're actually taking it. Uh, I think you'll find 120 is pretty reasonable value, actually, all said and done. And I'll throw in the bread maker for cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you 105. Uh, no. We won't be lowering our price, thank you. This house. It ain't all that. And the bread maker's still got the price tag on it. <sighs> yeah. So, basically, what you're saying is that Carla hasn't committed a crime. Oh, will you stop banging on about flaming terrorism? I don't give jack about terrorism right now, OK? All I care about is that my brother was killed. My sister-in-law knew who did it and didn't report it to you lot. But no, that's fine as far as the law stands. Well, you know what? The law's an ass, mate. You're joking. Idiot. That can't be right. This just doesn't make any sense. Oh, apparently, they don't care that she hid a murderer. But if it was a terrorist she was covering up for, then she'd be banged up straight away. Whoa! Mate! Oh, I know how he feels, Ben. Cos, you know what, right now, I want to go round there and smash her face in. Do you know, if she'd have just told the police that Tony was behind Liam dying, do you really think that Maria would have fallen for him? She would have let him into her life? He's sick, you know, the more I think about it. How could she do it, Mum? Roy getting attacked, me mum and dad falling out with Maria. She could have stopped all that, but oh no, as per, she thinks of no one but herself. Well, she might have had her reasons. Yeah, oh, I'm sure she did, Ben, yeah. I'm sure she did, and they better be good ones. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's let him get away with murder. Need to tell you. Yep. And the summer I need to tell you. I've got the afternoon off. And there's a motel bed with our name on it. I want you, Kevin. What do you want to say? Oh, it's not important. Tedious after a while, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I could never be a model. No, me neither. Not that I haven't been asked. Uh, uh, when will these be in the magazine? Uh, I don't know. I just take the pictures. Friendly, isn't mm. it? A couple of weeks. Mm. I don't know. Right. Have you got a lav I can use? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, 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 Frida, would you show this uh, young man to the little boys' room? <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, Frieda and I were having our portraits taken for a magazine of some importance. <laughs> and I said you were too old for readers' wives, Norris. We won a competition. We came up with a slogan for a new cutting-edge brand of toilet cleaner. Oh, how lovely. Mm. Oh, I'm glad I've caught you, cos read later. Now, I'm not going to be overdressed in a tux, am I? The invite said black tie. Yes, yeah, right. Now, and will you be, will you be wearing long? Norris, I have been to more of these do's than you've had hot dinners, so I'm sure I'll be suitably and appropriately attired. Oh, right, excellent. Well, see you anon. Now, don't let me down. <laughs> hey, Sal, so. Oh, hi, love. Where are you going? Just going to get a balm cake and a walnut whip. Look, you're not told anyone about Paris, have you? 
Well, no, because I'm going to have to throw a sickie on Monday because we don't get back till gone 11. To keep it on the down low. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Uh, I think it's best if we don't tell Tyrone as well. Because I don't want him and Molly thinking we've got money to burn. Well, yeah, because he's going to want a pay rise and he can stuff that. Brilliant. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> what? It's not having an affair. Think anybody saw us? Well, we can get up to some naughty business in the back office. <laughs> that one is a bomb cake going begging. Anyway, there's plenty of time for that in Paris. See you tonight. See you later. Let's have a cry. Where you been? Training. To my makeup done. A bit. <laughs> I just um I just had to tell Maria, you know, that Carl and you all along. Oh, I felt like such a bitch. I didn't enjoy it, Ben, I swear to God. I oh, know. She was so upset, you know. I can imagine. It's horrible. I just want Ali in back here. Not right, Paul. Just to give me a hug and tell me it's gonna be all right. Hey, come here. <laughs> No need to be sorry. I think you're amazing. Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet, Ben. Do you know what? If they could bottle you, they'd make a fortune. Well, I do. Ben! Can I see you this weekend? <sighs> what? Well, I just know there's going to be an excuse. There's always an excuse that you're doing something amazing or mundane with your family. Just Christmas shopping for the girls. Oh, well, I'll come. With Sally. She gets all the good gigs. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not funny. She does. Oh! Such courage. I'm having a date with Norris. Take a while, I guess. You joking? Alas, no. It's a long story. But you stop fussing, oh, woman. No. Breath of fresh air, I suppose. <laughs> oh, don't you look dapper, Norris. <laughs> Who are you calling a supper? <laughs> no, I... No, 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 no. I'm uh, accompanying a certain former Lady Mayoress to an early evening dinner and dance. Isn't that right, Audrey? Yes. <laughs> There you are. Oh, Mum, you look lovely. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. You don't think this colour drains me, do you? No. Uh, sh sh should I kiss you on no. the wrist or, or the Not hand? Not at all. Oh, um, how did the viewing go, sweetheart? Well, they put in a ridiculously low offer. I'm sorry, I'm not going to let Gail accept it. Even though we could do with the money. It's a beautiful house. No way should you accept anything less than the asking price. Spritzer? Uh, please. Um, Audrey? Oh, a large scotch, Joe, please. Yeah. How's, uh, how's your pasta doble? Oh. Careful what you say, guys. Else I might rope you into the panto as part of the ensemble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hayley. Been ignoring me all day. Hayley, 
just please give me a chance to explain. Explain what? How you harboured a criminal? A murderer? Uh, at least hear Carla out, even if you disapprove of what she has to say. Exactly. Hayley, please. Your opinion really matters to me. I'd hate for you to think bad of me. I can't make you feel better, Carla. That's not my responsibility. I'm sorry, all right? I don't want to hear it. It's words. Just words. I'm sorry I ran to L.A. Yes, he told me, and when he did, it turned my world upside down. I can imagine. I, I, I understand. I didn't know what to do for the best. This was a man I loved once, and he were a killer. I thought he might bump me off and all because I could have gone to the police. But you didn't. No, I just had to get out of there. As soon as I heard Tony was shacked up Maria, I got on the first plane back here. And I told him if he didn't leave, I I'd shop him. Tony and his mate tried to kill me. Some might say I, I, I did something similar by not going to the police after he confessed to me. No, but you made his life hell. You were in his face, putting pressure on him all the time because you're a brave, brave man. Yeah, and I'm a coward. And I'm sorry about that. Tony Gordon has, has caused so much pain. Compared to what he did, Carla's misdemeanor is small fry. Please, don't, don't let him keep winning like this. He's messed up so many lives. Why should he mess up ours? You've changed your tune. Yes, well, perhaps you should too. I just wanted a word away from prying eyes and ears. Joe, you mean? I know you think he's a gold digger. Oh, you haven't got any gold, Gail. And what little you've got, you're chucking his way. It's something just doesn't feel right about him. To you, maybe. <sighs> but then you're not in love with him. Do you know, I would be a lot happier about your so-called love for him if he was prepared to sign a prenup. <laughs> Ma'am, Catherine Zeta Jones. No. Why are you so opposed to me having a man in my life? How long have you been on your own? No, this isn't about me, Gail. Then you of all people should understand. I'm fed up of feeling lonely. See you in a bit. Have you ever performed, Gail? Stage wise? No. Everything okay with you, Mum? Oh, you'll never believe what she said now. Oh. What's up? Nothing. I'm not blind. I'm turning into a cliche. I'm turning into everything I never wanted to be. Everything I despise. You think about things too much. I'm the other woman. And I'm starting to hate the wife. Every time I want you, I want to be with you, she gets in the way. Look, it's just a little bit of Christmas shopping. Real life is bound to get in the way sometimes. I'm going to find the next six months so hard. <laughs> well, join the club. We're in this together, Molly. Just remember... That you love me. That me and Sally is a marriage of convenience. Nothing more, nothing less. We're parents and... I should learn to keep my mouth shut. Never, ever stop telling me how you feel. Guess what? What? I've ordered your Christmas present. Ah. <sighs> and I'm picking it up later. I know, I know we said we weren't going to do the whole present swap thing. I wish we could do the wife swap thing. How do you reckon tired coat we sell? I couldn't help myself. Meet me later and then I can give it to you. It's only little, don't worry. Well, later. Can you nip out, say, nine-ish? Uh, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'll, I'll try. I'll text you if I can. Or meet me at the garage at nine. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. Well, 
This is fun, isn't it? Watch her. I'm on the scout seat to recruit some backstage stage management slash stagehands for the panto. Audrey, I can't help but think you will be perfect as HOD of hair and makeup. HOD? Head of department. <laughs> Though I must point out it would be a department of one. Yeah, well, I'm really tied up over the Christmas period, Claire. It's one of my busiest times. Oh, no offence taken, Audrey, really. Don't worry. Dale. Oh, uh, I'd be out of my comfort zone, really. <laughs> no. I wondered if you'd like to do some backdrop painting. I need a Baron Hardrup's kitchen, a marketplace and a palace. How's your drawing? Well, if you need a kitchen fitting for Baron Hardup. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful idea. But then I can't help but think, would your gorgeous units fit in what is ostensibly a 4 by 4 size space? Metres? Feet. I think not. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Well, actually, I thought you were going to say, no way, Jose. And I was going to say, my name's not Jose. <laughs> Our uh, taxi will be arriving soon. All right, come on, let's get this ordeal over and done with. Mum, you're supposed to be looking forward to this. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll, shall I wait outside? You're hoping what's his name will be there? Things never work out the way you want them to, Gail. Therefore, tonight is definitely going to be one whopping great disaster. Wish me luck. Good luck. And good riddance. Mm, not happy unless she's sticking her oar in. <laughs> now, I I've called this meeting. Oh, it's a meeting, is it? Mm, there I was, thought it were a drink. It's a dreeting. Oh, cool. Hey. A dreeting is a mix between a meeting and a drink. I'm totally up to speed with Sean Wordwise. Ah, oh, bless you for that, my Julie. <laughs> oh, can you minute that? Sean. Oh, can I actually do the minutes? I've always wanted to do that. What does it mean? I think it means writing stuff down. Mm -hmm. I just oh. wanted to put it on the record. <gasps> Which one? MacArthur Park by Donna Summer. Hey, that really did actually happen to a friend of mine, you know. That maybe we've been slightly unfair on Mrs Connor, Carla. What? Well, she did actually leave her cake out in the rain. Mm. When she found out that Tony was responsible for Liam dying, well, she just panicked. She was scared. She thought that he might try to do away with her as well, and, well, she just ran away. She certainly didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. It took her so long to bake it as well. Julie, this is serious. Yeah, me Julie. <laughs> She's told me a few things off the record. Oh, what? Uh, go on, Ellie, tell us, and I'll buy you J2R. I'm prepared to give her a second chance. Oh, yeah, Jan, less to the big spenders. <laughs> well, she doesn't drink. <laughs> Are you? I'm a what? Prepared to give Carla a second chance. All right. You can't seriously tell me that you've fallen for a sub story. You must want your head testing, Ailey. Don't listen to a word she says. She's off a cake. I'm not. Uh, better leave it out in the rain, then. <laughs> Very good. Well, you can't blame her. She was his sister. I know, but... But nothing. There's no smoke without fire, and Carla would definitely in on it. We keep giving her the cold shoulder. She'll sack the lot of us. Either that or kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she said to me, she said, Julie, my great sadness is that I'll never have that recipe again. Hiya. Sorry that took so long, mate. Traffic on the ring road was murder. Don't worry about it, Kev. I'm not a clock watcher. Why don't you knock off early? And listen, I've got a pretty full, full long weekend this weekend, so uh, might as well shut the shop till Monday. <sighs> Molly's gonna be made up. She's been a bit mardy lately, like, but a weekend of Prozac in human form. Put a smile back on her chops. So what have you got on that's so important? Ah, nothing much. A bit of late Christmas shopping, the usual. Yeah, I know the feeling, mate. Oh, wicked. Right, have a good one. Yeah, and you? You best go and give Molly the good news. Yes. Oh. What? That's not very polite, Norris, is it? Just saying yes to a waiter. Well, we're here as guests tonight, Audrey, not servants. Well, guests should be considerate. We're not lords of the manor, Norris. They're not serfs. You know what time it is, Audrey? Mm -hmm. It's smoozing time. Oh. 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 Hi, Audrey. Audrey. <laughs> Audrey. <laughs> Still a stickler for detail, I see. Things like that keep Audrey's son a force to be reckoned with. Anyway, how's Perm suspect, Claudia? Ooh, business is booming. 
People still need their hair doing, even in a recession. But hark at me, teaching my grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> now, darling, you simply must be Lewis. Charmed. Oh, ditto. Who said chivalry went out with the ark? Oh, be careful, Audrey. I'll be throwing my cloak on the floor in a minute. <laughs> there are no puddles here, Lewis. <laughs> You on your own, Lord? Re? Uh, no, actually, I'm uh, with a business acquaintance, Norris. I can't see him. Oh, don't worry. Lewis and I will look after you, won't we? We're on the same table, I check. They've named the tables after Santa's reindeer. <laughs> We're on Rudolph. Oh. oh. <laughs> Come on, then. Right. Oh, thank Let's you. Have you. Do you like it? Could you not find a bigger one? I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? Babe, how where do you think we live, Buckingham Palace? Yeah, but you've got to have a nice tree, haven't you? <laughs> See, we never had a tree when I was a kid. We used to go to all these other houses and they'd have, like, these dead nice trees. Loads of different colours and lights, presents underneath. Then I'd go back to ours and be like, Mum, why haven't we got a tree? And she'd go, tie down, I need me ciggies. I'll quit next year, then you can have your tree. She got you presents, though, right? Oh, yeah. Mostly stuff she wanted, though. Earrings, cigarette lighters, cans of lager. <laughs> she did get me this uh, ventriloquist dummy one, so I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I think she got it knock-off from Josie the Fence down at the Parsons' arm. I was so made up. Couldn't stop playing with it. <laughs> Orville, I called him. He looked nothing like Orville. But... <laughs> <laughs> and I put on this show in the kitchen for me, Mum. <laughs> that is... Very sweet. I thought it was brilliant. Well, I bet you were. <laughs> it's too tall, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to lob a bit off the top. Yeah. Mm. I just wanted my lovely wife to have the kind of Christmas that I never had. See? There's too many surprises with me, ma'am. That's what I love about this. About us. No surprises. I mean, you say news agents, I say a safe haven from the cares of the world. You don't seem that relaxed, Audrey. Oh, do I not? Almost as though you don't want to be here. Oh, I do, yes. A highlight of the Weatherfield Council diary, this. Not everybody's cup of Earl Grey, though, is it? What's not to like? Expecting to see someone? Well, um, yeah, I was rather hoping to bump into an old acquaintance, yes. And you haven't? No. A man, is it? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. Who? This one can hear a zip burst in Australia. Oh, don't be so coarse, Louis. <laughs> well, come on, Lord. <sighs> Will Ralph. Ah, bachelor of this parish? Yeah, very big in stretch covers and a wealthy widower to boot. Oh, perfect. My favourite sort. Oh, who wants a skint widower? Who's being coarse now? Not me. Vulgar, then. Cheeky. Isn't he cheeky, old? Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, sadly for you, Will got remarried last March and has been relocated to Abu Dhabi. Oh. Pasty-looking thing with too many teeth for the one face. Him? Uh, I shouldn't worry, Audrey. Striking woman like you, you have men queuing round the block. Oh, so, oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I should get out my fan and get all coy. Look, coyness suits you, my dear. Oh, oh. Mm. Mm. Anyway, where did you and Claudia meet? No, 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 no. I want to learn all about you. More wine, madam. Yes, please. Good. <clears throat> Beans on toast. Mm, lovely. Maybe a poached egg on top. Mm, please. What's it? Uh, probably your mother moaning. Hello. Message for Gail Platt. It's Ginny Drew here calling from the registry office. Good news, Miss Platt. We've had a cancellation for Friday, January the 8th. Can you give me a call back, please, and see if that suits? The number here is... Did you hear that? Good old Jenny Drew. Used to know her sister, Nancy. Well, what do you think? 
Well, I think in light of what your mum said, um... It's got nothing to do with her. Well, maybe we should wait a bit. There's no rush. Don't want to railroad you into anything. And what does that prove? Well, I... It proves she's right and she's not. Oh. It's perfect. I'll ring Jenny back. And it won't cost us an arm and a leg. Let's just have us beans on toast first, then. Mm. Hiya. Hey. So, tickets? We're going to Paris. Paris. No, it's hard for some, isn't it? Check. Money? Check. Passports? Woohoo, check. Saucy negligee. Check. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like, eh? Joe, come and see us from there. Yeah, go on. Hey, guys. How do I look? <laughs> it's, um, Rosie's first night as a promotions girl. Right. What are you wearing? You look foul. Wait, this is the best bit. Oh, you've got to be joking. Is this fella taking a mick? No, she's promoting cherry vodka. Oh, yeah, come on, Dad, just get with the programme. Look, back me up here, Sal. I mean, she looks... she looks ridiculous. Here, here. Ben, put your eyes back in your head. You're on stocks. <laughs> well, he's only human. Mwah. Live and let live, I say. I don't want any more rowing in this house. Mm -hmm. And your figure is amazing. Oh, thanks, Mum. Actually, Soph, <laughs> forget the brew. There's something I've got to do. Oh, what is he like? <laughs> Isn't he sublime? Oh, he's so charming and polite. And, I mean, he's got matinee idol looks, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Better matinee idol than bone idol. <laughs> so, where'd you meet? I mean, you were a bit vague when I asked him. In fact, he downright avoided answering. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not surprised. Oh? He's not my boyfriend, Ord. No? No. He's my escort. You're... What, Claudia? <laughs> what? <laughs> <gasps> well, there's no funny business. No sex, thank God. No, I'd much rather turn up with the Marion Keys. But it's good for stepping out and do's like this. Oh, I say, how bold. Um, you're, what's up? <laughs> Why don't you give him a call? Oh, he, well, he knocks spots off that Norris bloke. And he's cheaper than you think. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh. Are you okay? Yes! Fine. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Mate, listen. What are you doing? I'm going to go back to Mum and Dad's. Why? Just, uh, I don't know. We'll be getting back from Southampton in a few days, and I'd best get back, tidy the place up for him. Look, I know I was angry before, but there's a lot of weird stuff going on with me right now. It's not you. It's not. But if you're going to be on your own... Exactly. Get the place myself. I've left me blimmin' phone here. Have you seen it? Been a quiet five minutes, are you, Ben? Um, will you ring it for us, Ryan? He's getting off. Oh. Uh. Well, if 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 that's what he wants. Oh. I think it's for the best. See ya. What's going on, Mum? <laughs> this year. Save me from tears I'll give it to someone special Special Very festive here <laughs> oh, We should be drinking Snowball, really Oh, no, I can't bear eggnog I've never had it My mum only had special brew in the house Cheers Mmm You make a lovely cup of malt One of my many talents Christmas, eh? It's all about kids, really, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so Maybe we'll have a kid next Christmas. Or the one after. Hey, you know my cousin Tamara, she had twins. We might have twins as well. <laughs> right. Watching the little faces light up as they open the prezzies. Waking us up at three in the morning. A Santa been yet, a Santa been yet. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm going to pop out in a bit for half an hour. What for? Well, 
that would be telling, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I want that lovely tree up by the time I get back. Aye, aye, Captain. Then. What'd you go and do that for? You're gonna smash my face in. It's bang out of order. I know. I'm sorry. She's my man, Ben. I know. It's way off the scale. Eat me then. Make you feel better. Not like that. No. I didn't think you were like that. You've got a girlfriend, Sophie's fit. I know. I should hit you. I'm so sorry. I'm bigger than that. I'll let her though. I want a word with you. Ryan. How could you? How could you do that to us? I'm sorry. I... Why is everyone so sorry? If you didn't do things in the first place, there'd be nothing to be sorry for. You know, I bet your uncle Paul would understand why I did what I did. I wouldn't be so sure. I will never, ever forgive you for this. One day you will. One day you'll understand what it's like to be scared. I doubt it. Ben? Where are you going? I'll tell you later. Over my dead body. Well, you'll have to drop dead then. Because I am going whether you like it or not. I will not have you or anybody stand in the way of my road to fame and fortune. Have you listened to yourself? We live in Manchester, not Dick Whittington's London. The streets are not paved with gold. They pay with broken bottles and dog muck. Try skating over that. Mr. Rickson, it's Carl O'Connor. Do you want to give us a call? I'd love to get this deal back on. All right, thank you. See, told you she were here. This is Connie. Hi. We wanted a word. Okay. We've been talking. Well, what we wanted to say. Julie, Haley, spokesman. Person. What did you want to say, Haley? Um. Well, we won't be giving you the silent treatment anymore. We're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Not that there was any doubt. I mean, it's not like we thought you were in on it or anything. <laughs> Murder wise. Thank you. Obviously, I, we don't want to lose his job, so for it, right like that. <laughs> we had a treating. Sorry. Three weeks, though. Is that enough time? There's plenty. It's not as if we're booking a function room at the Ritz, is it? It's austerity chic, Joe. Wedding on a shoestring, I promise. Oh, go on, then. You've twisted me arm. <laughs> Oh, way up. Look who it is. Oh, someone left the party early. Hi! Fancy a cream egg? I'll go halves, me figure. Mm -hmm. An unsuccessful evening, then? No, it was all right. Uh, Claudia were there from Perm Suspect. Oh, Lord help us. <gasps> and I left Norris there, boring the giblets out of the Lady Mayoress. <sighs> we set a date for the wedding. Oh, lovely. You're not a very good actress, ma'am. 
Gail, I am trying to be supportive and nice. So, rather than get him to sign a prenup, I've decided to place my faith in him and go for it. That's rather cold, so I'm heading in there for a bit of cream egg. Again. Cheers, mate. Oh. Ah. Tickets? Money? Passport? Just get in the cab. It's Grandma. Long time no speak. Hey, were you told Dev to get more of them bickies with jam in the middle? Twice have been in, he's out of stock. Me and Captain just buy a box wholesale and then. What? I'm honey, 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 honey. So honey, honey, honey. Very honey. festive. These are beyond festive, Molly, my dolly. These are the UN diplomatic corps of headgear. Yeah. People can't argue now about who knows what about no murder when there's flashing antlers in the room. Eh? Is, is um, Sally not here yet? Not wrong with your eyesight, kid. Does she normally like? Too early to be late, yeah, lol. Hey, I was talking to you. Um, has he got you opening up? Yeah, Kev's just texted. He'll be in later. He's texted you? Yeah, just now. You OK? He shouldn't have you running around after him, that's all. It's my garage too. She's dead reliable. So am I. Well, she lets me walk up and down the back with you, so. <laughs> anyway, she's not reliable. She's already conked once and you've only had a five minutes. She conked, she ran out of petrol. Tile in? Yeah, bathroom. Need spaces? Well, I was just going to use matches. Jason loves Bill's new truck more than he loves me. Is that right? I imagine if you two answered Gail and said you preferred that boat to her. I don't, so I wouldn't. In fact, in three weeks' time, Gail will be my wife, so... Three weeks? 8th of January, get it in your diary. Well, you don't hang about, do you, pal? Not like Jason. Hey? The flat! A couple of months, he told me. It's been six and I breathe now, but dust. Hey, Joe, is there any chance I can bring her to win instead of Tina? <laughs> I'm sorry, Claire. You are not pulling out of the panto. I've got Graham off. It's our busiest time. It's on Thursday! I fought to get you that part. Hiya. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ashley, love, you know that turkey my mother came in for? Has the order gone through yet? The twelve pounder. Um, hang on. Yep, paid in full, all sorted. Ah, right. Well, what's up? Uh, nothing. It's not your problem. Do you? I've no choice, Claire. He asked Roy if he's doing his uh, homeless lunch thing again this year. Well, I doubt he is. Why? Oh, I want to donate our turkey to him. With only the three of us, a couple of Phillips will do. Well, you go and ask him. Make a big point of it. So after what he's been through, I doubt he'll be having strangers in the cafe at Christmas Day. No, of course he won't. It's for family, isn't it? Christmas for celebrating. Roy's an atheist. You've always got an answer, haven't you, Ken? Always up for an argument. You didn't cop off with a man, then, or not like that. 
No, no, David, honestly, what sort of dude do you think it was? I can't believe you've been mayor. Oh, you know. I thought they were dead fussy about things like that. No, no, I meant like, like, I thought they had like, like certain standards. <laughs> no, like, I, like, I, well, what I meant was like, I thought they were like, like posh people. <laughs> no, snobby people. Like, snobby <laughs> people. She's calling you common. No, I wasn't. No, I went. She's calling you every gram. David. Right, I've, I've got to go. I'll see you at dinner. Yeah. Okay, bye, Audrey. Mm -mm. Well, at least she's pretty, eh? Oh, stinger. David, go and scrub the backwash. Well, I thought I could cancel your appointments for my mum's wedding day. I can manage, thank you. Oh, so you're going? Finally decided Joe's the one, eh? Gran? David! Backwash, yeah, all right, I'm on it. Celebrating. Stocking up so they won't leave the flat till the bathroom's been tiled. Every now and then I look at you and I think, I gave birth to that. And look at it now. It wears check shirts and it tiles bathrooms. Where, well, ma'am? <laughs> well, just make sure she's feeding you properly. Well, you're joking, aren't you? She'll starve me till I get it finished. She wants the flat a dust free zone by the time she buys a frock for her dad's wedding. Oh, when's that? Three weeks. Blimey, Geldon, I'll nail him in quick. Do you reckon so? Come. Well, I would have thought so. Why? That'd just be weird, won't it? Really weird. You know, we're being back. Oh, here. do you know what? He's never going to get that tiling done if he drinks all of that. <laughs> Why? Well, it'd be weird if Sarah comes. Well, I never said that, did I? <laughs> yeah, you did. It'd be weird for you, wouldn't it, if you were stood next to David? No, because I wouldn't be stood next to David. I'd be as far away as possible. I'll leave you to it. Well, I bet she won't even come anyway, you know, this short notice. And she's got a job in Milan, hasn't she? And Beth should be back at school by then. Wow. Well. You've given this a lot of thought, aren't you? I would love to, Alfie. But I've got to go to my sister's party thing. It's a birthday. Why? What's so special about this afternoon? Photos! Bonjour! Yeah. Bonjour, girls! Oh, look, I'm sorry, darling, I've got to go. But no, totally count me in. I will be there. Right, ciao, baby. Bye. Oh. I was praying you didn't get delayed. Oh, so what have you got me? Rosie, now most of this is for Christmas, so no peeping. Yeah, absolutely. I've got some up for now. Here. Yeah. yeah, and this is for you. That was your mum's idea. Oh, mum, thank you. You don't need me this afternoon, do you? What, for the baptism? Of course she does. Well, mum, I'll have to go in my hot pants because I've got to go to work later. Don't come. Look, I'm sorry, but I've got to think of my career. A Bible. La Bible. So, you can practice your French and read the Bible at the same time. Merci. Hey, and don't worry. Rosie's coming to the baptism whether she likes it or not. Don't, Mum. It's fine. Got you and my dad there, and Sean, and Ben will be by the pool, and I'm dead blessed. And plus, if she don't come, people might actually look at me. Peter! Now, wait, wait. Now, Peter, two minutes. Please, Peter. Look, we don't want Simon to suffer for us. Not at Christmas. Why don't you just come round for Christmas dinner like we arranged? So what, like a Christmas ceasefire? What do we do, kick a football around the cobbles for an hour? You're not wired, are you? Looking for quotes for another front page? I've apologised for that. So, this truce, will it make you uh, stop your opposition to the bar? Oh. Come with the address. Hello, love. Uh, Leanne, take Simon to the flat. Simon, go with Leanne. Can we have a greyhound? What, for racing? Honestly, you in this greyhound. Lee, please take him inside. A man in the calf says the role will to him when they start running. It's one of your punters, this, you know. <laughs> so what would you call it? Right, said, get inside. Huh? Yeah. Careful. Are you sure you don't mind looking at your precious truck with that? Well, it's Bill's truck, innit? Oh, we stop calling it a she. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you what, she gives me a lot less air than you do. Does Bill know you're in her sneak around behind his back? Oh, give it a rest, will you? Spacers, give us a shout if you need some more. Can't stop, got things to sort with Gail. Oh, Dad, before you go, Jason desperately wants to know if Sarah's coming to the wedding. Tina? Uh, don't know. We've not got as far as guests list yet. Right, well, when you know, we let Jason know. 
Some total tender rocks are you. Yeah, of course. You're pathetic. All I said was it'd be weird seeing her there. Mm. No, no, no. All you said was that it'd be weird and then weirdly said that you didn't say it. Are you? You lied. I never lied. Again, lie. Why, Jason? I bet if Sarah clicked her fingers, you'd go running, wouldn't you? Hmm? Even now. Now that's pathetic. Stop calling it pathetic. Well, stop being it then. Me and Sarah are over. Get out of your fixed school. Oh, but is it too hard for you to stay divorced? Jason, you are divorced, right? Mm hmm. Pretty much. Are you or not? Well, sort of. You know, it takes two years, doesn't it? Well, it's been two years at least. Only just, and it costs money, doesn't it? So you're not divorced? You flaming liar. Tina, I never said... You let me believe it! You're engaged to Becky, how did that work? Oh, will you get off me flaming back, please? Two thirty change, love, for tap. Bye. Right, that's your deposit gone through, then. Yeah, so that's £13. Free range, clean plucked, oven ready bronze. Do you want any sausages with that? Pigs in blankets? Yeah, they're normally chipolatas. How many? And how much streaky? For the pigs in blankets? No, 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 you put the blankets on yourself. OK, then, just a turkey, no problem. See ya. They're calling you a scab. Who is? All of them. What, Becky? Scab? For pulling out of the panto at such short notice. Scabs are the ones that don't pull out. The ones that keep working. I'm only saying what's being said. Hello, Elliot. Yeah, we are open on Wednesday. What are you after? Oh, no, we could order it. OK, then, yep. Yeah. See you then. Claire, I am sorry, I am. I don't you stuck up for me. Of course I did. But it's put us under a lot of pressure. We need someone of high calibre to take on the role of Prince Charming and when people hear that you've turned it down... It I've makes... not turned it down. It's all right for people that can drop everything and play silly beggars. Some of them have to keep working. Oh, right. Oh, so we're the scabs now, are we? Claire. I'm sorry, I just want it all to go off well, that's all. I know you do, and it will. And what about Steve? Half a dozen jobs, please. Steve has said no, but Becky is working on it. Hey. I wonder if it's too late to put a note in the cabin. I can see no, this is a Prince Charming. Half a dozen, you say? Maybe she meant picky scab, Becky. Hello, Elliot. Yeah, can you just hold on a sec? Look, if you've got time to stand there and insult me, how about give me a hand here? I'm casting. Hello, sorry about that, love. Hiya. Can you mind this for me, please? It's a present. Who for? Ben, just to say thank you for being in the baptism pool with me. Um, it's got a few of our favourite songs on, so I just didn't want to lose no. it. No. No! Take it he hasn't said anything. So that about what? So that about what, Ryan? He's spineless. You can tell him that from me. Right, don't start dissing my boyfriend, Ryan. Look, if you two had a disagreement, that's fine, right? But just don't ruin my day, OK? Ben hasn't. I bet he hasn't. Do you know what? You're so selfish. I'm not surprised he moved out. We would have chucked him out anyway. No, you wouldn't. He's told me you had a disagreement and he thought it was best if he moved out. Is that what he said? A disagreement? Yeah. He's flaming tragic. You're tragic? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we did have a, a disagreement. Yeah, I disagreed with your boyfriend making a pass at my mother. All right. <laughs> not try it on with anyone, never mind someone's mum. Ask her. Ask him. I wouldn't be surprised if she had on him. She sleeps with anyone. Say that again. And what? She had to push him off her. Why don't you ask him when you're in your god pool? What are you staring at? Oi, Jason! I'm not talking to you like this. Like what? Come on, Jason, what am I like or what I know? I said I'm not talking to you! David, come on in! Mrs McReynolds, Parch, where's that coffee? 
Yeah, so I'll kick it off out of you. Like someone who's just found out a boyfriend didn't bring himself to divorce his wife. Oh, believe what you want, eh? Thanks! I will. Oh, when your mother should be watching, she might learn a thing or two. Like uh, what? Like, paradise is no place to make decisions. It doesn't last. Well, so you do want her to change your mind, then? Not that she'll listen. Oh, no. There's very few people in this world that get through to your mother, David. Very, very few indeed. Come on. What are you staring at? Can't Cinderella cop off with somebody else? Who, who else is there? There's a dad and ugly sisters. Won't work. What about Buttons? Buttons has got his arm in a sling and his ankle strapped. Well, maybe the reason they didn't cop off in the original story is because he could run away. Now we can't. Mm. Uh, body and lemonade. Double. We'll have to cancel. Steve's playing the claiming prince. No, Deirdre. No. I was only going to... can't make up the rules to suit himself. We wouldn't be the only family papering over the cracks for the sake of the kids. Simon's not stupid, Deirdre. He'll see right through it. Through what? What's fake about showing him how much we all love him, despite everything? He's looking forward to going to George and Eve's. Well, if you tell him he's coming to ours, he'll look forward to that as well, won't he? Peter, what about me? I want to spend Christmas with my family, with you and my grandson. Then go over there and tell me Dad to get off my case. I would if I thought it'd make a blind bit of difference. But I'm here, asking you to be better than him. Oh, please, Peter. For Simon's sake and for mine. It is. It's dead kosher. Got off Kembalo. No journalist would be interested. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? This sounds well juicer. Yeah. Selfish, screwed landlord selfishly destroys Kitty's panto at Christmas. Well, I'd be a rubbish Prince Charming. No! no. I I'll do it. It'd be a Oh, uh, no offence, T, but when Cinders and Charmers go off into the sunset together, we've decided to go down the hetero route. Well, could I be promoted to Prince, then? Hetero! Well, that is hetero. Boy, girl. Stop confusing me. We're having Steve. No, we're not, Becky. If it's that journal that spoke at bylaws, it's a right shark. Oh, hello. Uh, my name's Becky MacDonald. All right, all right. My... Yes, all right. Just one sec. You swear? I swear. Yes. Wheelie bin cleaning. Oi! Proper classy or X? It's a new way to drink, so we try and keep up. You have done nothing but put me down all day. Untrue. And a tad self-pitying. Did you know him and Sarah aren't divorced? Oh, well, he didn't come to me and say, Mum, I'm divorced. He still loves that. Oh, does he? He's in bits at home. Good. He's sensitive, you know. Two bottles of beer, please. Yeah, right. He is. He's grown up since he's been with you, wanting to do up the flat and everything. He's serious about you. A couple of years ago, he would have gone off into town at the first sign of trouble, just copping off with some floozy, but not now. He loves you, Tina. Oh, warning, she's mood swinging. Hey, Soph. And if she starts giving it loads about me not going to a thingy, she said it was OK. <laughs> you jetting off? Well, yeah, but not the way that you're thinking. Ciao. What is she on about? But as you can see, it's full of gubbins. Right, you, Rovers. You buying? You gonna have a wear with your face? Come on then. No, not me. Um, Tina's in there and I've softened her up. You are? Well, I've told her that you love her and you're in bits. Mum, she's been a right cow. So go and sort it. And I'm not in bits. So you should have get your big trap shut. Uh, Lip. Where are you going? Town. Oh, Jason. Hey, hey. Are you making that? Test drive. Just going to take it on the M6 to see if this cylinder packs up again. And will you be able to hear out over that? Don't tell me. You didn't have time to pop in. Look, Sally will be back any second. She's only gone to have her hair done for a baptism. So where did you go? 
Did you know you were going away when we were in that hotel room? It was a last minute. It was a shopping thing. Sally booked I didn't want to oh, go. Shopping? But you couldn't even text me. How come you could text Tyrone this morning, but I'm not, not me? until you forgive me. Get lost and don't come anywhere near so my So fair. Practices. It was a stupid... Nobody feels worse about it than me. Oh, do you not think I do? You know, because I thought you loved me. You see, I don't want us to split up. What's <laughs> happened? It's cheated. I didn't. It never... Yeah. With Ryan's mum. I'm really sorry. Michelle, I'm really, really sorry. You know what? I never want to see you again. Hello, Sophie. No, no, yeah, yeah. You cheated on me. Mr Webster. Get out my face now. Kevin. She's upset. Oi. How does the view look from the moral high ground? Oh, girl. No, I'll get it. Okay, here's the deal. If you want to play happy families for a day, I've got one condition. Go on. That it's the whole family. You, me, Leanne, Simon, plus George and Eve. I thought they'd made their own... Of course. They'd be very welcome. Fine. Dinner, that's all, for Simon's sake. And, of course, Deirdre's. Right, they're outside, I'll go get them. Yeah, yeah who? Thank goodness I didn't cancel the turkey. Yeah, but why couldn't just the two of them come to us first Ken, and then go on don't to don't you dare argue with him. I mean it. Stripey! What? If I got a grey out, I'd call him Stripey. <laughs> I get the stripy coats. They're the best. Oh, wow. And do you know what? I think I've got some stripey biscuits in the kitchen. Shall we go and have a look? <laughs> wow. Might need a few extra chairs on Christmas Day. Oh, it's all right. I'll get Janice to bring foldy ones. <laughs> Janice? Didn't you say? I did, didn't I? Sorry, uh, us, George, Eve and, uh, and Janice, yeah. Yeah, cos she'd be on her own otherwise. Why are you crying? <laughs> because I'm so happy. <laughs> crying because you're happy? <laughs> that sounds daft. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Where is that? Brought him some it. Port scratchings of peace. He still have to do some creeping for him, mine. Well, I'm sure he'll be back soon. Yep. Copper? I, I thought he meant to be here crying his eyes out. But he was. Well, where's he gone? Just out. He's gone into town, hasn't he? To score with some flues there. No, he wouldn't. He just needed a little bit of space, love. But he's gone into town, right? Not to cop off. <coughs> yeah, right. Oh, look, it's my fault. I wound him up. Look, I'll put the kettle on and then I'll leave him another message telling him you're here. Oh, Tina. <coughs> If I'd have been playing Cinders, Paul could have just thought I'm marrying Steve again, so... No. Oh, what are you doing? I'm not the one barging down the street, love. Tina, you all right? Get lost, David. Look at her, she's legless. Well, what if I am? You are minging. At least I'll be sober in the morning. Oh, I'm going to go after her. Uh, no, you're not. What? She's going to get herself run over. And how is that your concern, David? You're with me now, not her. I can't just leave her to become roadkill. David, you go after her and I'll get my phone out and ring my ex. I mean it! Tina! What's the matter? Who says anything's the matter? Uh, you're drunk, you're all over the place. And that's a crime, is it? What are you, the, the booze police? Why do you go and raid Emily Bishop? He's got the sherry out. You're upset. What's up? Is it Jason? It's none of your business. Oh, it is, isn't it? What happened? You catch you with his pants down? Me and Jason, I've got nothing to do with you. You see, I knew it wasn't. David, last. just go away! What do you think you're doing? I'm having a bath. What does it look like I'm doing? You've had too much to drink and you haven't even got a licence. Oh, my God, when have you become so boring? Why do you go and push your mum down the stairs? I'll go and score some pills for my dad. Oi! 
I'm not letting you drive. No? No. Watch me. Get out! Ah! 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 Give me back. No way. You're not driving. When are you going to get the message? I don't want you anywhere near me. You made my skin crawl. Shut up. Well, if you don't like it, stop following me. Why do you do us all a favour and just drop dead? Well, give them back. Ah! Get off! Told you, you're not driving. Come on, I'll take you on. Don't touch me! Just leave me alone. All right, love, thanks a lot. Now then, don't tell me that you've actually stopped shopping with the closing stores around you. Hey, I have had the best Christmas shop ever. You should see what I've got for Christmas Day. Shoes. Dress. I thought the whole point of buying Christmas presents was that you bought them for the book. Well, yeah, but you can't treat yourself every now and again, can't you? Let me that one again. <laughs> what are you ordering here? I'm going to Manchester, uh, Manchester. Uh, oh, Deanscape. Yeah. Now, what you got there? <laughs> ah, no, please. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. Oh, it's not Emily. It's going to be late. Just see if that Yule log's defrosted. Ryan's mum? He kissed Ryan's mum? How could he think that I'd never find out? I don't know what to say, love. How could he do that to me? Don't know. Ben was meant to be my baptism partner. Joe, you know I don't even want a cop. Hey, of course you do. Unless, of course, you was only doing it to please Ben, in which case, I'll be disappointed. Because to see you so fired up about something, something you really wanted to do, well, that made me proud. Yeah, but you don't believe in God. But I believe in you. <laughs> and you see her, and she's the most beautiful girl in the world. I feel like the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> right, so if we can practice the look. You look like you're in pain. Well, what kind of look do you want? Well, it's more... I won't mind wearing things like this all the time. It's very romantic. Isn't that the look I was doing? No, yours was more... No, it wasn't. Not like you're constipated. That's the look you're doing. Look, you have to convey everything in this one look. The old scene turns on it. It's the look that says, Who are you, beautiful creature? I must have you. Da, 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 da. <laughs> what do we reckon? That's the look. All set? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. You're gonna fall out with a boyfriend, but you're not gonna think about that, are you? No. What are you doing? Just checking out the camera. Yeah. Got it. Hi. Oh, hi, Molly. Hello. You're coming over later. What? Sophie's baptism party. Um. Oh, has Kevin not invited you? Kevin, you're hopeless. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot. Well, Molly, I hope you and Tyrone can come over in a couple of hours. We're just going up to the church now. Yeah, we'd love to. Won't miss it for the world. Great. All right. Well, we don't want to be late. Oh. See you later. See ya. Bye. Sophie! Wait for us. <laughs> I never thought you was coming. Yeah, of course we are. Um, you always told me about Ben. Are you OK? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Ryan, I'm sorry about what I said about your mum. Forget about it. I have. Have you spoke to Ben? No. Not really bothered either. I've got nothing to say to him. Never mind about Ben. Shan. He's meant to be my baptism partner. He's meant to hold my towel while I'm in the pool. But we'll... I'll do it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, come on. We're going to be late. I'm coming. Oh, thank you. There you go. Oh, hiya. I've got him in. Good. Yeah. 
Do you know, if I hear Rudolph the fucking red-nosed reindeer one more time, I shall pull my hair out. Yep, I hate Christmas. Oh, why so miserable? It's just, um... Sally's invited me to Sophie's baptism party and... It's awkward, isn't it? You're happy being in her living room, are you? Well, obviously I'd rather not go, but I've got to keep up appearances, haven't I? Yes! For the millionth time, me and Kevin are over. Hey, I tried looking in town for baptism cards, but they're all for babies. To be honest, I don't get why she's doing it. Well, presumably because she believes in God. Well, well I believe in God. Don't mean to say I'm going to chuck myself in a swimming pool for him, though, does it? Hey, now I've been thinking. Do you want me to bring a nice ham over on Boxing Day? Yeah, <clears throat> why not? There's more to this than a Sally inviting you over. What is it? It's just... Is this it? Does it not get any better than this? Life? That's what you make it, Molly. And from where I'm sitting, you're the lucky one. How do you work that out? Well, you're young. You've still got your looks and your figure. You've got your own home. Husband who adores you. Some folk might say you've got everything. It's very festive. Red, black, just above the knee. Very me. Oh, <laughs> do you know that sounds lovely? Well, it's been a while since I treated myself and I've no man to buy for this year, so why not? Do you know, I do that. Justify buying things for myself by saying, if I had a man in my life, he'd buy it for me. It's rubbish, isn't it? Mm. We work hard, it's our money, and then we feel bad when we spend it on ourselves. Exactly. Oh, hang on. I hope this is who I think it is. Oh, yeah. Mr. Uh, not quite. My grandson, Nick. Oh. Hi, Nick. Hi, Gran. Oh, sweetheart, where are you? I'm in Manchester. Booked into a hotel for the night. Oh, darling, I've made up the spare room for you. I just need to clear my head, you know. I, I'll be around in the morning, OK? All right, whatever. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, my love. Your mother won't listen to me, and I'm sure you will see she is making a mistake. OK, uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll talk about it then. All right, darling. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <sighs> Another double, please. What are you looking at? <laughs> it's 66 years ago that I made the decision to accept Jesus into my life and be baptised and as my relationship with God has become ever stronger, I, I've realized that this is far more than a symbolic gesture. My prayer for you, Sophie, is that his guiding hand will always be upon you. And when you need it most, it will be there to support you. And I'd just like to tell you how honored I am that you've asked me to speak today. You're about to embark on a wonderful journey. God bless you. Thank you, Emily, for those lovely words. Sophie, will you join me in the baptism pool? Shut up. He hasn't rang you. What? I'm guessing you ain't for someone. He hasn't turned up. Well, you're a rubbish guesser then, aren't you? I'm sorry, uh, this fly you gave me is out of date. What? Well, that was the only reason I came in here. Sorry, you're gonna have to pay 6.50 for your drink. <sighs> what a rip off. Well, I'm not paying for it. I've only got a fiver enough to get me home. You have to pay for it. You've drunk half your drink. Well, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> Put it on my turn. Thank you, sir. No, it's all right. I don't even know you. Nick Tilsley. I don't that drink for a strange block. <laughs> don't worry about it. It was on the company plastic. I won't even notice him. It's just a dream. Tina. 
I'm sorry for being such a cow. Not day. Wanna talk about it? No. Look, um, thanks for the drink. But seriously, I've got a boyfriend. And if he was here, I'd offer to buy him a drink as well. Look at my sad, lonely guy drinking at the end of the bar. It's please. Take pity on me. And allow me to buy you another incredibly overpriced drink. Okay, just one more. Thanks. Sophie, no need to be nervous. Do you have people in apart from Emily? Yeah, um, I've got my mum and my dad. And my friends. And, well, and my granddad. And is there anything that you'd like to say to them? Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, well, I just want to say thank you to my mum and my dad and tell them how much I love them. Um, and I know you don't really get why I'm doing this, but your support really, really means a lot. And especially my dad, because, well, when you talk about God, you, like, you call him father. Well, there's loads of people that don't know what it's like to have a loving father and they can't relate to it, but I can. And I know he loves me lots and he'll love me no matter what. And he'll always be there for me. And, well, um, he's great. <laughs> right, Sophie. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Sophie, do you accept Jesus as your saviour? Yeah. <laughs> and have you committed your life to him? Yeah. Then let the water wash away your past sins and may you be reborn in his love. <laughs> your new life starts here, Sophie. May God continue to shine his light upon you and may you radiate his glory. Thank you. <laughs> what does she know the song? She knows it. Trouble won't be getting her to sing it, it'll be getting her to stop singing it. Liz, tell her about our Amy singing. She is at it, non-stop. Oh. Do you know, I remember our girl, she was the innkeeper for the nativity of the Bessie Street Juniors. She practised her line for weeks, then made a complete sow's ear of it. Bless her! <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah. Sean, where have you been? Where am I been? <laughs> you were meant to be here 40 minutes ago. Ah, oh, well, happen to me now, so don't get your knickers knotted. I'll get myself a drink and then I'll bob through. <laughs> <clears throat> Rebecca? I don't like his attitude. One rotten egg spoils an omelette. I know you're a little bit stressed. Stressed? Who's stressed? I'm not stressed. Well, I are. Don't get lippy with me. And while we're on it, I heard Josh swear again in the bath this morning. Yet another one Amy has taught him. How many times our Amy does not swear? Maybe your bath water were to what? But anyway, look, this is a dress rehearsal. Now, I know Sean's a bit of a liability, but he's willing. And don't you forget, this is for charity. Charitable heart, Claire. Theatricals. What the like? <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't know what else to do. I grabbed my coat and made a run for it, but the bull chased after me. <laughs> I mean, why would you grab your coat? Why would you grab your coat? I jumped over a wall and landed on some eggs. Oh, all right, <laughs> So, you're successful then? Ah, I get by. Sorry, at home business. From the night, sir. Family stuff. I got summoned by my gran. My mum's getting married to this bloke who's a waste of space and she wants me to make her see sense. But I just hate family sometimes. I've been back for ages, yes. Felt a bit guilty when my gran ran. So, here I am, putting it off to the morning, drinking, and chatting you up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I've got, you got a boyfriend. Yeah, a boyfriend soon, who's in town with his mates. They've had an argument. Oh dear. He's probably got his hand halfway up some girl's skirt. 
happens immediately. Let's abuse that plastic of yours a bit more. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you already had one. Oh, Emily, it's beautiful. Mum, come and look at this. I was given this one at my christening. You often forget it's there, but it's surprising the amount of times it offers comfort just when you need it. Thank you, Sam. Oh, Emily, that's beautiful. We bought Sophie a bracelet. You showed Emily your bracelet. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. And do you like a dress? Bought it specially. She's looking so grown up now, isn't she? she is. Mom! She is. <laughs> That's the great thing about Christmas, isn't it? All the food. <laughs> Not so funny when you weigh yourself at New Year, though. Oh, there's a way around that. <laughs> Don't weigh yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm too busy to move on to this. Push me out, just admit it. It's not late. Flaming well is. You're meant to be backing away from Sally, not swanning off for a weekend. We're supposed to be saving for our lives together. Kevin, together. Yeah, I had Christmas shopping to get. I've got a family. I've got to do family things sometimes, you know. Even though I'd rather be doing something else with you. So just leave it, okay? <laughs> this party's a right flop. The prince hasn't looked at me once. Well, he's looked at me. Well, he couldn't miss you. You look like a big top in that dress. Well, at least I've got a big top. And they're real. Ooh, they're not real. It Looks like you're trying to smuggle a couple of orphans out of the country to Madonna. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. Right, and you carry on with that until they've had enough. Right, then we move to Cindy's and the Prince. <sighs> You've got to know that you're the fittest girl in here. Please tell me your name. I can't. Then at least add me to your Facebook. I have to go. Then let me do just this one thing. Yeah, 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 and that's enough now. Yes, ha, 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 quit it! Right, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing more like? That's not in the script. Actually, it is. He's meant to give her a peck, not check out her tonsils with his tongue. Work for me, John. And me? Yeah, well, um, I thought it added a lot to the scene. You kiss her like that again, Steve. And I don't care what it adds to the scene. Turkey won't be the only thing getting stuffed this Christmas. <laughs> I think we need to practice the kiss again. Hey, lady, you keep your hands off my husband or I'm going to shove these boots right up your ass. Oh. Uh. <sighs> Has everything he ever said to me a lie? Of course Ooh. not. <laughs> Steady on. He really likes you. He not text me. Oh. What would you want him to? I don't know. And what about that memory stick I did for him? Our favourite songs. Keep it. I won't be able to listen to it without thinking of it. Smash it with a hammer. Found them. Don't be daft. I mean it. Make you feel better. <laughs> what if they held her down too long and she drowned? Oh, they know what they're doing. It was very moving, very spiritual. It's a very good camera. Mm. Oh, yeah, Kevin got me this. Isn't it good the way they can fix it up to telly? You know, in my day, you used to have to send them off to get them developed. And then chances were you'd get someone else's back. <laughs> oh, I love Blackpool, me. That's not Blackpool. It's Paris. Oh, I've gone back too far. Oh, that was a week ago, but don't tell Carla because I pulled a sickie. <laughs> you went to Paris last weekend. Oh, it was so romantic. I mean, you've got to splash out every now and again, haven't you? Oh, how lovely. We had a trip down the Seine, didn't we? Moonlight. It was just like a film. I've never known Kevin get so amorous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> we should have got some food. No, why don't we just uh, go somewhere else and just chill? Oh, that would be a big mistake. You know, okay. oh, why? Because you've got a boyfriend. Shh. I don't want to talk about him. Yeah, well, uh, neither do I. Something in this. Give me your number. No. Go on, I want to see you again. You you can't, okay? That that just can't happen. Yes. 
long as it hasn't got a Bible stashed in it. No point. There's even some people God can't save. Sophie, <laughs> that's not nice. I was only joking. Yeah, and this is from me and your mum. Oh, my God. <laughs> they must have cost a fortune. Mm. More. Doesn't matter, it's only money. Mm. <laughs> so much. I'll go and track them on. Thanks, Dad. What? You know you and you best have a very good Christmas present for me. Right, I'm going to try and smell you later. Well, she seems all right now, after all that stuff with Ben. Yeah, maybe she's just putting on a brave face. So, what have you got planned for your day off? Well, I might pop into town in a bit, pick up a few things for tomorrow. And more shopping? It's all you've done the last two weeks. Well, I want this Christmas to be special for all of us. Can I wear it? No. Can I watch it or listen to it? No. Is it something to drink? I'm not going to tell you what I've got you for Christmas. It's all right. I know what it is. It's that Millennium Falcon that I saw on eBay in it, one where the cockpit lights up and that. You shut up about Christmas for one minute. What's up with you? Nothing. I've got a headache. Come on, go to work and I'll see you later. OK. Hey, Kev's not opened up yet. Do you reckon him and Sal are having a bit of a cheeky lie, eh? Hey, why don't you ask him? I'm um, sorry I'm late. I was just there. Uh... Well, it's all right. You don't have to explain. Does it? No. Of course not. She's got a headache. Good night. What the hell are you doing here? Good morning to you and all. Just going spare, man. Oh, uh, where's Tina? Uh, back of the flat, I think. You don't know? I didn't see her last night, did I? Right, well, stop stuffing your face, get some clothes on and go and see if she's all right. And when you are speaking to her, say sorry. Why is it with you in here? It's like some sort of conspiracy or something. Right, and stop using big words. It doesn't suit you. Ooh. You're enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> Takes me back to when you were little and cute. So you're going to tell us what happened? I told you I just fell over and sprained it. Why do I not believe that? Because his lips are moving. Don't sweat, I'll still be well enough to open up my presents and raise a glass to cheer another exciting birthday slash Christmas. Uh, not too exciting, eh? Let's just have a nice, peaceful, quiet one. Hey, did you hear that, Joe? Let's go easy on the old Volavon lobbing tomorrow, yeah? He was never cute. So here it is, Merry Christmas, everybody's having fun. It's Christmas! Let me help, I'll take it down a couple of decibels. Sorry. <laughs> Got a bit carried away there, didn't I? I don't know why. It's for kids' Christmas and that, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. Which is another reason why I can't wait to have them. <laughs> All right. Is it something you and Molly's talked about then? No, it's a bit of a sore point at the moment. Well, plenty of time for that, isn't it? Mm. Look, do you mind if I go over to the shop and see if she's feeling better? Here you go, mate. I'll finish that off. Cheers, Kev. You're a pal. Okay, not bad. <laughs> There's still a few things need ironing out. <laughs> Um, Graham. Oh, um, you're a bit slow on some of your cues. Yeah, I think these pills I'm on are interfering with my spatial awareness and uh, time perception. Right. Well, if, can you just pick up a pace? Yeah. Betty? Yes, Mum. What can I say? Word perfect as ever. Oh. Oh. Hey. Woo. <laughs> Actually, you, you did omit a line in one scene. Did I? What line was that? In retrospect, uh, I, I could have been mistaken. Oh! 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 Okay, Steve and Claire, much better. And, uh, and the kiss at the end was very touching. Oh. We've been practising, haven't we? Oh. Becky, yep. that was um, very spirited. Now, if we, if we could just lose the chewing gum. They're it dumb. Oh. <coughs> Hey. Um. Sean and Jesse, 
No offence, but you make extremely credible harridans. Ah, oh, I don't know. Should do the delivery one. Right, let's take Oi. 30 minutes for lunch, and then we'll come back here and have a full dress rehearsal. That's if the costumes arrive. OK. <laughs> Amy's still practising her song. Mm, mm. Hey, listen, don't you worry. She'll be fine by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What are you two virgins whispering about? Trying to find her a boyfriend, aren't I? We don't want one, do we? Well, you're not going to get one looking like that, are you? Have you seen yourself recently? <sighs> this is the work. And anyway, why do you think they make us dresses like that? For a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's how you get guys interested. It's like training a dog. What do you mean? Well, you give them a little treat now and then. And before you know it, they're begging for more. I'm really nervous. And then they start jumping your leg. <laughs> Mum, what are you doing? Find my keys. <laughs> you going off to work? Yep. Oh, it's a shame because I thought we could all go to mass tonight. <sighs> what, all is in Dad as well? Yeah. Mum, I know Christmas is the time for miracles, but I would not hold your breath. Tina, it's me again. I'm outside and they can't find the keys to the flat of the van. So if you're in there, will you just let us in, eh? We'll just pick up the phone and let us know you're okay. Tina! Of all them big eyes watching you. Yeah. <sighs> Dawn, I'm bricking myself as it is. Auntie Becky is here to help you, love. <laughs> Get your laughing gear on that bad boy. Right. Mm. We're on. Right. Sword. That. Oh, break a leg. to breathe in from it. I am flaming breathing in. Would you know, this brass. This one of your old ones, Betty. Get away with you. <laughs> right, you've got a packed house, everybody. So good luck and have fun. Right, come on, let's go. You're on. I have to say, I'm quite looking forward to this. Oh, he don't get out, does he, Deirdre? Woo! Uh, Peter! We've got a couple of places for you here. Yeah, it's probably why I'm up to the main. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Isn't it? Hey, is this the one with the dwarves? No, that's Snow White. All oh, right, what's this one about? The one with the pumpkin in the glass slipper. Sounds a bit boring. Well, I didn't even want to come, so let's just watch it, shall we? Do I feel like a mum at the school play? Is Sean nervous? Well, Sean's fine. It's Jesse who's in bits. Well, what's he nervous for? He does this all the time. I'm worried whether his bum's going to look big or not. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh, I really feel like I'm at the school play now. <laughs> Our story begins in the castle of Baron Hardup, where poor Cinderella is working hard, as usual. Aww. 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 Oh, I am so unhappy. Aww. All I do Aww. all day long is cook and clean and sweep the floor. Oh, oh. Mummy, use the hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get any thanks for it? No! <laughs> Pigging right, I don't. Cinderella! 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 Speaking of pigs, here come my two ugly stepsisters, Carbuncular and Gorgonzola. Cinderella! Cinderella! <laughs> Oddly 
like you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're both single. <laughs> Cheeky girls will let themselves go. Oh, I love children. Yes, but you couldn't eat the whole one. I bet you could. Oh, you cheeky article. Oh, knock off yourself. Found your keys, then? Uh, yeah. Weird, though, because I found them on the floor in the yard. Sure, my mum took them off me last night. Been trying to get hold of you all day. Yeah, my uh, phone was off and I went into town. Again? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I've been worried about you. Well, you didn't seem worried last night when you went out on the lash. Look, T, I'm not going to lie to you. I love Sarah. I know, I, yeah, I did climb through a bog window the first time, but when we did get married, it meant something. Well, to me, anyway. The thing is, that was then, and this is... This isn't. All I'm trying to say is, I love you now. I'm sorry about last night. Yeah, me too. Just pretend like I'm not here. Why don't you do one? We don't have to. <laughs> That's pretty funny for you. What's happened to you, Al? Let's just say I had a bit of a disagreement with a car. Well, more like a van, anyway. Guess you had to be there. Weirdo. Look, um, I've got to finish off here. Why don't we meet in the pub in a bit? Well, I've got a better idea. Why don't I get us a bottle of wine and meet you back at the flat? And then you can show me how sorry you really are. Well, I think that's a better idea. Hmm? Bye. Knock, knock. Ooh, that woodpecker's back again. There's somebody but... at the door. Come in! Hiya, <laughs> hey! Sanders! Hiya, Buttons! Hiya, kids! Hiya, Buttons! Oi! I said, hiya, kids! Hiya, Buttons! <laughs> All right, there it is. How's it hanging? Uh, what do you want? I uh, brought the post. <gasps> oh, goody, is there anything for me? Uh, this is from the beauty salon. Oh. Must be a refund. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <gasps> this looks interesting. Oh! oh. <clears throat> you are hereby invited to Prince Charming's ball. Oh. Oh. To be held at the palace this evening. It was sharp. Bring a bottle. <gasps> oh. Oh. How exciting! Ooh, what am I going to wear? Maybe a bag over your head. The only thing I'll be bagging is the prince. Oh, no chance, he's mine. In fact, I'm going to get myself off uptown and get myself a nice jazzy outfit, dead classic. Hey, I wonder if TK Maxx is open yet. <laughs> You're wasting your time. I've heard the prince likes a real woman with a bit of meat on her. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Butcher man. <laughs> All right. Do you want your dad? Um, no. It's you I've come to see. I, I just want to say thank you for um, not telling Jason what happened. It's all right. Probably wouldn't have understood anyway. Too many syllables. Um, I'm sorry about your arm. Nah, he got us a day off work. Probably should be thanking you. I know it's none of my business, but since I did pretty much run us over, what were it all about? We had a row about Sarah. Got it in my head, he still had feelings for her. I guess I just lost it. <laughs> I know she's my sister and everything, but if Jason would rather be with her than you, then he's even thicker than he looks. And that's saying something. Well, I better be going. I'll see you at dinner tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that right? Yeah, I don't think that vlog could quite agree with my painkillers. Well, how much did you have? Oh, I never really? get to have any fun. Oh, 
how I wish I could go to the ball. Just for one night. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong, Roy? It, it's stuck. I can't release the bucket. Just give it a yank. A what? Your fairy godmother. Who do you think? I don't mean to be rude, but you don't look much like a fairy godmother. Oh, well, Callie Minogue was busy. <laughs> so what's your problem? Now, come on, hurry up, because I've got some hot pots in the oven. <laughs> I want to go to Prince Charming's ball, but yeah. I haven't got a ticket. Hey, what a shame, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you. Now, are you nearly ready to sing your song? <laughs> so, do you come here often? Is that the best line you can come up with? <laughs> Shut up, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> Only I'm sure I've seen you before. No, this is my first time. No, I know it's a fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say if I asked you to dance? <laughs> Hit it, DJ! This is you. Amy, knock him dead. Go on. <laughs> Why ain't she doing anything? Go on, Amy. Amy, sing something. Anything. Amy! Oh, boy. <laughs> Say what I think she said. Well, it could have been worse. She could have said she. Christmas presents. Well, you normally just stick them in a bag with the receipt still attached. Yeah, well, I thought I'd try and get into the festive spirit. I'll get it. Well, if that's carol singers, tell them we're Jewish. <laughs> well, what happened to the festive spirit? One step at a time, eh, Mum? You have a visitor. Santa, you came! Sorry to disappoint you. How are you, Mum? Oh, <laughs> Why didn't you say you were coming? Well, it wouldn't have been a surprise then, would it? At least we could have made sure we weren't in. Yeah, good to see you too. <laughs> Joe, this is... Nick, I gathered. Pleased to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever else happens tomorrow, I've just had the best Christmas present I could have hoped for. Oh, right, kids, can I come over on the stage now? Thank you. <laughs> and it was, uh... Different. Yeah, and at least it was for a good cause. Maybe they could give some of the money to the Tourette's Trust. <laughs> oh, how is she? Well, she's a bit upset she didn't get to sing, but I thought the centre will make it up to her. Don't you say a word. I wasn't going to. Especially not that one. Right. Just because our aim is well this time, it doesn't actually prove with anything. Hey, come on. You lot should be celebrating, not rowing. You're all brilliant. I guess it was a team effort. Yeah, talking of which, where's Graham? He wasn't there for the curtain call either. Oh, that was so romantic. Especially that bit where Prince Charming and Cinderella kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Get a beer, and I'm going for a wad. Ah, uh, Kev's all not with you. Uh, no, I just nipped out for a quick half before she drags me off to mass. <laughs> Sly dog. I'll be back in a bit. I know you're angry with me, but I can explain. I'm not interested. Ashley, I want word. What about your employee? Where is he? In my room, face down, on my bed, snoring his head off. Well, Liz, I always knew you had a thing for younger fellas, but Graham... <laughs> we'll go and get him. Yeah, I'll just talk to me. Go to hell. I'm going nowhere till we sort this out. Outside. Tell me, what do you think? Fabulous, darling. <laughs> was, was I prettier than Sean? Oh, definitely. They've always had a thing about women with beards. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Tyrone's going to be back in a minute, so just say what you've got to say and then leave me alone. Let's just it. 
Well, you managed long enough to sneak off to Paris. It's almost funny. I thought it was us that were supposed to be having an affair. I didn't tell you about that because I didn't want to hurt you. You lied to me. I had no choice. Oh, well, I have. And I'm not going to do this anymore. What? I can't see you. And I can't be with you. <laughs> you can't just finish it like this. Ugh. Why not? Not everything has to have a happy ending. It's over. Just go back to your family where you belong. Molly, Molly, walk away, Molly. Watch me. Chocolates for me, Mum. They're in the bag. And the sherry? Yep. Right. Sooner we get Christmas done. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The sooner we can start celebrating our wedding anniversary. Nice shirt. All right, boys, come on, let's get going. The choir boys are really belting it out this year. I saw three young lads yeah. out on their new bikes. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to behave yourself today? Me? Yeah, I haven't done anything wrong. I know you don't like it, but George is a part of this family. So if you could just bite your tongue, just for today. I can smile and I can be nice. Doesn't mean I don't think that Peter's not making a terrible mistake. I knew that shirt would look nice on you. <gasps> oh, Mum, this is so me. That's a bit small. It's my size. It's for a child. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> what did you buy that? It's what she wants. <laughs> right, open yours. Well, you've already got my shirt. I know, I've got this as well. Open it. Ooh, perfect. Look inside. Inside what? The slip of your dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's this? It's a day rally driving in Derbyshire. What do you think? You didn't have to get me that. I know, I wanted to. So, where's mine? I've not got you anything special. I know, Paris was special. I thought we was uh, cutting back. Yeah, all right, my expectations are nice and low. Where is it? It's upstairs. <laughs> I'll go and get it. <laughs> oh, move. Uh -huh. Mom, I'm going to try it on now. Rosie, the curtains are open. Anybody could walk past. So I'm not ashamed. You should be. <laughs> oh, what? You like it? Yeah. Yeah, of course I like it. It, it might be a bit small, like. Did you keep the receipt? Uh, yeah, well, we can always take it back, can't we? Yeah. Who's that? Um, just advert for a new car plan. <laughs> On Christmas Day? How mad's that? Right, come on. Open yours. It's big. It's not socks. I can see that. <laughs> it's... A karaoke machine. <laughs> oh, how unexpected. Yeah, Kev thought that you might want, like, this fancy perfume, but when I saw that, I thought, that is the perfect Christmas present for my wife. It's programmed with a thousand songs, and you can add anything you want. Do you like it? I'm blown away. <laughs> Look on your face when you open that. Magic. You didn't want perfume, did you? That's great. <laughs> That's a nice shirt, Peter. Oh, thanks. Where is he? You just said to wait here. Where's Blanche? Portugal. She was supposed to be back last night, but uh her best mate fell over and broke her leg in the duty-free lounge at the airport. So, she's back at the villa doing a Florence Nightingale impersonation. Close your eyes, Simon! Close your eyes. Oh, wow! <laughs> right, you can open them now. Is it a bike? Well, oh, open it and see! Of course, it could be two dozen pairs of socks cleverly disguised as a bike. <laughs> 
joy to buy. Hi. Do you like it? It's the best present ever. And the look on your face right now is my best present ever. Can I ever go on it? I don't see why not. Oh, what are you doing? Checking my messages. Oh, Kevin, you're worse than a teenager. Put it away. Right. What time do we want our Christmas dinner? Don't mind. Well, I'll put the turkey in now, and when it's ready, it's ready. Well, that's very relaxed of you. Yeah, well, I am very relaxed. Why is it a personality transplant? <laughs> Better clean up that mess. Of well, course, no rush. It's mess. You don't like mess. Today, I don't mind mess. Mum, you're starting to freak us out now. Come on. <laughs> Let me guess, a beer and a white wine. Oh, uh, it's a bit early for me. Uh, wise man, Christmas a marathon, not a sprint. It's not stopping you. No, no, I'm pacing myself, aren't I? Oh, go on, then. Oh, I'll have a can if one's going. I can't, right? Yeah, two cans, here we go. Right. Did Santa visit your house, then? Oh, yes, I've been a good boy, I have. Oh. <laughs> hey, need any help, then, kitchen fairy? Sorry. Why do you keep getting adverts and I don't? We're on the same plan. You haven't got any books. We've got loads of books. It's flat pack. What's flat pack? You assemble it yourself. Yeah. Half the fun. For who? Well, not me. You said you wish you had a nice bookcase over there. I did. And it's a very thoughtful present. I am thrilled. Not just with my bookcase, but the fact that I have a man in my life who <laughs> listens to what I say. Just mm. ignore her. She's rambling. Mm. Guess who's upstairs having a shower? Santa Claus. <laughs> Nick. Nick, come home for Christmas. Oh, what a surprise. Well, that's a turn up for the book. Who'd have thought of that? <laughs> Did you forget my birthday? No, no. Get your presents in the car. Joe, peel some more potatoes. Nick loves his roasties. They used to have a piano at Rovers, didn't they? Oh, I replaced it with a flaming jukebox. <laughs> Jukebox, me. Hey, F9. Guess what that is? I don't know. Kiss. Huh? The Prince song. Only I like Tom Jones' version. Oh. I love Tom Jones. Oh, hey, yeah. it's on here, you know. Yeah, after I've done this. Don't worry, I'll do it myself. I've always fancied myself as a bit of a singer, me. Do your dreams, lad. <laughs> I need to talk to you. You need to get the message. Please, let me explain. Are we clear now? I can't let you go. Don't you dare. Look, you have to talk to you me. You don't let me go. Merry Christmas. Oh, and to you too. You got a new bike. I'm going to put you. My granddad's going to fix it. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Where are you going? Out. Out where? Just out. And where's your dad? Is he in the shower? No, he's not in the shower. Well, have you seen him? Oh, Mum, he's probably at the pub. I'll go and check. <laughs> See ya. See you in a bit. I've got a house full in my way for Christmas dinner. I had to speak to you. Have you brought me any more of your romantic holiday snaps? <sighs> I was railroaded into that. I didn't tell you about it because I knew you'd be upset. Upset? Betrayed. Well done. You did the double. You managed to cheat on your wife and your mistress. It wasn't like that. I want to be with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when it suits and the rest of the time, forget it. You've done this to me time and time again and I keep falling for it. Well, no more. Look. Eyes open. Get the message. Get lost. Don't touch me! Look, I, I was wrong. Do right work. We shouldn't wait till next summer. We should do it now. Do what? Leave. You and me. I can't bear this anymore. I need to be with you. You insane? Look, maybe I am. But I've just heard the words coming out my mouth. And it's what I want. It's 
it's Christmas Day. I don't care. I want us to go in our houses right now and tell Sally and Tyrone that we love each other. We've got a new life together. Starting today. Two marriages. I just want to be with you. No more lies, no more cheating. I want everyone to know how I feel about you. <sighs> You're crazy. Mm, you turn my life upside down. I think about you every day, every hour. I love my family, but I just want to be with you all the time. I tell Sal, you tell Tyrone. It's done. It's so simple. He's in there singing on karaoke. Well, we have three choices. We can either end this now, forever, go back to lying and cheating, or we can be honest and start a new life together. I know what I want. Simon's gonna want me presents from George and Eve. Come on. It's a book. <laughs> no, nope, it's not a book. Is it uh, a scooter? Um, no. <laughs> if you don't like it, I can take it back to the shop and change it. We've kept the receipt. Go on then, open it up. What? It was it. Was... Oh! It's Whoa. a green wing. Oh. Wow! Bags your first car. Oh. Hey, you can wait your turn, you. I'll arm wrestle you for it. Right. Oh, oh, come on then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, has that got a sports package? It has got everything. I did a deal with Santa. It's the best present ever. Well, you're the best grandson ever. Yeah. <laughs> Can we set it up? I don't see why not. I can't tell him when the others are there, well, um, I'll get Pam to take him to the pub. What about the girls? I don't know. I reckon it's easiest to be honest with him. Listen, I don't expect an easy ride. Yeah, they'll be devastated. Yeah, but they deserve the truth. Listen, I'm not regretting this second of being with you. What I've hated is telling all the lies. Yeah, me too. We're doing the right thing. We are. Look, at least Jack and Pam are going to be there with Tyrone, like Sophie and Rosie will be with Sally. It's not like we're leaving them on their own. Kevin, are you sure you want to do this? I can think of a million reasons not to do it. But if we don't do it now, I think we never will. <laughs> this is, um, the best Christmas present I've ever had. Right. Let's go on. Tell the truth. Listen, I'll meet you at the garage in an hour. I'll book us into a hotel for a couple of nights and then we'll come back and face the music. Listen, it's going to be tough for a while. I'll sort out all the garage stuff we're tired on. And then we can start looking for a place together. <laughs> hey. We might have to move away from here, though. Yeah. I don't care where we live as long as we're together. See you in an hour. Kevin. Is this really happening? Yes. This is really happening. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Right here. We've had his ups and downs. My business has suffered a bit during this recession, which is a polite way of saying I'm pretty much on my knees financially. So is most of the world. Yeah, well, wasn't helped by the fact that I had a back problem 
followed by my addiction to painkillers. I'm giving you the bad news first. <laughs> and the good news is? I'm honest, I'm hard working. I'm determined to get out of this financial mess and I'd do anything for your mother. I think we can have a good life together. <laughs> you don't have to impress me. Oh, yes, I do. And one more thing. What's that? I can assemble flat pack furniture. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> You're up to something. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I've been watching you, and you're a terrible liar. You should know. So, Spill, what's going on? <sighs> All right. I called Nick and asked him to come over. What for? Well, to tell your mother what a no-hoper Joe is, because she certainly won't listen to me. So Golden Balls is here to give you the one over and then scup of my mother's nuptials. And I wonder where I get it from. Nice plan, Gran. Respect. Don't worry. No one To be my girl, don't have to be cool to rule my world. Ain't no particular shot. I'm more compatible with the just one your extra time and your. Okay, listen, everyone, everyone, I just wondered if you fancied a quick one in the Rovers before dinner. Could you touch my arm? Sounds like a plan. Yep. Oh, in a minute, I just want you to sing one song with me. No. Come on, just sing one song. Yeah. No, I know the perfect song. 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 Yeah, I know it's Christmas Day. Yep, yeah, two nights, maybe more. Yeah, you can take a deposit off my credit card, yeah? Get that, get that. Jack glasses. Oh, thank you. Go on, Elton. Go on. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go breaking my heart. I couldn't if I tried. the rubbish out and I saw my dad. I thought I'd been abandoned. Where are the girls? Sophie's gone to Sharn's and Rosie was supposed to be looking for you. They promised me it'd just be an hour. Why don't you give that a rest for a minute? Come and sit down. There's still a million and one things to do. Yeah, I know, but... <sighs> Pour me a drink and I'll be with you in a minute. Has everybody got a glass? Yes. Because yes. I'd like to make a toast. She's already drunk. I've been cooking. It's chef's prerogative to have a sip of wine. Oh, but how many sips? <laughs> I would like you to raise your glass and join me in saying Happy Christmas. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas. Happy Christmas. I'd like to make a toast as well. Well, do you have to? I'm starving. Just to make it official. I'd like to congratulate Joe and my mum on their engagement. To Joe and Gail. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, dinner will be served imminently. Oh, I'll get that. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? He seems like a decent bloke. Nick, you've only spoken to him for two minutes. You don't know him. Believe me, he's a loser. Oh, look who it is. Perfect timing. Come in, come on. Uh, allow me to introduce you. Uh, Jason, Tina, this is Nick, Gail's firstborn son. Nick, this is Tina, my beautiful daughter, and her bloke, Jason. Todd's brother, we met. Yeah. <clears throat> Happy Christmas. Uh, your dad's told me a lot about you. Happy Christmas. Come on. You deserve a break. Oh, you can say that again. Still, there's no rush, is there? It's Christmas Day. We can do what we want. Well, I'll be slobbed out and tipsy in front of the telly soon enough. Might as well enjoy the journey. Sit down. I'm coming. Mmm, that is nice. Seems like we we'll never get a chance to stop and chat anymore. Except in Paris? Yeah, I know, but everything changes, doesn't it? 
kids are grown up. Life moves on. So, there's something. So? I'm sorry. What's the matter? I promised myself just take no notice of me. So? Sally, please. What is it? I've got cancer. What? I didn't... I didn't want to tell you till after Christmas. Oh, so? I found a lump. I've had it tested. And I've got breast cancer. <laughs> Kevin. Have you known about this? A week last Thursday, I was I was in the shower and I, I thought I could feel something, a lump or a, a bump, something that hadn't been there before. But I didn't think it was serious because I didn't feel ill. But I thought, you know, do the sensible thing and have it checked out. Even Dr. Wilson said she thought it was just a benign growth. But better to be safe than sorry. So she sent me for a biopsy. It was on the 17th. Before we went to Paris? The whole idea of Paris was to... was to do something nice while I was waiting for the results. I nearly told you in that cafe with big mirrors, but I still didn't know if it was nothing. I got the results yesterday. And it's cancer. I've got an appointment on Monday to discuss my treatment at the hospital. You could have talked to me about it. Expecting the girls to come in any minute. Don't tell them. Not today. Oh, no, of course not. But they will need to know. I'm sorry. This isn't your fault. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. And you're always there to lend a hand in everything I do. Well, that's the wonder, the wonder of you. <laughs> Look at that! Do you know what? <laughs> I could wear that. No. Yeah, go on, let's do swapsies. No. <laughs> All right, then. Hey, can I gock you? Go on, let me gock you. A makeover? Yeah, a sparkly, tinselly Christmas cracker makeover. Bring it on. All right! <laughs> hey, go on, then. Now, then, you two, you've got to wait there, cos when we get back, we... It's going to be fabulous, fabulous. Come on. Hey, 
If you don't like it, I can take it back to the shop. I like it. So why aren't you wearing it? Because Becky got me this one and she's my wife and she outranks you. <sighs> you know, Amy has had the best Christmas she's had in years. I'll say one thing. She is great with Amy. Do you reckon Amy would like a little brother or sister? No, 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 no. I'm just thinking. I thought it was only women who got broody. I'm not broody. Oh. Well, somehow I can't see Becky barefoot and pregnant. Well, she might surprise you. Oh, you are so... Don't. Well, if you want another kid, why don't you just tell her? Some men would do that. But not you. Well, do you not think it would be better if she thought it was her idea? I wish you'd told me all about this sooner. So we'd always remember this as the Christmas mum got cancer. And Sophie's baptism. I don't want to spoil things for you and the girls. Why do you keep looking at your watch? I keep expecting Rosie and Sophie to come in. I'm sorry, we should just stop. Stop talking about it. I mean, there's nothing we can do, is there? But nothing's going to change in the next few hours. Kevin? Gonna need an operation. Yeah, at least a lumpectomy to see how serious it is. It's not the best Christmas present I've ever had. You'll be fine. <laughs> You're a doctor now. No. But I'm your husband. And I will be there for you. Oh, Kevin. This is the best Christmas dinner I've ever had. Thanks, Will. Mm. More breast if you'd like it. <laughs> oh, grow up. The old ones are the best. Is this how Christmas should be? Here, yeah, I'll do that. Don't want any accidents, do we? <clears throat> are you implying that I'm incapable of slicing a slice of turkey for my eldest son? Why do you start talking posh when you get drunk? Straight off the pod. So, Graham. Will you be stepping out with Norris again during the party season? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, that's a shame. He looks like he might be good company. She is drunk. There's one more roasty oh. left. Nick, you look like you need feeding up. It's my birthday now. Will you do me a favour? Will you take everyone to the Rover so I can have some time with Tyrone? What's going on? Nothing's going on. Are you sure everything's okay? Will you do it or not? Uh, right. Apparently dinner's a little behind schedule. So I say we've got time for a quick one in the Rovers. Anyone care to join me? Sounds good to me. Uh, not you, sunshine. Molly's got plans for you. I need you to give me an hand. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I think they need a bit of uh, mistletoe time. Leave them alone. <laughs> well, if a bit of young romance means I get a pint of bitter, bring on the smooches. <laughs> <laughs> come on, right. Come on. Yeah. come on, then. Right. right. Come on, come on, on then. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Patched it three times. Ah, uh, well. Maybe George knows how to fix a puncture. I know how to fix a puncture. Oh, you don't have to do it now, do you? I mean, Simon seems quite happy with his computer games. Smells really nice, this! <laughs> Mind you, I could eat a plate full of rotting welts from that old record. Ken, Peter's asked if you want to come after. Oh, yes, 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 I would. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad, we're all starving here. We can't wait. I'll, uh, I'll save you a leg. Can I sit next to you, Grandpa George? Yeah, of course you can. Go on, then. I'll move along. <laughs> so, how's the bike tyre? Is it still flat? You 
don't have to do that. I just want us to have a normal Christmas. Yeah, well, it's not normal, is it? Pretending you're fine when you're not. Do you want to tell everybody the truth? I just want to help. Well, then, peel them parsnips and put that pan on. Maybe you should go upstairs. Have a I'm go. Not... I'm all right. You know, if you want to help, then make this Christmas normal. With as much bickering and arguing as if I haven't got cancer. Hi! Rush, I'm about to say hello. Happy Christmas! Oh, happy Christmas, love! <laughs> <laughs> oh. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Have you been crying? No, I've just been making some sage and onion stuffing. Why don't you go upstairs, wash your face? I can finish off here. I will, in five minutes. All right, Sharon, did uh, Santa come to your house? Yeah, I got a new phone. Oh, nice. Your mum all right? Yeah, yeah, of course she's all right. Hey, listen, girls, can you give us a hand and uh, finish peeling them? I've got this horrible feeling. I uh, didn't lock the garage last night. I'll be two minutes. Mm, yeah, all right, then. Bit, two minutes. Hey, who died from you, Sergeant Major? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, son. Hey, how's it going? Merry Christmas. Yeah, all right, good, thanks. Look, we're off to the Romans if you fancy one. Uh, where's Molly and Tyrone? Oh, they want a bit of privacy, young love, they. Eh? Hey, the first round's on me. <laughs> no, I'd best get back. Sally wants some help with a veg. Hey, uh, come on with us. We'll come on for you. Give over you. If he wants to help his wife, you should encourage him. Well, come on, then. Let's get in. Uh, great. <laughs> See you later. Great, son. ta -da. karaoke machine. It's the best Christmas present ever. I know it's your present, really, and that, but you like it, don't you? Yeah. Hey, look what Jack gave us. Oh. Mm. You OK? You know I love you, don't you? Yeah. And I love you, too. This Christmas just keeps getting better. Do I go upstairs? Kev, what's going on? I... I had to come round. There's uh, been an emergency. What kind of emergency? Something happened. We've uh, no stuffing for our turkey and Sally is really upset. Stuffing? You don't come bursting through someone's back door because you've got no stuffing. Rosie likes stuffing and Sally wants this Christmas dinner to be perfect. You know what she's like. <laughs> I like stuffing, but it's not exactly 999 time, is it? I mean, call the fire brigade, we've run out of cranberry sauce. Um, well... Uh... I could open the shop if it's important. It's uh, really important, yeah. Uh, I tell you what, why don't you go and join the others in the pub and I'll call you when dinner's ready. Yeah, OK, yeah. yeah is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'll get my coat. I was on a promise then. You want to chill out, mate? It's Christmas. I'm sorry. Well, what have you done now? Forced you to have Christmas dinner with your ex-boyfriend. Oh, he's all right. Oof. Don't say that, you'll get me worried. <laughs> so, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. It's got a bit of a sore head. Big night last night. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> we might shoot off soon. Mum wants to with the pudding. Something about brandy butter? Oh, right. Alone at last, Cinders. You're enjoying this, aren't you? The surprise I've had this Christmas. My worst nightmare. Oh, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. I embarrassed myself. You call my dad a waste of space. My gran 
called your dad a waste of space. I think he's a great bloke. Yeah, well, you stay away from him. I'm going to be related to him. I'm going to be related to you. No, I'm going back inside. going on? Sally's got cancer. What? I sat her down. Tell her about us. She burst into tears. I said what was going on. She said she's got breast cancer. Found her lung just over a week ago. She's been to see the doctor. Had some tests done. And got the results back on Christmas Eve. Why? She wanted us to have a normal Christmas. Are you trying to kill me? Is that the plan? Drink and drive me under a lorry and kill me? One glass of wine. One glass. It was one more glass. You had already had one glass. A small one and she offered... Hey! Don't you dare blame my mother for this. She is looking after the boys so we can celebrate our wedding anniversary. I know my limits. I have been drinking a long time. Oh, right. So, uh, now you're boasting about being a drunk. I am not a drunk. I never get drunk because I know my limits. I'm going to buy you a breathalyzer kit. Oh, you do that. You think a half pint pot is a small glass? That is ridiculous. Your mum has tiny glasses. Oh. It were like a thimble and it were white wine. People know there's less alcohol in white wine. Well, that just proves you know absolutely nothing. It was an Australian Chardonnay, 13.5% volume. In a tiny glass and I'm a bloke. Blokes can drink more than women. You just don't want me to have a good time. I just don't want you killing yourself. Oh, but it's all right for you to get paralytic with Becky. I can't have a second glass of wine with dinner. I may have got paralytic with Becky, but I didn't offer to take you for a spin in the car. Happy Christmas. Yeah, happy Christmas. Yeah. Just having a traditional festive domestic. Well, it won't be Christmas without one. I've got a bit of an headache. I know the feeling. What are you doing? Um, I'm just looking for stuffing. We don't need stuffing. No, I know. What are we going to do? Was this close? Another two seconds. I would have told her our marriage was over two seconds. If you hadn't burst through the door, I would have told Tyrone. I would have. I've got to stay with Sal. I've got to. Yeah. For now. But then... There's no buts. She's got cancer. I know. It's not terminal, is it? I don't know. She doesn't know. She sees a specialist on Monday. People get better. <sighs> Pam's friend had it. She had it. And then three months later, she was fine. Look, I don't know. I only found out two minutes ago. I can't believe this is happening to us. This is so unfair. Please don't leave. Let's get going. What? What about us? Us? There is no us. But we love each other. We were going to be together. Are you so stupid? Open your eyes. It's finished. It was a stupid game. We've just had the biggest wake-up call, the biggest slap in the face anyone could imagine. My wife's got cancer. So this us, it's nothing. It's less than nothing. My wife needs me. Go on. Grow up. I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen her leaves with a headache. So? So, she's only been here five minutes. Yeah, what's that got to do with me? That's what I'm asking you. You got a crush on Joe's daughter? I used to go out with Joe's daughter before he ever showed up on the radar. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, we've got history. Big history. Yeah, but now she's going out with Jason, I guess your ancient history. Oh, we're still close. Bear that in mind. Oh, 
want one. What are them? Parsnips. Oh, no, not for me. But you like parsnips. No, I don't. Mum, we have them every Christmas and I've never liked them. Do you like parsnips? Mm, no. <laughs> have you not been paying attention for the last 15 years? <laughs> Do you like parsnips? Not overly fussed. I don't like parsnips. Right. That's it. They're going in the bin. More? I don't believe I have been cooking parsnips year after year. Nobody likes them. So, it's OK. Oh, no, let her chuck them. It's not a proper Christmas unless Mum's had a nervous breakdown. Now that's out of the way, we can have a proper Christmas. Um, um no sprouts for me. Well done. Oh, <laughs> I had help. <laughs> hey, can I have some more of that wine? It's very nice. It's really fruity. <laughs> George, could you pass the wine oh, to George? Yeah. Oh. Peter, oh, shall I chop you up while I'm in? Hey, 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 what do you think you're doing? He's an alcoholic. You're giving wine to an alcoholic, don't you ever think? Or are you too drunk to know what you're doing? Dad! Yeah. You, you mean, you... You're quite right. I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking. Oh, sorry. it's all right, George. You made a mistake. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. You're doing very well, but it all goes nowhere if you don't have the support of your family. Hey, you... hey! Don't have a go at him. He's only being polite. Yeah, yeah. As I said, I'm. I'm sorry. I think we'd better make a move, haven't we? We've still got a lot to do. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, don't go. Yeah, I think we're going to go as well. What, 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 what? Just fight me. Just give it a rest, will you? Lee, can you, uh, can you get Simon's computer uh, again? Yes. Yeah. Johnny, you coming and all? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Waste not, want not. <laughs> what, 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 what about Simon's bike? You fix the puncture? No, not yet. We'll, uh, we'll get it later. Deirdre, thank you. It was great and, uh, happy Christmas. If you quit, you might catch the end of the Queen's speech. Come on. Really have to go, do you? He's losing it, dear. George, George. Happy Christmas, everybody. Christmas, he didn't have anything to drink. See you later. Bye. Well done. Yes, I know what date is. Just cancel the whole reservation. How much is the cancellation fee? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's nice. Our first Christmas oh, as man and wife. Our first Christmas as a family. Christmas is a time for families. Yeah, not my family. But well, you've got a new family now. Amy loves it a bit. Oh, yeah. Hey, in confession, I think it's better when they're not your own. Can you imagine me pregnant? Hilarious. Out here, hormones. I'd probably end up murdering somebody. Probably you. <laughs> She's a smashing little coot, you know. Oh, it's nice to see the young ones starting off in life together, isn't it? Oh, ah, yeah. Hey, do you think we might hear the patter of little feet before next Christmas? I won't put money on it. <laughs> um, do you like pussycat dolls? Oh. <gasps> How about Katy Perry? Cos you're hot, then you're cold. You're yes, then you're no. No. Right. Well, this is a really special anniversary. You don't mind me drinking now? Probably makes you sick. Feeling better now? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Do you know how long this Nick's staying around for? Mm. Not really, no way. No reason. Would you not like him or something? It's bad enough having David around without big brother and all. Mm. Well, he only said he was staying till Christmas, I think. OK. Got another drink? If I'm allowed. You can get as drunk as you like for all I care. I might just do that. But if you get so drunk that you can't fulfil your matrimonial duties, then I want a divorce. What matrimonial duties? Do I need to spell it out? I thought I was in doghouse. What? But a woman has needs, Ashley. Especially on a wedding anniversary. 
Well, all right then, fair enough. Then we should get back to the house then. So you don't want another drink then? Oh, there's something I want more. <laughs> Ashley Peacock, you're a beast. Besides, I've got some cans in fridge you could have them after. <laughs> you won't want anything after. Except maybe a defibrillator. Who picked songs on this jukebox? You did. Oh, yeah. I have got the perfect song. Hang on. Right, you are going to love this, Ames. This is a soundtrack to my life. Are you ready, children? Oh, I like this song. <laughs> when the snowman brings the snow, well, he just might like to know. Put a great big smile on somebody's face. Oh, no. Christmas, Mr. Peacock. At least you looked. For all that's going on, you still looked. I never even. Yeah, well, I didn't expect anything, Kevin. Father Christmas didn't have whiskers last time you sent me a card. I'm sorry. You'll get one next year. No, I don't want anything to change. I've wasted so much time striving for something better. I didn't even realise what I had. You just wanted the best for this family. Always. Well, the best thing for you right now is some kit, cos you barely slept. Oh, can I? It's uncertain, so it just drives you mad. No. Yeah. I'm supposed to be helping. I must said the right thing once. And you don't have to say anything. If it could be me, if I could take it away from you, I would. There's been days where I've been that scared I would let you. Hopefully, the nurse is going to tell us more this afternoon. Are you still all right to come to the hospital? Yeah, of course I am. Like, there's nothing more important than being with you now. Nothing. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. And I'm too sexy for my land. Too sexy for Milan, New York and Japan. Oh, just getting into that. It's not even nine o'clock yet. Never too early for karaoke. Hey, you know, we've gone through over a hundred songs since Christmas. Can you believe it? Yeah. Don't worry, though. We've still got over 900 left. I think we need a break from the karaoke. Oh, all right. It was a laugh at first and it will be again, I'm sure, but it's just the novelty's worn off, OK? Well, it hasn't for me. Yeah. I can see that. I'm sorry. Oh, it's just the post-Christmas blues talking. Well, don't worry, love. In this house, Christmas can go on as long as we want. No, it's over with and I'm glad of it. It's just a one big con, a lot of hollow sentiment and false promises that don't outlast the turkey. It's not real life, but that's OK. You know where you're at with real life. But I love our life. Look, let's go out tonight. The holiday is over. Deb's got me in this morning and... I'll be too tired to go anywhere later. Well, what about your broom? Right, now, look after these, because they cost money. I'm not a bottomless pit. 
Could have fooled me the amount of rub you've put away these past few days. Mind you, no one had ever call you bottomless. Oh. <laughs> oh, hiya. You're all right, love. How's the rest of your Christmas? Oh, smashing. Still wading through my mum's turkey, mind. She sent us home with loads. She always gets all of us. She could stick the carcass out back and call it a gazebo. <laughs> How was your bird? Uh, well, it's tough. Not a lot of meat on it. Turkey was lovely, though. <laughs> anyway, we're just off on a brisk country walk, blow away some of the Crimbo cobwebs. Do you fancy it? Oh, I'd love to, but I really want to do some colouring, so... Can we go with you? Of course you can. Now, I'm working, but Becky will take you, sweetheart. The route's only three and a half miles, and the view from the top, it's well worth it. <laughs> top. Hold the edge. A few steep sections, but we'll manage. Do you know what? I ain't got the right shoes on. Oh. Do not panic. I've got a spare pair of wellies in the boots, spare car seat in the back, and I've made a picnic. Right, come on, let's get going. Oh, absolutely. Now, listen, you have a great time, girls. I can't believe it. What's up? I put two pounds on. I won't fit into my outfit later. Well, you should have thought about that last night when you were scoffing all the quality street. Oh, shut up. It's all right for you. You can eat what you like. Because I'm naturally thin. No, because with a face like yours, it doesn't matter what you weigh. Eh, hey, don't start on me, you greedy cow. Look, give it a rest, a pair of you. Oh, it's all right, I'll get it. What have you got there? None of your business. Well, you won't mind me having a look then, will you? Uh, get off! Dad, tell her! Look, stop it and grow up, will you? Well, I'm sorry, but she's hiding something. She's allowed to read her own post. And your mum's going out this afternoon. She wants to go to the sales. Oh, good, because um, Shana and Ryan are coming round for dinner before we go to the gig. Today, no, you'll have to cancel it. Your mum's worn out after Christmas. Oh, well, she's not too tired to go trudging round the shops, is she? Obviously. Anyway, it's fine, because I'll be cooking and she won't have to lift a finger. Even so, she doesn't want to... Dad! Dad! It's too late to cancel now. Anyway, I've already spoke to her about it. She's cool with it, so just take a chill pill, yeah? Morning. Just. Oh, morning, darling. Mm, it's a bird. It's way too comfy. Beats the one at the hotel. You could break rocks on it. Well, I'll stay here, then. I wish I could. I've got to get back to Nottingham. I've had three messages on my mobile from work already. Well, it comes to something when you can't spend a few days with your family over Christmas and New Year. Price of success. I know. Anyway, I'll be back soon enough. For the wedding, for a start, plus, uh I've met some very interesting people, like your family. And you have reacquainted yourself with Jason, I take it. You remember him? Big fella? Handy with his fists, I'd imagine. Oh, no. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Hmm. <laughs> hey, have you been at my soft centres again? I can't find them anywhere. Uh, never mind your chocolates. Where'd you get them filled tips from? Oh, uh, I took him to bed with me last night. I'm not even going to ask. Well, I've had to go and get Amy some more, so you've cost me one ninety nine. So, sue me. Anyway, what do you think about this? Well, there's no point in sending it to Tony Hart because he's gone to the great gallery in the sky. Well, all right, I know I'm no artist, but what about the idea? Well, what's all this fiver malarkey? Oh, well, a lot of pubs charge now for New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, in the middle of Manchester. Or if they've got a band on or, or dance floor. Well, we've got a jukebox, balloons, party poppers, hats. Give everybody a free glass of cheap plonk and it'll ensure that all the regulars have got somewhere to sit. As opposed to who? All the jet setters that are going to be coming in from miles around. I tell you what, I paint a big H on the cobbles outside then they've got somewhere to land their helicopters. I've been in the pub game a lot longer than you. I do know what I'm doing. Oh, and by the way, you've got chocolate all round your gob. Ken, when is this table going to be free? I've got Christmas cards to write. Are you a bit late? Or is it early? Well, no, they're for the people that we forgot, who then sent us cards. Three arrived on Christmas Eve when it was too late to retaliate. Do you know, I swear people leave it to the last minute on purpose. I wouldn't bother. Well, I know that. 
been mainly friends of yours. But if I can get them away today, then it'll look as if they got held up in the post. Now, are you done? Yes, yes, I fixed the puncture. Oh, blimey, the wheel was cutting-edge technology when you started that. All right, all right. I don't detect much of the Christmas spirit today. Or is it a little too much? And I'll take no lectures from you after Christmas Day. I need to talk. Well, um, unless you want a wreath, I'm not interested. No, I didn't mean I wasn't. Um... No, I know. I've done nothing but put my foot in my gob lately. I was out of order with you. I'm sorry. How's Sally? Better not. We're seeing a breast cancer nurse later, so we'll know more then. Right. How are you doing? I don't care. Oh, that's not true. Well, it should be. I don't blame you, but you've made your decision, you've made your bed, you need to lie in it like I've got to lie in mine again. Like it or not. Do you require assistance? Well, only to get myself into my hot pants later. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have anything, really. I'll come back to you. Don't know what you fancy. I've not got that problem. So is he. Someone forgot to say when this morning. What? What this? This is mainly muscle, this. Builds you right up working at the butchers. All those hormones, they stick in the meat. Yeah, part, part bull me. <laughs> part? You have got to be joking. Oh. Oh. Rosie Webster. Don't pressurise me. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, you've started, so you have to finish. <sighs> OK. Ah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I win! Na, 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 na. Hello? Can I take this to Dominic's this afternoon? Yes, yeah, you can, so long as you remember to pack all these pieces away when you're finished, OK? Because we can't have a rematch with one stick, <laughs> can Simon! We? Granddad's got your bike. Yeah, he's amended it. Well, you're gonna have to wait and see, aren't you? Are you gonna go and help your dad with it? No, he'll be all right. Exercise is doing good. Get a bit of that uh, excess Christmas weight off him. Oh, honestly, you and your flipping grudges. I can see why they made you a petty officer. Oh, go on. Brilliant. Yeah. Is it fixed? Oh. Oh. oh, yes. Yes, it is. It's as good as you. Thanks, Granddad. Can I take this to Dominic's house? But well, you can't take all your Christmas presents to Dominic's house, can you? Right, it's either going to be your wee, kaplunk, or your bike. Which one? The bike, please. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Ken, do you want a cup of tea? No, no thanks. No, I, I just wanted to return that. Yeah. Oh, and um, I was wondering if you've got plans for New Year's Eve. Well, if you think you're having another get-together, then no, you can count us out. Actually, I was offering to take Simon if you wanted to go out for the evening. Oh, well, thanks, Ken. That's really good of you, thanks. Oh, right. Well, uh, cheers. Uh, we'll, we might take you up on that, eh? We'd be delighted to have him, wouldn't we? <laughs> it's a portfolio. As in Minister Without. What? Um, Minister Without Portfolio. It's, uh, it's, it's like a politician without a proper job, like. All of them. What are them photos for, anyway? I could think of one or two things you could do with them. Never mind. Right, well, they send off to agencies. I'm going to be a glamour model. <laughs> a glamour model? <laughs> Tell the whole cafe why, don't you? <laughs> My mum and dad are going to go mental. <laughs> well, yes, which is why you were going to keep your trap shut for now. And you and all. Oh, yeah. My lips are well sealed. <laughs> but you know that photo that I saw? Is there any chance I could have a copy? 
Well, you know, j just in case you get famous, like, you could autograph it for me. Very small in the right hand corner, though, yeah? No? No harm in asking. So, when can you fit me in? We want it done as soon as possible. So do we. We try to schedule lumpectomies within four weeks of diagnosis. And what does that show? As well as removing the cancer and the clear tissue from around it, the surgeon will take a sample of lymph nodes from under your arm to see whether the cancer spread. And is that likely? I don't know. But Sally came in very quickly after finding the lump, and that's in her favour. When will we know the outcome? A week or so after that. Well, she's got to hang around for a week. It's important we get these things right. So that's five weeks altogether, because I've not even told our kids yet. It's difficult, but I shouldn't delay too long. They'll sense that something's wrong. Or worse still, hear about it from someone else. How do I do that, though? I've spent all their lives keeping them from harm. How do I protect them from this? How old are they? 19 and 15. Then I'd confront it head on. No euphemisms, no codes. It's cancer. Get them used to the word, and it won't seem half so frightening. I just don't know how they're going to take it. At that age, they may well run a mile. Or try to become a world authority. If they can't talk to you, Sally, encourage them to talk to Kevin. And if they do go trawling the internet, ask them to show you what they've found. There's an awful lot of misinformation out there. I know there's one question they'll want answering the same as me. Is it likely to be terminal? It's just as likely you could make a complete recovery. Of course you're worried, but you're in good general health. You've got a top-notch consultant looking after you. And most of all, a strong, supportive family. That's a pretty good combination. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So, where's my card in prison? Folks don't do cards anyway. I forgot how old you were. Yeah, as if you haven't been counting down the days. And why would I do that? Well, I don't know, actually. Just because I'm 16 doesn't mean I'm going to play out. That's a shame. I haven't got enough time to buy another present. Oh, listen to God's gift. Oh, can we please leave God out of this? <laughs> so, uh, are we still on for tonight? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> So, <laughs> hey, I've got your two tickets for the Poison Chalice gig. <laughs> there, there, uh, bad boys of Christian rock. Right. <laughs> it's tonight. Yeah. And I've got one as well, so you can both come round to my FD first, and then we'll go. Oh, wicked, thank you. Oh, thanks, love. Yeah, it'd be nice having Simon round. Yes. I think the arrangement suits everyone. I wouldn't have bet on it this morning, though. Well, I thought you'd be back with your tail between your legs. Oh, you're forgetting the power of the babysitting card. Played correctly, it can trump most opposition. Temporarily, yes. But I hope you made more progress than that. Was Peter friendly? Well, he was a little cool at first, but uh, he was definitely more civil by the time I left. Civil, eh? Well, that's something. Oh, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to put all this bad feeling about the bar behind us. Mm, up to a point, yeah. To a point? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to drop opposition just for the sake of a quiet life. In fact, I'm drawing up a petition. A petition? Oh, God. Ken, we are never going to get beyond this if you keep provoking Peter. It's not provocation, Deirdre. It's a sincerely held objection. And just because we disagree over this doesn't mean we can't get on otherwise. Oh, no. I mean, it's like the Arabs and Israelis. Just because they disagree over Palestine. You all right? I don't know. I suppose I thought I'd just come away more in control. She seemed quite positive. Well, she's paid to be. I wanted it all cut and dried, ABC. You'll beat this. We will. Wish we had said to Sophie she could have a mate's back. 
We can't tell her well You're there. not going to tell her. Not yet. Or Rosie. Well, the nurse said... Look, she doesn't know my family. I don't want to burden them until I get the results, until I can answer all the questions. I don't want to leave them dangling, Kevin, like I have you. Me? Hey, don't be daft. I just wish you told me sooner. I'm not sure I can go in there. Make idle chat, pretend everything's OK. You don't have to. Go to the Rovers. Go and have a couple of pints. Yeah, and leave you on your own. I won't be stuck for company, will I? I've had longer to get used to this. It'll do you good to be away from me for a while. To unwind. Oh, you have to watch out for exposed tree root. Yes. You're lucky you had a soft landing. Well, I've ended up in worse. Anyway, it gave kiddies a laugh. <laughs> and they weren't the only ones you... <laughs> Sorry. Hey, uh, I thought I could knock up some turkey pasta for the hey. kids' tea. A bit of salad. Oh, brilliant. I was just going to whack in a pizza for Amy. I'm knackered. I don't know where you get your energy from. Oh, I just like to keep busy. Busy? You're up that hill like a mountain goat with Freddie on your back, and that picnic was amazing. And songs and games go. I could never be a mum. You'll be daft. You're great with Amy. When you and Steve have kids of your own. Well, that ain't going to happen. I couldn't hack it. It's natural to feel apprehensive. Claire. The Mackie D's ain't having bambinos. End of. Hi. Hi. Fridge on the blink? No. That bottle was intended for New Year, but in the circumstances. Circumstances? The estate agent called. The buyer from the other week called back. She's up to her offer. To the asking price? No, but close enough for me to say yes. We sold the house! Oh, that is fantastic! Oh, and you are sure you're happy to Don't go ahead with... stop talking oh, and open the bottle! Well, right, right, yes. Here's to a very, very happy 2010. <laughs> and you get a free pint or a free glass of bubbly. Free? No, it'd cost me a molly a tenner, wouldn't it, if we wanted to? You know, I could just go down to the offer. Ah, oh, no, a... but you don't want to be sat at home with a can on the biggest night of the year. Not when there's a party at Ender Road. Well, at least I'll get a seat at home. Well, you will here. Yeah, there'll be plenty of space. I can't believe you're alienating customers when there's competition happening up down the road. That's a bit of faith in me. Hi. Hi. Hiya. Hiya. So you're keeping Amy busy, mate? Oh, yeah. How are we going to compete with such a well-oiled publicity machine? <laughs> well, whoever drew that, they were certainly well-oiled. <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hey. Hiya. I was wondering if you thought any more about your contractors yet. Well, I, I, uh, I think George is getting tenders for the damp course. Oh. Well, I reckon that could be competitive. Uh, I reckon £150 labour plus three quid per metre run. It's a good price, tell him. Yeah, you can tell him yourself, Bill. He's coming oh, in, right? Hey, have you seen this? I've ever worked that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll get him in. Usual, is it? Not really, no. What do you mean? Oh, it don't matter. Mel six. I'm fine. Good. Everything okay with Pam? Smashing. But you didn't call me over here to drug about my love life. What was it you wanted to say? Oh, it don't matter. I'll see you later. Hey, sit down. What is it, lad? Hey, come on. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can sort it. Uh, we can't, Dad. It's a mess. I don't know what to do. You will have a cracking night. Well, I hope so. I'm banking on this to cheer them all up. She's got a face like Parsons' nose all Christmas. Right, love, I've just got some tickets for New Year. All oh, right, where are we going? Here. Right, <laughs> out with the old, in with the old, eh? I think I'd rather stay in town. I just saw it, you know, we could go off into... Oh, well, I don't know what's going on over there. Kev took the day off, and when he came in here, he just got his blank, man. <sighs> well, look, if it's money, lad, we're all going through it. But trade will pick up eventually. It's nothing to do with the garage. Well, look, if it's not Rosie and it's not the business, are you and Sally going through a rocky? She's ill, Dad. She's 
He found a lump in her breast. Well, she had it checked. From the biopsy. It's cancer. Oh, poor kid. Oh, I'm so sorry, son. I'm so bloody sorry. What, what, what have the doctors said? I don't know much, do they? She has an operation in a couple of weeks. I keep imagining the worst. Hey, don't waste time on that. They can work miracles these days. It's not like when your mother passed on. I know, but people still die. I don't know what I do. I'm the girls. I don't even know. Do you know what? Can we scrap these drinks on the shattered? But I've paid for it and Liz has bought it now. Do you not fancy an early night? Early night? Why didn't you say so? <laughs> hey, last one up the stairs, turns the lights off. So what is Christian Rock? Well, like Cliff Richard. <laughs> Poison Chalice is like any other band. It just so happens that they've got faith. Yeah, they smash up hotel rooms, but leave a Bible in the drawer afterwards. <laughs> we better go, actually, if we want to get near the front. Oh, yeah, the mosh pit. More the pulpit. <laughs> Look, you don't have to come. Chill out, Sophie's joking. Yes, yeah, Sophie. So much for turning the other cheek. <laughs> From what I've seen before, you're the perfect example of turning cheeks. Oh, half funny half. Just go to your happy clappy gig. Right then, are you ready for action? What are you doing? Tea. Oh, I thought you wanted an early night. Do you want steak and kidney pudding? Oh, steak and kidney pudding? Onion gravy, all the trimmings. Oh, well, can't we have it afterwards? Like, we're only talking half an hour. Half an hour? We're going to have a brew and a game of dominoes and all. We've got all night. Yeah, no, but I'm all revved up now, aren't yeah, well, I? Well, just take your foot off the accelerator. Go and have a shower. The colder, the better. Go on, I'll do tea. Yeah, son. Get that down here. I didn't have a clue if I'd been paying her more attention. Look, there's no good blaming yourself. It won't help. Sally were trying to protect you. She did a good job. She's a strong and so. Yeah, stronger than I am. And you? My mum was the same. What good did it do her? Look, I told you. We're different times. We're different cancer, different treatment. Different altogether. How did you get through it? Well, what were the alternative? You and I, Debbie, were kids. You needed me. Your mum said life had to go on, so I had to go on. You know, I never saw you shed a tear. Oh, I cried all right. I still do, sometimes, even now. But I couldn't let you say that. We should have done. <laughs> Sally, she wants me home. No, oh, then go. If there's all you need, son, ouch, just ask. Here they are. The conquerors of old Lynch. <laughs> Did you plant a flag? No, nope, but I'm out in territory. Yeah. Would it break the bank, stick a portal up there? No. So what are we having then? Snake bite, water, oxygen? Oh, she did very well, actually, and Amy. You should be proud. Yeah. <laughs> like to see you all your sorry backside up there, MacDonald. Hey, talking of which, never mind all your edge. We should have just asked you to lie face down, shouldn't we? There's no place for a picnic, mind that. You know what, Claire? Next time we take a hiking, can you do me a favour? Can you leave it there? You love it, really. <laughs> right. Come on, Stinky. Bad time for you. Ooh. What can I do you for, then? Nothing. What are you doing hanging around here? I'm not hanging around anywhere. Yeah, you are. You like a bad smell. Oh. <laughs> 
do I say like about Smell? Aye, it's aftershave or expensive. I got off Molly's auntie. It's Alvin Klein. Alvin Klein? Is that one of Calvin's ill-billy cousins? No, apparently it's an offshoot of the main business. Yeah, smells like an offshoot. Cats if I had to guess. So how are you doing here then? <laughs> are you serious? Uh, excuse me. Get real, you don't stand a chance, pal. Oh, Hiya. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> so, uh, are you, uh, are you catching the wayfarer too? What, dressed like this? I'm a magnet for every passing nutcase as it is. I'm gonna catch a cab. Ah, oh, right, well, uh, I was heading that way, actually, so, uh, let me escort you. <laughs> as you say, there's a lot of nutters out there. Come on. Can you smell cappy? Oh, dear. Dead soldier. Oh, never mind, there's reinforcements in the fridge. Not champagne, but who cares? What's going on? It's five to six and you're half cut. The speaking clock's got very judgmental. We're not drunk. Just merry. With very good reason. Your mother's sold the house. <laughs> oh, really? Did you have change for a fiver or have they got the right amount? We're getting a very reasonable price. A lot more than I paid for it, so be happy for us. Solve a lot of our problems. Well, there's an easier way to solve them. Or get rid of them anyway. Oh, you have to be vigilant. There's some right comedians about. When we were petitioning to save Weatherfield Lido, we got 500 signatures. Trouble was, there was five Elvis Presleys, two Lord Lucans and a Nobby Styles. It's an oldie night. <laughs> I'll be careful. Thank you. Why don't you try over there? So much for all the fighting talk earlier on. I don't want to air my dirty washing in here. No, given what I see every wash day. But if you're going to persist with this, you have to let Peter know. If he finds out from somebody else... Yeah, well, if the matter arises, obviously, yes, I'll flag it up. But for once, I wouldn't mind a quiet, civilised drink. Three pound a metre plus labour. Well, <clears throat> they'll reckon that were a good price. Really? Yeah. I might be needing a damp course, but I'm not wet behind the ears. Hello. Oh. Right. Hello, dearie. Ken? Uh, you have no need to worry. I've not been plying him with drink. He's been on orange juice all the way. You can smell it if you don't believe me. No, no, no. I, uh, I'm sorry about what happened before. I uh, overreacted, but uh, I think you'll understand my concern for my son. I'm sat here, you know. Can I get you a drink? No, no, no. Let me. No, oh, what are you all having? Hi. Thanks for coming. Ty's in the shower. Oh, I can't stay long. I'm sorry about the way I was earlier when you were trying to say sorry. It seems like we're doing a lot of apologising between us. Yeah, well, we've got a lot to apologise for. No, we haven't. Come on. We wouldn't have got together if we'd have known this was going to happen. Yeah, well, it has. And look, the texts and the calls, we've got to knock it on the head. Yeah. I don't want Sally finding out. Of course. How was the hospital? Don't tell us much. Not until they've done a the lumpectomy. Must be awful. As bad as it gets. Have you told anyone else? I saw you with Bill. I haven't told them about us. If that's what you're asking. No. But I'm not ashamed. I know it's not the time to be shouting it from the rooftops, but... It doesn't have to be the end. Well, I can't think of anything beyond... I know. Beyond helping Sally, I respect that. But I'm just saying, when all this is behind us, we've still got a future, yeah? It depends what you mean by behind. You know, there's still lots of ifs and buts. Well, all I'm saying is, we don't have to say never, do we? Not necessarily. I've got to go. Calf? 
Oh, hi. Hello, love. Hey, don't get up. No, no, I was just going to make a brew. I'll do it. You just stay where you are. Have you had your tea yet? I could go out and get you a fish supper, make a nice change from turkey. No, I've already eaten tar. Hey, what are you doing? I said I'd bring it through. Go back there and put your feet up. He's told you. <sighs> Never make a spy. I saw him in the pub, so he was upset and I pushed him. And... It's all right. I had to tell someone it's only natural he'd feel the same. Well, I'll keep it under my hat. He told me that you've not said out to girls yet. Why is that wrong? You didn't tell Kevin or Debbie until... The last minute, no. Well, my missus, she just didn't want anybody to know her. I mean, looking back, maybe it was wrong, I don't... No, it wasn't. I know exactly how she must have felt. I just want to be... Sally the laugh. Sally the mum. Maybe Sally the nag sometimes, but anything apart from Sally with the dreaded disease. Oh, they won't think that. Yeah, they will. The minute I tell them, they... Just see it. I don't want to be a condition. I just want to be the same person that I always was. Hey. Come on, Sal. Hey. No one that counts is going to think that. Hmm? Not me, not the girls, and certainly not Kev. You said that Kevin was upset. I, I, I think he'll be all right. You know, it was, like you say, the first chance he'd had to get it off his chair. <laughs> you see, that's what I'm talking about. There's no need to walk on eggshells. Wish Kevin had realised that. Is he still in the Rovers? No, no, he left. I, I, I thought he'd come back home, actually. I wonder where he is. He's probably out walking, trying to clear his head. Tell you what, when we've had a brew, I'll go have a scout round, see if I can find him. She, uh, said he's on his way. She said that ten minutes ago. You should have got her to order me another one. Hey, she's on the big side. I didn't want to push my luck. Really? She should do modelling. What? Fat Brenda? There's not a wide-angle lens big enough. Well, you know, it doesn't really matter what you look like. All that matters is the size of these. Well, I <laughs> thought you'd be quids in. Well, apparently not. The photographer thinks I should be bigger. Right, OK. What? Do you think? Look how quickly it's sold. It's way underpriced. Go back to the agents and tell them you've had a change of heart. Well, I wouldn't want to mess them about like that. This is business, Gail. These people are offering peanuts. Wait till they offer the proper value. Uh, but, but what if they don't, Audrey? What if, what if the market dips and we have to sell for even less? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, with all due respect, you're no estate agent. No, but I am a businessman. I don't want to see our ma'am panic selling her greatest asset. Well, we've, we've made his minds up. You haven't signed anything, have you? Nothing binding, no. Gail. Well, it took a while, but it finally looks as though your secret weapon's done the trick, Gran. Secret weapon? Nuclear Nick. It was Gran that brought him here, pushed the button, and now he's pushing yours. Is this true? As ever, my little brother's put his unique spin on things. Yes, Gran did call me. She wants me to get to know my mum's new husband before the wedding. What's wrong in that? So you were just hoping they'd get along fine, then, were you, Greg? Oh, shut up! We have got along fine. I think you and Joe are both going to be very happy. Now, can we please change the subject? I won't waste too much time on them, if I were you. In fact, I was thinking of asking Jesse if I could borrow some of his tumbleweed for New Year, just to complete the atmosphere. Mm. Well, actually, I've sold 12 already. Oh, 12? Well, at this rate, we might just cover the champagne. I'm going on my break. Becky, not coming down. Put your name into bed. That shouldn't take long. She'll be tired out. She's run herself ragged playing with Josh. She was so good with Freddie. Yeah, Amy loves babies and toddlers. Mm. Her brothers and sisters are going to be spoiled rotten. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're 
believe the charging's getting here. Happen it'll be five quid to get in and a tenner to get out again. <laughs> well, you won't find us charging when we're open. No way. Mm. Maybe we'd better change the subject, eh? Actually, uh, I don't think we should. We're all aware of where we stand and uh, I hope we can respect one another's views without it poisoning the wider relationship. I'm into that. Good. Good, because, uh, well, I've organised a petition against your bar. <laughs> oh, gee. Well, I, um, I hope you'll forgive us if I don't reach for me viral. I don't believe you. What is your flaming problem? <laughs> oh, dear horses. Ken's right. Everybody's entitled to the point of view. It's a free country. <laughs> which is more than can be said for this place on New Year's Eve. Talking of which, you two should come round ours. Eve will do a big spread. Yeah. OK. Yeah, we'd like that, George. Uh, don't worry about babysitters. Bring Simon with you. We'd love to see him. No, no, uh, we're looking after Simon. No, it's OK. We, uh, we don't need you now. But we do appreciate the offer, thanks. I believe you could be so petty. <laughs> Me petty? To use your own son. I mean, if you're not mature enough to separate our disagreement from family life, so be it. Thought I said all right. Yeah, I've got one or two things to sort out in the office. Uh. I can work, Kev. Sally can't. She needs you. Go on, Orson. Don't seem so real when I'm away from it. Yeah, I don't know what it's like. Just you, her, and cancer, eh? Things wrong when you don't talk about it. Feels worse when you do. But you can't leave it a brood. You know you sitting here. I know what I'm doing in here. I can put things right. Out there, I'm a total disaster. Hey, you've done no wrong, lad. So? I said I was in a right mess. There's something else, and you've got to believe me, Dad. I didn't know Sally was sick. Well, come on, tell me. It can't be worse than what it I've is. I've been sleeping with Molly. I knew it was too good to be true, having him over for Christmas. I thought he should meet Joe. Yeah, and turn me against him. I'm not stupid, man. Oh, Gail, I've only got your best interests at heart. Yeah, well, believe it or not, I've got my best interests at heart. So I will marry Joe, and I will sell this house, and you will respect those choices. That's it, then. Uh, I'm sorry about earlier, Mum. Not that my blessing matters, but you and Joe have got it. Of course it matters. I'll see you at the wedding. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. Bye, Gran. I love it. Bye, dear. Yeah, see you. Say to him. That'll see him at the wedding. Don't worry. Nothing's changed yet. Hmm. Nothing at all. Why, David? Nick were going through to her. Well, he wasn't telling her anything I hadn't. Oh, so you were jealous. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your moment because you've just cost yourself a roof over your head and you've just pushed those two closer together. Well done. Not something I'm proud of. John will hope not. How long? A few months. Way before we found out about Sal. Oh, no, that makes it all right. No. No. How could you do it, Kev? Right under Sally's nose, under the kids' noses. And you working day in, day out with Tyrone. Huh? Do you think you were clever? Did you want to have a right good laugh? No, of course we didn't. That lad is as honest as they come. He thinks the world of you. And your wife sat over there, scared out of her wits. Yes, I know, and I'm sick to my stomach. 
How could I see it coming? All right, I hold my hands up. What I did was terrible. But not as terrible as my timing. No, <laughs> my heart bleeds. You make it sound like some kind of accident. Look, if you're going to face up to this, do it like a man. And stop making excuses. I'm not. But we all make mistakes. You've been no angel in the past and all this so. Hey, don't you dare. Can you not get it in your head that the mother of your children is seriously ill? It's not about timing. It's not about who did what to who. It's life and death. You take it from one who knows. What is the matter with you? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was the Rovers. Not a bordello in Bay Ritz. Right, well, I've got to make the place look nice to justify the ticket price. Do you like it? Oh, I love it, yeah. I'm sure they had something similar in the cells at Guantanamo Bay. If that were a torture camp. Exactly. And that'll be Ashley with the pants. Hello, hello, hello. Evening all. Get these down somewhere they way from. Yeah, I know. My arms have gone dead stretchy. Uh, let me have a look at you. How is your arm, by the way? Fine now, and don't call me by the way. You do know I'm doing the night shift at Streetcars tonight, don't you? Yeah, well, we've coped valiantly without you before. I'm sure we'll struggle through again. That is if I can find your lady wife. Where is she? in church and people put their names in, like that. So, if, like, people who we have to pray for because they're poorer, so I just offered to write them up for the next service. That's very kind of you. Mm. So, I was a bit of a cow. Hey. Mm. Every time I go into church, right, and the vicar reads out the sick list, the same names are always on it. Barry and Dina. Now, I know Barry and Dina, and they're dead nice, they're there every Sunday, only I was like, What's going on with this Barry and Dean? They're on the sick list every single week and there's nothing even wrong with him. Well, I went back last week. Barry went there. Only gone and died, hadn't he? No. Mm. Turns out he had a brain tumour. You know, you just can't tell what's wrong with some people, can you? You shouldn't judge a book by its cover. No, you shouldn't, love. No. So, say sorry to God. I'm doing this. Where's my mum got to? Still getting ready. Pulling out all the stops for tonight. I might finish this off tomorrow. Is the bathroom free? Yeah. Hey. You're a good lass, Sophie. Must be in my jeans, eh, Grandad? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Made any New Year's resolutions then, lad? Yeah, I might have done. Let's just hope you stick to them. Careful, Rosie! Oh! <laughs> I'm OK, I'm OK. Oh. I just came in to see if you might have changed your mind about buying tickets to the New Year's Eve party at the Rovers. When is it? Tonight. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Free pint for the fellas, glass of bubbly for the ladies. Liz, it's just really not my thing. Oh, party poppers, balloons. Hey, the world and his wife are coming. You mean my dad and his wife? Right, look, um, why don't I throw caution to the wind and I'll buy a couple of tickets off you and if we change our mind... That is so lovely of you. You will not regret it. There's a spread. You can sing along to the jukebox and I promise to keep my hands off Tyro. You. <laughs> How much are they? Five or each. You know, I could get that place fit to burst in. I am a promotions girl, after all. I uh, dread to think what you promoted. Cherry vodka. I go around all the pubs and clubs. I can put a good word in for the Rovers if you like. Oh, right. There's a tenner. 
Hey up. Why are you going to look like a dog's dinner? Oh, do I look rubbish? No, but you don't normally look like that. Party down the community centre. What load of year tens throwing shapes to end dubs and drinking squash? Oh, I'm on the hard stuff tonight. Yeah? Yeah, fizzy pop. <laughs> You're too hardcore for me. Well, I'm on one, man. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Ryan, how much gunk have you got on your hair? About half as much as you have. <laughs> Lads, you take longer getting ready than girls. Mm, tell me about it. Right, I am off to work. Oh, have you got our work New Year's Eve, Michelle? No rest for the wicked, love. You two go into the community centre. Yeah. Mind you, if we've got the place to ourselves. What? Well, we could stay in and watch a DVD. Um, just don't do anything I wouldn't do. Laters. See you, Michelle. <laughs> what? <sighs> well, if your mum thinks we're stopping in, we may as well. Sophie's expecting us. Come here. I can think of a way we can pass the time. Seeing the new year with Bang. Yeah, what am I supposed to say to Sophie? Tell your dad made you stay in. Family dinner or something. <laughs> Bye -bye. I'll text her. <laughs> Flaming Nora, would you look at that? You can't make an effort on you, it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> Come here, sex on legs. Hey! <laughs> what? Well, everything comes to those that wait. Well, you have flummoxed me. You have flummoxed me. Why? Uh, because we're only going the Rovers, love. Yeah, well, you know what they say. Uh, got to make an effort for you, man. Right then, Michelle, are you ready? Bouncer at the ready, Liz. No mother's getting in here if they ain't on the list. Well, if they ain't got a ticket, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Becky? Right. You ready for the onslaught? Yeah, as I'll ever be. Right, well, can you tell your face? Cos you look like you've lost a pound and found a penny. Right, smile. You... All right? That's it, that's better. Mm. Right, Michelle, open them doors. Let the festivities commence. Happy New Year, kid. Mm. It's a bit early for that, isn't it, Graham? Yeah, but I'll probably be splattered come midnight, so I thought best get it in now. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll give you a snog if you like. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> <not>. <laughs> hey, where's Claire, Ashley? Working. Oh, bless her. Claire's working, Kevin. Yeah, I was here. Well, that's the free booze done in. Yep. What do you want now? <sighs> Let's go mad and get a bottle of something. Mm. What about something nice and white? What? Milk? No, Pino, what's it? I've got it. OK. Hello. Yes, Kevin, love, what can I get you? I'll have a bottle of your house wine, please. Good joke, I'll bring it over. Uh, two glasses? Yes, cheers. How much is it? Special offer tonight, fiver. Ooh, wicked. Yeah. All right. All right. It's the wind changes, your face will stick. Get caught in the traffic on the one-way system. It is a nightmare. Honestly, it is right because this is double roundabout. And once you get to the second roundabout, the traffic <laughs> is coming towards you the wrong way. Oh, I was bottling it. I really was. <laughs> Who is for some cherry bob crab? Come on, let's have some. Oh, well. oh. What? Wow, sir. <laughs> okay, mum. Yeah, and thanks so much for having them. Give him a kiss from me and, uh, well, I'll see you next year. <laughs> see you next year. Tell you what, town's a nightmare. Oh, I can imagine. Thank God I've got kids. God, my nights are trolling up and down Dean's Gate, singing Eye of the Tiger at full pelt, whilst three of my mates puke up in the gutter. Or maybe that was me in another life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing beats sitting in with Amy these days, even if it is wall to wall, high school musical. <laughs> you like it anymore? No. Choose my lot. That ship has definitely sailed. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot Ashley had though. How about you? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I think I might make it my New Year's resolution. What? Having babies with Becky. Bro. Ta? Oh, my! Five quid to get in. Look like robbery. Jake, what are you doing here? Couldn't let the old year go without catching a glimpse of my favourite pint puller. <laughs> Jake, I'm already spoken for. <laughs> well, I'm not. But... Mm, yeah, you met me, I hope. Mm. I thought you were in Glasgow. Yeah, I was. I've got a plan in my head. Drive down here and treat you to one night only in the Hilton in town. Four poster bed, champagne and ice. What'd you say? I'm working. I've got to get off tomorrow. New job in Somerset. That's a once in a lifetime offer. For now. Right. I don't want to stand in the way of true love. I've saved all my pennies. You get off to that hotel room now. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> we'll call it walk with Becky. Man? <laughs> huh? No, she is. She's great with kids. That's as maybe, but <laughs> not my place. What? Have you spoken to Becky about wanting more? Yeah. Well. Oh. Drop a biscuit. Claire, do you know something? About what? About Becky. Becky and kids. No, why should I? Because you two are busy mates ever since this panto malarkey. <laughs> no. No. Tell me. Steve. Tell me how you fired. Oh, you're really full of the festive spirit, aren't you? Please. The last time I spoke to her, about kids, she said she felt the same as me. Happy with it from now on, thank you. What she had was enough. She's got Amy. Why bother with any more? Whatever that job is, give it someone else. Happy New Year. Streetcars. And every now and then I get a little bit angry and I know I've got to get out and cry. She's really going for it tonight, isn't she? Mortified for her. Yeah, but she looks good, though. Hey, don't she, lads? Yeah. Tyrone, what? What do you fancy her? <laughs> Behave. Are you stood there looking like that? <laughs> Never looked so good, though, has she? And every now and then I fall apart. And I need you now tonight. And I need you more. Why is someone making a total show of herself? What are you doing here? I forgot my keys, can I have yours? I thought you was at a party. I was, and then I got a text and stood there on my own, wasn't I? Hey, Sophie. Hey, yeah. Uh, shame about Ryan and Shan, innit? What about it? Everything's going to Shan's lab for a family dinner. Oh, and a what? It's the first I've heard of it. They told me they were sitting in watching a DVD. I assumed you were going to join them. Well, we're going over there now. Why don't you come with us? Right. Yeah, come on, it's pointless you're spending New Year's Eve on your own. I really need you tonight. Forever's gonna start tonight. Forever's gonna start. I mean, it's a long song, isn't it? In love, yeah. now I'm only falling apart. <sighs> Nothing I can do. Total eclipse of the heart. No, no. <laughs> Can I just blow my wife for a minute? What's up? Uh, well, from the tap, be all right? Yeah, I'll get it. That's all right, I'll do it. Thank you. Are you sure it? Yeah, I'm watching the TV. What? Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? I thought you were working. Well, I'm not now, obviously. I'm taking him on my way for the night. Interesting dinner party, Sean. So don't. But what? Eh? What was he? The main course. Nice dressing gown, Sean. Sorry. You said you were watching a DVD. We were. Right. And since when does that necessitate you knocking around in your underwear? How could you? 
It just happened. What just happened? The fact that you seem to lie to me? Or the fact that you've broke the vow? <laughs> Are we going all around? I'm older than you were when you started having sex. We've been careful. Hey, 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 it's too much information, mate. Look, can you just get my dressing gown off, please, Sean? My last comment was sarcastic. Oh. And in my bed. Nice one, Ryan. It's a double. We'll talk about this in the morning. Oh, what? After you've spent the night with a bloke you hardly know? Hey, 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 watch your mouth, you. So, it's all right for you to put it about a bit, but not for me to sleep with a girl I love. Ow! You can do whatever you want. Just don't you rub my nose in it and expect me to smile. Yeah, snap. Shall I get you an overnight bag? Oh, you think I'm going to leave these two here on their own? It's all right, because I'm out of here. Go on. Go to your sleazy hotel room and be a hypocrite. You haven't heard the end of this. You all right? Oi. You're a lousy actor. It's all in the eyes. You want me? I want me wife. Yeah. She's got a cracking set of lungs on her. What are you doing? So, I was talking to Claire. Mmm, gotta love her. And guess what she told me? She fancies ya. Yeah? But you said you didn't want kids. What? So it's not true, then? She has no right going around repeating private conversations. Oh, so it is true. Unlike you, Steve, I'm working. Oi! Kevin, you're hurting me. Good. Kevin. What was that supposed to mean in there, eh? She's got a cracking set of lungs. You know what she's going through. That was below the belt. Go with everyone saying it. Saying what exactly? How good she looks. Top of the world. Yeah, well, she always scrubbed up well. Yeah. Bit too well, if you ask me. Well, are you saying what I think you're saying? You artless cow. Bit convenient, isn't it? Convenient? You tell me you're going to dump her and then, oh, no, you can't. Because she's got the big C. Well, are you saying she's made it up? No. I'm saying you did. Oh, you are just a child, Molly. A kid. Saying words like dump about Sally. That's the sort of thing you say in the playground. Yeah, and what are you? A man pinning women up against a brick wall? I think. I thought I loved you. You still do. Not her in there. I didn't make it up. And neither did she. Illness or no illness. It's me you want. Haha, uh -huh. you believe me now? I believe whatever you say. That's how sad I am. But believe this. What? This health scare, it's not just affecting her chest, it's blurring your vision. What's she got that I haven't? Cancer. You stupid girl. Kevin! You love me, you let me do the right thing. You love me. You let me be the decent fella I am. Yeah, I will. You love me, you stay away from me. Me family, everything. Why don't you want babies? I don't want to talk about it. Is everything all right? Fine, you're some really irritating at times. Do you mind telling me what I've done wrong? Well, saying what you've done right would be a short list. Can you help serve, Steve? I've given Michelle the night off. I mean, why, oh, why wasn't Simon Cowan tonight? Hey? Because he would have snapped me up. I could have been the new sumo. Who? I mean, sumo. Oh, I've got a sob story. I would have been great in a reality singing show. They would have gone down a bomb. I would have had the whole panel in tears. Yeah, when you open your gob. <laughs> <laughs> Don't half love you, Sal. You know, when you got ill, a light went on in my head. <laughs> I can see the space where your brain should be. <laughs> I'm never, ever going to take you for granted again. You're brilliant with the girls. You're brilliant with me. 
How long will you go for it together? We still have a good laugh, don't we? Are you drunk? No, <laughs> I'm not. Because I'm splattered. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go and sit with Molly and Tyrone? I thought you don't like Molly. Nah, I find her a bit dull. But it is New Year. Well, maybe we should have a resolution to knock dull on the head for a year or two. You're right. Molly! You're dull. Sally! You're drunk. Molly! What? You're right. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Get your coats, your pool. <laughs> Stevie, I'm a mess. There's something in me that screws up. Whatever life chucks at me, I mess it up. So, why would I want to inflict that on a kid? You don't inflict it on Amy. Yeah, but this one had my DNA. Anyway, forget all that. Happy New Year, kid. <laughs> 